Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. Good morning. Happy Monday. What is happening out there, guys? I am pumped up for this uh, day of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, but that might just be the wake-up drugs. <laughs> I don't know about you. Woo! Woo! We have day eight of this trial starting today. This is Johnny Depp. He's still on the stand. We are still in cross-examination. We may be here forever. We don't know. But I'm I'm thinking they're probably winding down on cross-exam and moving into redirect today. The question we have is, will they finish with Johnny Depp uh, today? Will that, will that actually happen? And I don't know. That remains to be seen. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out uh, in, in just a little bit, I suppose. Well, in, in a cool eight hours or so. So, yes, I did get my hair cut. Thank you guys uh, for noticing. Uh, I know it it's very subtle. For those of you who are new here, yes, uh, for the past while, I have gotten the Hitler Youth haircut. Um, so it's, I mean, uh, it's not my fault, all right? It's not my fault. I don't choose this, but I went into my barber uh, a while ago and I said, hey, man, um, can you... Uh, can you cut my hair? And he's like, yeah, of course, bro. He's uh, very Hispanic. Uh, and he's like, yeah, of course, bro. I, I got you. I got you. And I said, okay, man. Uh, and he's like, what What do you want done? I said, I don't know. Uh, cut it the way that you like view me. And then he cut my hair and I'm like, oh, so a racist. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> this will do wonders for me. I can't see what could go wrong with this. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that's so uh, I've stuck with it ever since. I, I don't know. Uh, it's nice. It's really nice in the summer. But um, <laughs> it gets a little cold in the winter. <laughs> but yes, we uh, my my wife and I, um, my wife and I over the weekend, we got to go to the Minnesota Make-A-Wish Ball. Wish Ball. 2022 uh, for Minnesota. Uh, Make-A-Wish Minnesota is under the umbrella of the Make-A-Wish organization, but uh, Wish Ball, they raise money from Minnesota and they do uh, they do wishes for Minnesota kids who are critically ill. So we got to go participate in that. I'm really, really excited to say that this year at Wish Ball alone, they raised over $1.2 million for uh, critically ill children and their families to get a little bit of respite from serious diseases. And guys, if you're if you're looking for a charity that um, that does some real impact on uh, kids and families lives, I, I cannot recommend uh, make a wish enough um, to people because it's just uh when you when you see the the families, you meet the families, you hear the stories. Um, the that that thing that they get to do, that they they are living with disease, right? They're living with illness every single solitary moment for so much time. And um, not not all kids are are terminal in Make a Wish. That's kind of a misconception, I think. But um, uh, they're, they're fighting this thing. They're going to doctors they are doing this stuff every single moment and make a wish comes in and says, here's respite. Here's rest. Here's relief for just, just a break. And it's, uh, for many, many of these kids and their families, that's what they need. Also, um, kids are not, you can't just like get into make a wish uh, you, you can't become a wish kid just randomly. You have to get a referral from a doctor. So uh, the doctors who are treating critically ill children are the ones who make those referrals. So it's not like anybody can just call up and be like, uh, oh, yeah, my, my kid's sick or whatever. It's um, 
it's a thoroughly vetted program and what they're able to do works wonders. So anyway, uh, we got to do that. So I had to get my hair cut, right? I had to not look like a homeless hobo. Like I've been looking for the past month <laughs> going on out here, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's the story. And then I left my tablet at the hotel yesterday morning. Uh, so I had to drive back to the hotel and back. It was terrible. So I did a lot of driving. And then last night, and then, and then, and then, uh, everybody's been yelling at me because I have, um, I've had some computer upgrades that have been waiting, just sitting on my shelf. And I'm like, well, I don't know when to do these things because they take a bunch of time and uh, I got to I got to do them and then make sure that they work for the show. So I'm happy to report that I upgraded my processor, upgraded my uh, video card and I upgraded my or and I added another hard drive last night and everything seems to be working. So I'm expecting smoke me going what's that? And then the whole stream shutting down and never coming back at some point today. So. <laughs> so there, that's, that's what I'm expecting. Uh, oh boy. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be a day. Um, <clears throat> we do have some super chats that are here in the morning. Uh, also, I hope you guys uh, liked it. We put out, uh, we, my editor and I, uh, put out a video uh, yesterday of the Johnny Depp text, just like a, a compilation of uh, texts and emails and quick hits on that uh, from Johnny Depp. <laughs> Man's a savage. Man's a savage with two thumbs, right? Uh, and so we put those out. If you're, if you're looking for a fix of Johnny Depp text, make sure you check out that video. Uh, it should, it should ease your soul, um, a little bit and, and warm your cockles when you get to read how he wants to drown her and burn her and, and, uh, and, uh, F her dead body <laughs> stuff her in the back of a Honda Civic. Oh boy. Uh, those are, <laughs> those are in there so um if you want to you know if you just need to take a little bit of a time and check that out um you can do that it's there for you it's there for you uh all right what do we got here this thing's gonna start up in a little bit oh i need to put tags on this stream so many things you need to do and how are we already? <laughs> uh, this is already under video review for monetization. We can't, uh, you know, you can't um, talk about Amber Heard uh, too much. If you, if, you, if you mention Amber Heard, like in your title and stuff, uh, the quartering was talking about this the other day. If you mention Amber Heard in the title, your, your video is going to get demonetize you you'll appeal it and get it remonetized it's not like it stays that way but that's just how the algorithm is going kind of like how uh uh me poo got trending on twitter and then they shut that down yeah youtube youtube is on that shutdown game for uh for amber heard's stuff they're they're really worried about what people might say about her i guess i don't know <laughs> But that's the way it goes. Okay, I just got to add a thumbnail to this thing while we wait. I'll read some super chats. We're just waiting for the court to start up. It's going to start in about 13 minutes. <laughs> Maybe it was the Hitler Youth haircut. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you're, if you're interested to see how I fumble through upgrading my PC, that is up on my Twitch channel uh, from last night. Um, oh, and by the way, to the chat who were there, screw you. It booted up first try. That's right. That's right. 
Uh, <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with my Twitch chat more than more than anything else. Uh, mostly on the hate side. They don't believe in me. They believe in me even less than you guys do, which is amazing. I didn't know that were possible, but it is. Um, is this thing in the... Oh, also, also, uh, I do have a playlist of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial coverage. It's all of these videos, and they should be in order. So if you uh, if you ever need a little bit of that, that playlist does exist. I probably need to update the playlist on my front page. Lots of stuff to do. Oh, gosh. I just realized. I am so sorry. I'm on ProVigil. Um, I have narcolepsy. So uh, I, I, am, I have ProVigil, a ProVigil prescription for it. Um, and I'm not, I don't usually take it because I manage my sleep very simply, which is I sleep as much as I want. And then eventually I wake up. It's usually before 11 PM. So my nighttime show isn't a big deal and I don't have to worry about it, but, uh, I'm on two hours of sleep. So, uh, I'm on pro vigil today <laughs> and whoo, 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 I'm going to be chatty, 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 but I will try and keep my damn mouth shut during most of the testimony. So that's why the, uh, that's why I'm blabbering and yammering today, but, uh, that's, that's the way it goes. So I figured that was better than me getting on here going <sighs> every 30 seconds. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Is that, that gets tiring, right? Like when someone else is yawning. And finally, uh, right before I start these things, if you don't know, I, I do do a night show. Um, every, uh, every weeknight at 11 PM central time. And that is no, uh, that is no different today than it is. That is going to happen these weeknights while we do the, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp live streams as well. So if you would like to participate in that show, uh, I would, I would welcome you to the 11 PM to 2 AM show, 11 PM central time. And, um, the next two nights, well, definitely one night, maybe two nights, uh, will be spent delving into the deconstruction of an argument, um, of an internet argument. Okay. The internet arguments are futile. Internet debates are futile, uh, nasty places where nothing is accomplished and no one learns anything. So I'm going to change that. We're going to live or, or we're going to watch an internet argument that occurred and uh, break down what was going on in it, what points were made, if any, why the points are ineffectual or effectual, why the technique of the argument is, um, is good or bad, um, all of that stuff. And uh, it, should be, it should be a good time. Uh, it should be a good time. Next, tonight for sure, and then maybe tonight and tomorrow night. And that will be the uh, that will be Nick Fuentes versus Mr. Medicare uh, debate that occurred. Um, I think it was Friday. Yeah, Friday of last week that debate occurred, and uh, it's there's a lot to it. Also, there's there's like lots of like little inside lore bits and jabs that uh, people may have missed, and I will try and provide some insight into that as well and and going in there but but really it's uh it's an interesting exercise it's why i don't like doing debates because often they they fall into this sort of trap that that happened on this show and so uh i figured i can make it educational also we get to we get to laugh at people making fun of each other um so that'll be cool that'll be great i think uh okay um, irradiated limes says, Hey, Nick been watching since written house, but this is my first super chat. Hey, thank you. Your amazing understanding and defense of Frank castle sold me that you deserved my money. Yeah. I got to get that thing clipped out. Uh, that was good. Um, that was from Friday's show, Friday's live stream. Uh, someone besmirched the good name of the punisher, Frank castle the good, gentle hearted punisher. Um, 
and I would not stand for that. And so I, I had to defend him from the, uh, the misunderstanding that was happening there. But let's see. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Just waiting for the, uh, the live show to start up in full. Uh, next, next, but thank you. Irradiated limes. Yeah. Uh, IFID says I considered going to law school after getting my MBA so I could work in IP law. Now I'm considering it doing it just so I can be involved in internet wars with a gunt monster, a cuckold and two bit anime voice actors. Cheers. <laughs> it's, it's now a valid, uh, it's now a valid path, right? The career path. It's like, Oh, I go to school i'm gonna get an mba now i'm gonna get my law degree and really specialize in some field and i'm on the internet calling people fat okay well all right then doug murray says good morning rackets i'm on my way to atlanta drove 683 miles yesterday from laredo to slidell louisiana had some of the best gumbo ever from a food truck you would have loved it hope everyone has a great week let's go fun fact my mother was born in slidell louisiana i am i have a little bit of cajun boy in me uh but mostly uh well mostly be equal parts cajun and houstonian so there you go wolfram says 9 38 you're starting the stream early nick i tried to get down here at 9 30 or 8 30 uh i tried to get to my desk by 8 30 i just could not get it done and then my my camera wasn't working so that was fun um i mean my camera was working the more appropriately the cam link was not working so i had to get that i had to reset that mm -mm. Mm -mm. let's see Still looking for uh, the appropriate stream to start here, so bear with me. Uh, G says, get a chance to watch Christina on Legal Mindset. No, I have not. Uh, I will try and watch. I might have a chance later today, maybe, or at least parts of it. Uh, Christina, is, Legal Mindset, who's been on the, he's been on a couple of these streams. Um, he interviewed someone who was there in the courtroom uh, named Christina. I don't know her last name, but uh, she was on his show. And so that uh, if you're interested in checking out that interview, I hear she's pretty funny. Um, you could check that out on Legal Mindset's channel. Mm -mm. Don of America says, thanks for sending people over to Live Free, Live Wild on YouTube. Can I get a toast to future growth? Thanks again and love your show. I'm got to... Be really careful with liquor today. So I'm going to toast you with Propel for now. Uh, but uh, let's see. To Don of America. Over at Live Free, Live Wild. May his, uh, may his channel experience unprecedented and unnecessary growth and provide him joy beyond his predictions. Cheers. Trent Thoreau says during Styx's live stream Sunday, he said he'd love to go on your show and said to DM him, DM him on Twitter to set it up. Uh, yes, I will do that. I will do that. Styx was on my very short list of people I need to get on the show as soon as possible. So that'll be, we'll, we'll try and set that up as soon as we can. Uh, all right. I finally have courtroom footage. Let me crank the volume on this thing. Uh, let me full screen this. All right. Let me crank the resolution while I'm thinking about it. Now, all these things to do. Here we go. What we have is Amber Heard sitting at her, uh, table here. Oh, see, you know what? I like this haircut. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm let's, let's be honest. That's a, or not haircut, hairstyle. I like this hairstyle from her. Uh, it's it's up. It's not a down hairstyle. It's an up hairstyle, but it's an up hairstyle that is interesting. 
She looks like a lesbian. She is a lesbian. <laughs> so, not that's unsurprising. <laughs> She's, that's that's the Amber Heard way. The way of the rug uh, is is there. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I mean, if you're going to rock it, go ahead and rock it. Gross taste. What? No, for court, it's good. See, she's had her hair down, like masking her face from the, from the, uh, from the jury. She's had it just up and straight back, which looked stupid. It's just, it's something new. It's something new. Um, it's interesting. It's eye catching like the, the two tone with the blonde over the Brown, uh, but in like a nice swoop, it's probably cost a lot to do that hair, which is cool. I think the jury will be looking at her today. I mean, Lord knows we all want to like, see what kind of silly reaction she has. Mm. Okay, next. Speaking of looks, Dr. Martin Luther Pepe says, Hey, Nick, looking federal today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I got this. <laughs> I got this haircut visiting my FBI bros. Federal bros of investigation. Billy Witch Doctor 99 says, Hey, Nick, today's my 27th birthday. Looking forward to listening to this at work. Also, nice haircut. Do you also glow in the dark? I do. Actually, when I'm not on stream, like the moment I leave the stream, Ray-Bans materialize on my face. It's uh, it's fantastic. Um, Farmhand Tom says, are you, are you taking on advertisers yet for Ricada Law? Farmhand Tom, absolutely. I would love to... Uh, uh, discuss sponsorships with anybody. Um, so if you're, if you're looking to sponsor the show, uh, just reach out to me by email. Um, happy to, uh, have that discussion. Nick's taste bud says, I hear you take talking all that noise about me. So I'm telling everyone you like the taste of man juice. I know millennia is rough, but she really just likes seeing you again and again and again. It's a Depp herd relationship. Oh my God. Uh, Ron White says, Hey, Nick, any credence to A's body language? Uh, to Amber Heard's body language? Like what, what credence that, that she's, um, well, one, she's, I mean, she's putting on a show. She is putting on a show herself with all of the quality her acting can muster. I'm sure many of you have seen the clips of her moving from um, laughter and smiles to instant frown uh, when she realized that she was laughing, uh, talking to her attorney. that That's a fantastic moment, by the way. If you haven't seen it, there's like several videos out there with 28 billion views on them of that. And so you can, you can check those out. But yeah, just little moments where her veneer breaks. Uh, she's trying to look serious and sad and, um, it, it, it doesn't work because she's not sad, right? Like she's not actually upset by what Johnny Depp is saying. She's not fondly reminiscing and, and, and going to the good times or anything. None of that is actually happening within her. Uh, she is, she's a, a creature of abuse, I think. I could be wrong, by the way, but it, let me put something down here. I'm open about my biases when I cover these trials uh, and, and my positions. In this trial, I started off roughly on Johnny Depp's side, willing to, of course, be convinced. But most of the evidence that could be presented at trial is already out in the public. We're just waiting for it to be introduced into the courtroom. So with that, I've kind of seen a good deal of what could come out and what I don't think is coming out is any evidence that Johnny Depp any credible evidence I should say that Johnny Depp actually physically beat Amber Heard uh, so that puts me in the position of seeing her as dishonest and I think that that is manifesting in her mannerisms 
Uh, and if she's dishonest and he's dis and he's honest, which they don't have to be one and the other, but his testimony seems to be supported by actual evidence, by actual pictures and photographs. The finger did get chopped off, right? Uh, he does have bruises. We've seen Amber Heard be nasty. Um, we've heard the video of Amber Heard being nasty to him. No one will believe you. Go ahead. Tell them you're getting abused. No one will buy it. Uh, all of that stuff. So with that, Johnny Depp seems to be relatively honest. Maybe he's, maybe he's lied about some things. We, I don't know. We'll maybe find out, but, um, that puts me in a position of seeing him as honest and her as dishonest. And so I'm going to view everything lens that way. I might as well tell you guys up front. And just so you guys know, it is okay to be biased. It's okay to be biased looking at anything in the world. You are. You are biased looking at anything in the world. It might have to do with the, the people involved or it might have to do with the situation in some pre-existing situation that you had. I'm sure uh, there are some people out there who have been abused who, when the story first broke, they were biased against Johnny automatically because he is labeled as the abuser. And if he's the abuser, then for someone who has been through abuse, specifically like maybe a wife who had been through spousal abuse from a husband, they may have automatically sort of had a negative impression of him and a positive impression of Amber Heard. They could change their minds on that, but that, just because their situation may have informed that biases are fine. Be upfront with them, confront them, be honest with them and know them as you look at things. And you'll be able to, to, you won't be able to get to objectivity, but you'll be able to get close. So, and, and the reason I put them out there is because I want, I don't want anybody to be misled about my things. I'm not here to be objective. I don't care. <laughs> I'm watching a show. And I'm going to tell you guys what's going on in the show uh, from the legal spot. That's translation. That That is really irrespective of bias. But my opinions on the trial are going to be lensed towards Johnny Depp. So also know that when I say that Johnny's got a really, really tough case and it's going to be hard for him to win a defamation case because of the elements of defamation, know that that's with a bias that says that I really think that he probably should win but recognize how difficult it is for that to happen. So, um, but any credence to Amber's body language? I mean, the way I'm seeing her, uh, it, the, the little, the little breaks in the veneer. I mean, she looks like someone who is carrying on her torment of Johnny Depp through this trial. Uh, she's been carrying it on for six years after their relationship ended. It doesn't stop. And uh, that seems consistent with how court is going to me, with how she presents herself in court. Uh, there were there are videos out there analyzing the styles that she's doing, the mind games, copying Johnny Depp or whatever. I, I'm frankly not paying enough attention to outfits to notice the little details. Uh, other people do that better than I do. So. Uh, I would encourage people to check those out if you want to see what that looks like. But um, just going off of her face and, and her demeanor, she's uh, she just doesn't present well to me. Um, that being said, I've, I've also talked at length about how I think uh, attractive women have an unfair sort of disposition in court. They have to be perfect. They have to be perfect the entire time. And it's, it's the one disadvantage you pretty ladies get. So suck it up, Francis. <laughs> all the other times it's advantageous to be a pretty lady. Like pretty much all the time. It's wonderfully advantageous, but going into court, uh, their outfits have to be right. I mean, people are barely talking about Johnny Depp's outfits, but Amber Heard's outfits get talked about every day. Um, their hair. I, this one thing, first thing I notice whenever I see Amber Heard uh, during the day is what's her hair doing? What is she doing with her hair? What is she trying to say with it? And I do that because she's she's got a different hairstyle every day. She obviously spends a ton of money on it. She's a former model and an actress. So that's one way to 
openly present. You don't need a lot of resolution to see what her hair is doing and for it to catch attention. So she gets that attention. What is her outfit saying? What's her hair saying? What's her face doing? Uh, is she trying to dress up to look too nice? Is she trying to dress down too much to try and fool the jury? Those things uh, are at play more for pretty women than they are for other people. Where's the court feed? It's, I mean, there's nothing happening. It's right here. We're just waiting on the judge. You talk as if you took Coke. <laughs> no, no. Uh, unlike, unlike another streamer who just uh, admitted to taking a bunch of cocaine, I, I do not do not take cocaine. But I did talk about being on Pro Vigil today. Mandy Karavich says to get Nick's haircut, you must rotate the bowl carefully with the razor. Tilt the bowl 15 degrees per layer. Be sure to wash the bowl when finished and enjoy your cornflakes. See, Neil says, oh, okay. I thought you went to boot camp this weekend. No, they shave you down, right? Uh, but glad to see the comp upgrade went well. If mindset comes on today, ask him about his guest on uh, Thursday and how she hijacked his stream when he knocked his mic loose. <laughs> Uh, Gemma Branch says yesterday Rottenborn was trying to impeach Johnny with drug use regarding the form. But even if he used drugs in the first two weeks in Australia, it's still after the form was signed, not in 12 months before been really bugging me. Yes, that is correct. Uh, it was something I meant to mention earlier that, um, uh, any drug use after the form sign does not invalidate the form, but really like, his attempt to impeach Johnny on the, the, the insurance form, I think it's a limp wristed uh, sort of attempt at anything anyway. I don't think that if, if Johnny Depp like had done cocaine three months before signing an insurance form and said, did you do illegal drugs in the past 12 months? And he just checked the no box. I don't, I honestly don't think that that's going to really blow a jury's mind. Be like, Whoa, now he abused Amber Heard. Like, I don't think that's how that works personally. I could be, I could be wrong on that, but I, I, to me that that's not selling me on the story that he abused Amber Heard. So, uh, Rottenborn has the opportunity to impeach Johnny's credibility, his character for truthfulness, because Johnny Depp raised his character for truthfulness, uh, in the beginning of his, his testimony. He said, I believe in the truth. I'm obsessed with the truth. Uh, I'm concerned about getting to the truth. Truth is a big part of everything. I want the truth to come out. True, 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 truth. So now he gets to attack his credibility uh, with with any evidence of any time he may have lied at all. That's that's all fair game because Johnny raised his character for truthfulness in his uh, in his opening. Forgive my ignorance, but why is there a jury in a civil trial? I thought they were just talking to the judge. Uh, no, um, in civil trials, uh, you have a you have a right to a jury in federal civil trials uh, over a certain dollar amount. That that dollar amount, I think, is twenty bucks. <laughs> Remembering the Constitution was uh, or the amendments were written in seventeen ninety one, um, you have a right to a jury trial. Uh, and then in civil, uh, that, that translates down to states as well. Uh, you don't have to use a jury trial in some states. You can opt out of them. You can opt for a bench trial if there's consent from both parties. Uh, Ron White says, great explanation and observation. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Ron White. Uh, also, thank you for being the namesake of Ron White, the comedian who uh, has an excellent joke about Osama bin Laden going to prison. Very funny. You should listen to it sometime. Why would you want a jury? Um, in a defamation case, you almost always, you, you want a jury. Uh, the reason you want a jury in a defamation case is because, especially if you're Johnny Depp, you really don't want the technical law to be applied by a lawyer or a judge. Because if you talk to a lawyer or a judge about defamation in a celebrity to like get rid of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, just in general, they'll tell you, well, it's really hard to win a defamation case against a, this. I'm doing an impression of me 
as a celebrity because due to New York Times versus Sullivan, uh, they have to reach an unreasonably high bar called uh, actual malice, where you have to have some evidence to show that they know that they lied when they were telling the lie and that they did that knowing lie for the purpose of defaming the character. And you get this really nasally annoying explanation. Uh, it's like it's like a lawyer squeak toy, like you squeeze them and they start talking about defamation. Sucks. Uh, they install those things in law school. But anyway, um, they do that and uh, they'll tell you how difficult it is to win. And that's because the technical application of the law means that a, a judge is going to look at that and go, yep, that's not even defamatory because it's an opinion, not a fact, or it's uh, you did not show enough evidence to show that there was actual malice, that it reached that standard that's necessary. Whereas a jury, you you start to like actual malice does not mean, um, well, Amber Heard beat him a whole lot. So she looks at him with malice. She's malicious towards him. Therefore, she lied. That's not how actual malice works. Actual malice is a legal term of art that specifically means knowledge of the falsity or reckless disregard for the truth. Now, you may logically think that, of course, Amber Heard would know if she was lying about something, but it's not that simple. It's not that simple. So uh, it, it, it becomes a problem when you get to a technical breakdown of it, and that problem falls firmly in favor of Amber Heard. So Johnny Depp wants a less sophisticated fact finder. They want a decision maker that is going to be more focused on how this makes them feel. Because Johnny Depp is charming and Amber Heard is cold and standoffish. So that's that's a, a short answer. But we could probably do hours of discussion about that question in this case specifically. Half of the chat thinks I was talking about salty and coke. Oh, no. Uh, e sorry. The cocaine thing was Ethan Ralph admitted... Um, well, when he was explaining why he did a big sniff on the sex tape that he is convicted of releasing as revenge pornography, uh, he blamed the sniffing in his in his revenge pornography conviction sex tape uh, on on his cocaine use because it, that's why he was on camera going. That was that was from Ethan Ralph, uh, host of the Kill Stream. That's that's where that went. I. I if anybody thought I meant salty cracker, I had nothing to do with him. I, I don't know anything about salty crackers, uh, you know, potential cocaine use. So. Do I want links? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you, C. Goody. Uh, I'll, I'll pin them. Much appreciated. They were appreciated. I just haven't really I have not looked at the chat with that in mind. As I was getting everything else ready. Don't ever breathe in that deeply again. You could cause a tornado. <laughs> Touche. Touche. True Anana Shabbat, a bad pressure, bad calf care says, was listening, listening, listening. I was listening, uh, listening to Sword and Scale episode 44. When I heard the sentencing, I thought I know that woeful, gruff voice. It was our boy Borowski. Very unbreaded. I sentence you to forever in prison. Do we just not have any volume on this? Or is there? Oh, no, he's he's just talking. To the other lawyer, still no volume yet. Um, Tom King says something interesting is happening with this trial In talking about it with friends on the left. Even the most staunch feminists are siding with Johnny. It's a shame the media is tone deaf. Thanks for your coverage. Godspeed. This is what I said. Earlier, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, when he gets to tell his story, Johnny Depp is not an easy target because he is not on the right. Uh, typically, part of the Me Too formula is to somehow associate the accused with the right because that turns the uh traditionally liberal activist mechanisms that me the the me too movement employs into overdrive 
And they tried to do that with Johnny Depp. Even people may not remember, but they, they were wanting to paint Johnny Depp as a Trump supporter. They were wanting to paint Johnny Depp into uh, the, the right somehow put him in with this toxic masculinity of the right. Now, I am full of toxic masculinity. Uh, Johnny Depp, I don't know if he is or not. But what I do know is that he is not the biggest Trump supporter. In fact, a lot of Trump supporters are critical of him because of some statement he made uh, that involved the death of Donald Trump or assassination. I, I don't remember the exact statement, but it's an unflattering statement from some typical upper crust Hollywood idiot, right? Like uh, that, that we that were pretty common for about four years specifically and, and have been uh, slightly common for the two years on either side of that four years. So uh, he got that, but so it, it, but it doesn't work to label Johnny Depp as a right-wing extremist. So the me too side of that, they tried to manufacture it and it didn't stick. So now you don't have those mechanisms. Those those cogs are not turning, right? And so it's it's not working. So now you just have this guy that people remember and like testifying about this woman that people barely know and don't really like so much and how horrible she was to him. People are really on the side of Johnny Depp in the public sphere. So uh, that might be translating into the jury, by the way, as well. We, we don't know. We can't see the jury and react to them. However, the media push on this is hard because they, the media runs this narrative of toxic masculinity and they've been running the narrative for Amber Heard for six years. That, doesn't, that ship doesn't change easily. The media will still get clicks when they when they report positively for Amber Heard, even if people are on Johnny Depp's side, because they want to see what the media is saying. But um, so they 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 don't have to turn the Titanic yet on this one. And you you will see some some stuff there. But look at the videos. Look at the popularity and trending videos that are out there. I mean, Johnny Depp is winning the public. He is winning the people uh, with this. The stuff that that trends and gets millions of views are uh, it, negative towards Amber Heard, like showing her doing her smirks and stuff and breaking character. Uh, positive towards little snippets Johnny Depp has had, back and forth exchanges he had with Rottenborn, just little quick moments, like when he, uh, just the way he's, there's a video that's just uh, on YouTube that's like just the way Johnny says Rottenborn and it's him going Mr. Rottenborn right like that that's got like 2 million views it's ridiculous people are interested in Johnny Depp and the commentary even on the Law and Crime Network is largely positive for Johnny Depp and you know that if if they're <laughs> if, if that community is largely on his side, well, it's probably not the law and crime normal community and their numbers are massively inflated over what they normally are. So uh, they've got a lot of people flooding in. So that's um, it's positivity for Johnny Depp, his ability to anybody who questions the wisdom of how he's conducted his uh, testimony so far they should really strongly consider the fact that they're very, very wrong <laughs> because he seems to be winning the court of public public opinion uh, very well. Will that get him back into Hollywood? Remember, he's he's got a couple audiences here. He wants to, of course, appease the people because he wants to the people the we've been waiting, turns out, for the court reporter who just came in and brought her stenography machine uh, a, a second ago and got it set up. Uh, so we've been waiting on her apparently for the judge, but that's, that's why a court has not started yet. Cause she, she just sat down. Bailiff just came and talked to her, uh, but she's, she's there now. She's right, right here getting, rolling up the sleeves. Uh, she just got set up and she just wheeled her little machine in. But 
Uh, but Johnny Depp has the people. Of course, he wants the people because the people buy the movie tickets. Uh, but Johnny Depp also wants to win over producers, casting directors, the Hollywood elite. And his performance may not be good enough for them. I call it a performance, not because I think that he's being performative uh, in, in a deceptive sort of way, but just because he's on the stand testifying and everybody's watching his performances and how he does not how he manipulates. So just to, to clarify, but um, you know, the, those are the people who have to put him in movies. And so he's got to, he's got to win Hollywood too. That's, that's the hard part for winning, winning back his career, keeping, keeping the adoration of the fans though. Let me counterpoint that really quickly. If he can get enough people on his side, then anyone willing to take a gamble on Johnny Depp will make tons of money. They will profit if he can keep the people on his side, win or lose the case. And I think Johnny Depp has sufficiently done that. I think that uh, even if a major studio would not have Johnny Depp again, if he could get, um, the and the way independent distribution works, if Johnny Depp can get, uh, you know, I'm going to say this, it's, it's kind of a meme right now, but if the Daily Wire wanted to cast Johnny Depp and he cut a, he cut a deal with them that they could stomach, right. With maybe, maybe not like 10 million up front, but maybe, uh, right. you know, an initial amount and then really heavily going off of the payout on the back end, a company like Daily Wire right. being an independent good movie morning. producer could do well good now, with Johnny Judy? Depp. Good. All right. Thanks. All right. Do we have any preliminary matters before the jury? Um, just the two preliminary matters. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I kind of need a thumb drive for each audio recording, but oh, it's, separate thumb drive it's, it's, it's marked at different exhibits. So I have to have it as ex different exhibits. So, okay, good. And we'll go through them and see what we have. And you have yours as well? Uh, your, yes, Your Honor, if I may approach. I okay. Have, uh, also, whoever told Johnny to put his hair back in a ponytail a couple of days ago was a genius. Okay. The knives, right. Uh, Okay, perfect. All right. Great. We'll go through those. If we need anything else, we'll let you know. Okay. We will have some guests today, by the Just way. So we can have them when they them, uh, decide to filter in. All right. I, What's I up, Power K, Greg? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, SSJ Too Rich says, you got something on the right side of your beard, I think. I, I don't know which is my right versus your right, but it's very possible. There's could be anything. Could be a fuzz. Uh, it can't be food yet, but it could be in a little bit when I start eating some Pop-Tarts. Why genius? Because Johnny Depp at the beginning looked bedraggled. That's a good word. He looked bedraggled. He looked like uh, some sort of hobo. He looked uh, he looked dour and his scraggly hair. He looked like a Tim Burton character, which is not how you want to look in court. Um, but uh, once he pulled his hair back, it it cleaned up his look. I mean, it really did. It's just a it's just a much better aesthetic than he had going at first. Dude, seriously, look at how much money went into that air. I think it's an engaging hairstyle. I think she's very, very smart to wear this today. Wear this hair, I should say. STFU FFS, the word is bedraggled. Look it up. It's not disheveled. If I wanted disheveled, I would have said disheveled.
I didn't see that Twitter was going to accept Elon's offer. I, I heard they were reconsidering it. Uh, finally. Mo says haircut made by the blade of McKella. <laughs> JG, uh, your donation is appreciated, but your message didn't come true. Come through. If you want to, if you want to send that to C Goody or tag C Goody, he can oftentimes rely, uh, relay a message to me through that, uh, over on rumble. What's up my rumble people. Housefur says a little late, but I wanted to say that your rant about high school bathrooms was legend. Wait for it. Dairy. I need to put it on loop mode and then work out. You deserve mad props. Hey, thank you. Thank you. High school bathrooms are a disaster and they, they bother the shit out of me. My feet is behind. Speed it up. It, well, no, it, this is where it is. Daphne Lansborough uh, sent a sticker that says, you are amazing. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated. All right, we're waiting for the jury. All right. Thank you. You can be seated. All right. Just a reminder, Mr. Depp, you're still under oath. Okay, sir? Yes. yes sir. Right. Yeah, Mr. Cross Depp. All right. <laughs> Morning, everyone. I hope you had a nice weekend. Mr. Depp, we've talked about this uh, a little bit, but you've testified that abuse can come in many forms, correct? Physical being one of them, right? Yes, indeed. Emotional? Indeed. Verbal? Indeed. Psychological abuse? Indeed. Some of those sort of flow into the other. I'd like to talk, understood. I'd like to talk about um, some of that abuse. Um, can we pull up exhibit 582, please? Realistically, how much longer will Depp be on the stand? I think most of the rest of today, if not all of it. Your Honor, this is a recording, Defendant's Exhibit 582, that we will play um, the entirety of. All right, any objection to 582? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 582 in evidence. Because even after cross is done, they have redirect. Put your fucking cigarettes out on someone else. You fucking have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can you play that one more time, please, Michelle? Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Move on. Mr. Depp. The objection was when, for cumulative. When Mr. Depp tells you in that recording to go put your cigarettes out on someone else, you don't deny that, but instead you simply say, shut up, fat ass. Is that correct? Um, I think that was another grossly exaggerated moment of Mr. Hurd, so I don't. I did not put a cigarette out on her or throw a cigarette at her. Let's pull up exhibit 581, please. This is another recording that we'll play the entirety of with your honor's leave. Any objection to 581? No objection. 581. Well, I, well, I fucked up and cried in my bedroom after I had dumped you a fucking week, week prior. A fucking week prior, after you beat the shit out of me, and then a week later, you show in my show up at my doorstep in my room. There was. And you want to say goodbye? Okay. A little say goodbye. Too oh, I said it. Yes, you did say it. I'll go to the text messages so that we are clear yes, on the tape. Yes, you said it before to me. Okay. No doubt. I mean, you did not say you're going to come over to say bye. I'm in a huge mistake. You didn't. You didn't say that to me. You didn't say that to me? Well, I won't do it again. What's the mistake then? Didn't, did you or did you not say you were coming over to say bye? Can we please pull up exhibit 598? Where is the question? Uh, do you have a question associated is with this evidence? Audio? It yeah. is, Your Honor. Um, and I, I will give the, um, the excerpts that we propose to play. Uh, and I'll say, uh, Your Honor, this is a it's a lengthy recording where well, we, I already have 598A in evidence. So right, and I just wanted to, to clarify. Um, spoke with Miss Myers this morning. We're gonna we're gonna speak at a break. It, it's a, it's a we, we're trying to be very careful about whether there's a third party 
on the tape. This is one where at the very end, um, someone else comes in. Um, they have to be careful. Ms. Myers and I will speak, and we may be because in your, California, your you we need may be agreeable. All the parties consent to a recording thing, um, as evidence. But for now, since there's a very small portion at the end that we're not going to play of a third party, we'll just I'll just give you the excerpts if that. Well, then I need 598B, and I need yes. to know what the time of the excerpts are. And we'll prepare that for you, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I need it now. I mean, I, I have the okay. the excerpts. So this would be 598B. Okay. And it's seconds one through 20, and then it's minutes 30 minutes and two seconds through 31 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay. All right. Any objection to? 598B then? No objection, Your Honor. Thank you. Tiger Stripes, I agree. Oh. Isn't that what I said? Oh, yeah. not being able to do it. No, and then exactly what I said. What did you say? At least I'm not doing it behind your back. I'm telling you. Okay. You gave me shit that I was recording, and I said, yeah, I'm recording, but at least I'm telling you. Okay. And so, if you had asked me not to, I wouldn't. Well, record, huh? Okay, so the next excerpt is minute <laughs> oh, 30 okay. and 30 minutes and two seconds. My guy walking away is necessary, is necessary, especially between you. It is of utmost importance. Because the next move, if I don't walk away, we'll just go out for a little while. Just it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a bloodbath. Like it's you know, like it was on the island, of course, like it was, you know. It's not it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Yeah, I'd Why be so. miserable? Let's just can we just the options are that have some some semblance of understanding for each other's Please, can we? Because I'm not trying to say, hey, my God, no one in their right mind is going to choose a bloodbath over walking away. Obviously, if you're given the option between the two. Then why has it been chosen so many times? Exactly. <laughs> it's the, that snowball. It is not a distinct choice. That either one of us make it any discernible point no it's stubbornness and it's all you know and it builds shit. right like mm -hmm. you build i build you know it isn't like at one moment either of us sign a certificate of saying or like sign the contract or say okay now i'll let that no so acting as though there's a choice between the two is, is relevant i'm not asking you to stay over having a bloodbath i'm asking you I mean, over walking away. I'm not asking you to have a bloodbath over walking away. I'm asking you to work it out over prolonging it and making it bigger. Why would you play that? That makes her look terrible. He's like, we, I, we have to walk away. Otherwise, it's going to be. Please pull up. Defense you make a literal bloodbath. You kill her, wouldn't you, Mister Death? On Thursday, Your Honor, I believe. Okay. Yes, it was. Thank you. Now that recording that we just heard, Mr. Depp, isn't the first time that you um, refer to an argument as a bloodbath. In fact, in this text exchange that we saw on Friday, when the disco bloodbath, you inform Miss Heard that there exists a book entitled "Disco Bloodbath," and she asks you if it is about last Friday night by any chance. You say, "How can you make me smile about such a hideous moment?" Yes, it is. Funny bitch. Did I read that right? Certainly did, sir. Thank you. Can we pull up exhibit 586, please? <clears throat> Your Honor, the only um, the, the portion of this exhibit that we would plan to play, it's a recording, is minute 7. 35 to 820. Okay, but I already have a 586A. So, so this would be 586B if. 735 to what? 820. Thank you. 
No objection to 586B? No objection. Right, no, that one that one asked an answer because it was a question with new context. Oh, yes, you do, because you wouldn't have used that as a way. <laughs> I was pouring my heart out to you. What do you do? Let me get it. Let me get it. Stab in here. That's what you saw, huh? You listened to me cry. You know what? So what you think? You just do it without thinking. You do it without thinking, huh? You don't. Get a bird, stab him when you can. You throw a swing when you can. And what win better than to these, win on the floor? Because that's when it's really good to hit someone. These are not literal hits, dummy. She's clearly talking about Oh, you literally stabbed her, didn't you? No, she's talking about hitting someone with a thing, not like a physical object. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit? Did you just pay a temp to go through and timestamp every time he says hit or stab? Like, is that what you did? Are you that stupid? This is another recording, Your Honor, that we would propose to admit all of, although we will only be playing... Minute 320 through 338. All right. So no objection to 366 in its entirety. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. All right. 366 in evidence. He's only playing part. Oh, plaintiffs. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> again, that. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 396? Your Honor, portions of this were used on Thursday. So with your leave, we'd like to introduce this as 396B um, with the following excerpts. 244 and zero seconds through 244 and 16 seconds. And then 249 and 30 seconds through 249 and 55 seconds. All right, any objection to 396B? No objection, Your Honor. 396B. Are you gonna, okay. Please hold up. This is not. This is your last week. This is your last week. This is your last call. This is your last one. Oh, what? 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 Please go to 249 and 30 seconds, please. I don't fucking care. You shut up with that. You heard Miss Heard say, Get off me, right? <laughs> no, I did not. I heard distant screaming, and I heard, I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. I was Let's look at exhibit 857, like please. <clears throat> Did you hear Johnny Depp's defense counsel whisper or plaintiff's counsel whisper that's hearsay? That confirms it. I think all the breathing we've heard has come from their table. Their mic is on. Defendant's eight five seven. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. This is another audio file. Or no? It's not. No. But okay, that was obviously he's saying I'll talk to you later as he's trying to leave. 
not Mr. being Depp, I'd on like to her. Direct your attention to the second to last text. Yes. On this, this is a text from you to your agent, Christian Carino, on August fifteenth, twenty sixteen. Correct. That's correct. That's what it looks like. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance and prejudice. Yeah, all of this uh, too high strung points out accurately that in all of the discussions, all of the arguments, all of the yelling, except for when he yells, you stupid cunt or you stupid fuck or whatever, he is trying to, he's leaving. He's talking about, we need to leave. We need to not have what happened on the island, which the island was a literal bloodbath. By the way, can we remember that? It was a literal bloodbath caused by Amber Heard chopping off a chunk of his finger. So there's some, there we do actually have some literalness to the bloodbath thing because she chopped off part of his finger and it was fountaining blood and he's spreading it all over because he kind of goes temporarily crazy. But but he means a metaphorical bloodbath. He means a knockdown, drag out argument fight. Uh Husbands and wives who have never hit each other in their entire lives will refer to, you know, crazy arguments as a bloodbath because it feels like that. It feels like someone's tearing you apart. The person that you love, the person that you chose to spend your life with. And the, this nonsense about hitting, hitting and stabbing, this is metaphor. It's hyperbole. His in, but of course, they've laid the foundation. His texts are hyperbolic. His speech is dramatic. He's a storyteller, a creative, right? Like all that uh, criticism that even I had, by the way, of inside the actor studio. Do you know why they did it? Is it is it starting to make sense? Why that cringy sort of uh, mannerism that he was adopting on the stand? Why those weird comments were actually elicited by his team? because they have to mitigate the hyperbolic language that's used in the audio recordings and stuff like that. These are dramatic people engaged in drama. Uh, that being said, uh, so I'm hearing that I'm really loud. I'll turn me down a bit. Try and balance with the cord a bit. Stream, StreamYard is just so bad at it. We'll go here. Hopefully that uh, cuts the edge off a bit. Okay. The Dragon's Treasure says, uh, head on over to the dragonstreasure.com. Stop, stock up on some weeb tea with code Amber Poops in bed. <laughs> Rackets gets a slice with every sale. So you'll be helping both of us out. Also, screw these ridiculous censorships. Yes, Amber Poops in beds is the promo code at the dragonstreasure.com. Too quiet. Oh, God. It begins. I should have never caved to the chat. I should have never caved. Your Honor, to, for the sake of time, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, may I ask the witness about the portions that we discussed, and then we can provide a redacted version. Okay. Oh, it would be great if you asked him Mr. about Depp, the... Uh, in, this, in this text message from you to Christian Carino, your agent, on August 15th, 2016, um, you, you tell him... Uh, you, you, you go on at some, some length about Amber, but you say she will hit the wall hard for exclamation points. And then later down, you say, I can only hope that karma kicks in and takes the gift of breath from her. Did I read that right? Objection compound. And I'll allow it. This um, one. That wasn't compound. He just you, said you read that correctly. Did I read it correctly? One question. And this wasn't the first time that you talked about Amber hitting the wall hard. Let's pull up exhibit 213, please. It's true, though. Hitting the wall hard based on the we'll accusations the that she exhibit, threw up. I'm sorry, I was talking. Is that all right? You would you, you would answer my question. We'll take a look at the next oh, exhibit. Thank you. Man. As long as you're happy, sir. <laughs> Uh, 
Mr. Depp, this is a text that you sent to Bruce Whitkin on February 4th, 2014. The text where, at the top of the page. Looking, on, the, on your screen, please. I, I sorry. figured that out. The, the top text on the screen. Okay, I didn't know if there was a specific, if it was third from the bottom or somewhere around the corner. What would you like me to do? This is a text that you sent to Bruce Whitkin on February 4th, 2014, correct? Yes. Your Honor, move for admission of this exhibit with uh, just that text displayed. Is he drunk? No. Johnny Depp knows with that the these little applied and also the identifiers. That's okay. These yeah. little encounters that he has that with right. Rottenborn, he I wins them. Evidence with redactions. He's charming when he does it. It throws off Rottenborn. Rottenborn hates it. It gets under his skin. So he's going to keep doing little things like that. Just little mm -hmm. conversation pieces that he has with them. Move for the admission of this. Permission to publish, Your Honor. It is in evidence. Thank so you can publish it. Ask for no. You you don't ask some to treat someone. Johnny Depp is already a hostile witness. Mr. Depp, on February fourth, twenty fourteen, you tell Mr. Whitkin, Amber and I hit the wall hard. You see that? I do, sir. And that's the same phrase that you used in your text to Mr. Carino from twenty sixteen that we just read. Correct. It's different in this context. They are similar words, but they have different meanings. If, uh, Can we pull I don't up know if um, that makes exhibit? sense to you? But. Exhibit 498, please. They may attack that on redirect. It, it doesn't really matter, but he's talking about her looks on hitting the wall. And with their relationship, he's talking about hitting a wall in the relationship, a barrier, a roadblock, uh, a stumbling point. Again, going hyper-literal is a terrible choice for these attorneys. Uh, Mr. Depp, I, is this I, a text exchange that you had with Ms. Hurd uh, on or about... October 28, 2015. Yes, sir. And I'd like to uh, direct your attention to the third text down. Yes. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Defendants Exhibit 498 with uh, identifiers redacted. Any objection? Uh, relevance, Your Honor. May we approach? Okay, sure. The court is very low. Well, let me crank up the volume a bit on that. I can go a little bit higher. Just in case. Okay. By the way, just uh, another quick shout out to the dragons treasure.com. It really is high quality tea, uh, hand sorted, hand selected teas. Very, very good stuff. Uh, you will not be, if you are a tea lover, you will not be disappointed in, uh, in the dragons treasure teas. Cornbread Oracle says first ever super chat and a new subscriber. Thanks to this trial. Thanks for the content. If Amber Heard wins, she gets awarded $1. If Johnny Depp wins, he should get his entire divorce settlement back. <laughs> uh, if Johnny Depp wins, um, I think that would be enough for even, I think a, a $1 judgment would be, he'd probably in the end of the, at the end of the day, be fine with that. Lancelot652 says she doesn't sound like a battered housewife each time she's chewing him out and yelling. Uh, I'll talk about hostile witnesses at the next pause. Can you pull up exhibit 330, please? <clears throat> yeah, by the way, guys, if you like the coverage, if you like the commentary, please click like on the stream. It really helps with the algorithm that we are all beholden to here at YouTube. I have an effigy of the algorithm that I worship every night. And I ask for its blessing and I bury figurines in the sand. Mr. Depp, I'd like to turn your attention to the, the, the middle text on this page, which is a text from you to someone named Ryan A. Uh, on 
January 12th, 2015. Do you see that? January. Uh, the second one from the last. Yes. Uh, January 12th. Yes. Yes, sir. Is that Ryan Adams, the singer? Uh, yes, it is. Um, Your Honor, move for uh, admission of defendants exhibit 330. Um, just plan on asking about that text. Uh, objection relevance, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, if we, I'm happy yeah. to approach if you want. His exasperated gasps. <laughs> How dare she question the relevance of my text? Uh, what's up to the DUI guy? How you doing, buddy? Hey, dude. How are you? I'm uh, I'm good. We're just watching this trial. I got a chance to uh, catch up on it a little bit. My internet guy is downstairs, so hopefully I'll I'll have my my setup uh, up and running this week. Sweet, very happy to hear. Very happy to hear. Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Uh, so someone in the chat was asking about uh, should the defense attorney or should the defense attorney ask to treat Johnny Depp as a hostile witness? I explained that he already is a hostile witness, and so uh, what they were at. You followed up with an asking for an explanation. So you ask for a hostile witness when your own witness is not uh, cooperating and offering testimony. Uh, and, and it's clear that they're not offering testimony, not because you're not asking good questions, not because they're unable to answer the questions, but because they've developed some sort of animus towards you, the process, whatever. So when that happens, uh, there, there typically is some sort of, th there's some structure around it, but you can request to treat them as hostile, which would be treating them as if they were on cross-examination, which would allow you to do leading questions and stuff like that. But we're talking about repeated non-responsive answers um, or answers that contain, you know, several open insults to the person asking the questions. Um, this is not a common thing. It's very it's more common in TV and movies, I would suggest, than you find in real life. Typically, you've interviewed these people. Uh, they know roughly what kind of questions they're going to be asked around what subjects, and, and everybody's kind of in agreement. So this means something has changed in the relationship Can you that pull has up caused this to happen. 620, please. Hope that helps explain that. Spot on, Nick. <laughs> Mr. Read Depp, I'd like to uh, turn your attention to text number 40. Okay. It's the third one down. Yes. This is a text from you to Malcolm Connolly. No, that was that Ryan way. Adams, That's not good. Brian Adams. Nathan Daniel. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of this document um, with the third text down. If I just. Sure. I'm happy to approach to discuss if, you, if your Honor would like. Look at the horde of women in the courtroom. <laughs> uh, relevance objection again, Your Honor. Okay, if you want to approach. <laughs> Just a whole mess of young women there. That's weird. Uh, very, very odd. But I guess when you have Johnny Depp on the stand, uh, anything can happen. Tony Ravioli says, getting some new meds May 16th, maybe my first birthday in six years without depression. Thanks for helping me with your streams. Uh, Tony, I, I hope they work out. I know that the depression yeah. medication uh, process can can be a real roller coaster. So I hope hope you got the right stuff, buddy. Keldrick says, this just makes herd sound really manipulative. Yeah. Yes, yellow girl is green girl. A lot, like um, the contextual text messages as well. If we might take a look, please. I'm sorry. Uh, we would like to take a look and just make sure the contextual text messages are coming in with the one that you're directing Mr. Depp to. I'm just going to address the court. I, if I, that that was the text message that I would like to get in. If you if they're, I'm not sure what she's yeah, asking. We'll, we'll just Honor. we'll just we'll just go forward with that text message for now. Okay. 
Okay. You should probably lay out which specific text messages are contextual to that text message if you want to ask for it. Are you going to ask a question? Mr. Depp, you, you remember last week, uh, the jury saw the video of you, um, uh, as you called it, assaulting the cupboards in that kitchen on Sweetser Avenue? Yes, sir. Very well said. And that was on or about February 10th, 2016, correct? Objection calls for speculation. I'll allow it if you can answer. I've, I've, uh, I'm not, I don't know when that's from. I have asked for the metadata. I've asked for the date and received nothing. Okay. Um, this text you sent on February 10th, 2016 to, uh, to Malcolm Connolly. Malcolm yes. Connolly is one of your security guards, correct? Yes, he is. And in this text, you say, thanks, dear Mal. I'm just at the point where I feel like I'm going to puke all the time. Once I get this shit moving and get myself out of her level of shit, I will never mention this cunt's name again, ever again. And the first prick that asks about her gets a warning. Should the single cell prick decide to push it, he never forgets me and will always be remembered throughout his life as the guy that got his fucking nose bit off, chewed up, and swallowed by Johnny Depp. While I do have some civilized bones in my body, just on a matter of principle, I must force him to watch me fulfill this promise of mangling his motherfucker of a beezer. Love you, X. Did I read that right? You did. <laughs> You're an excellent reader of words, sir. <laughs> I'd like to turn to your oh, How does that Ms. show anything about him abusing up, uh, Amber Heard? <clears throat> By the way, I, I take umbrage with that nose prejudice from Johnny Depp. I'm now on Amber Heard's side, that prick. Can never bite off a man's beezer. I'd like to direct your attention to the second to last text from the bottom. This is a text message exchange between you and Ms. Heard on October 29th, 2013, correct? It looks like it is, yes. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 195. Wait, why'd she take off her little, redacted. her shawl yeah, was better looking. Relevance grounds, Your Honor. Your Honor, th this is him expressing his views on her taking a meeting about a movie, her, her wait, career, his views. <laughs> uh, Deb's team is doing a great job of objecting today. Um, I did, Rottenborn, his sigh on the, re on the relevance objections, like he's already annoyed. I mean, they, they just got started and this guy's torqued off. They should keep doing it. They should object to everything at this point. Just keep objecting because it's really pissing him off. Throwing him off his game. How do you uh, how do you feel, DUI guy, about the the idea of too many objections? Depends on the case, man, and depends on what are you objecting to. Because if you know, the question becomes if everything you object to gets granted. Is that still even good? Maybe the jury will still wonder what was it that you wanted to ask or bring in that I'm not going to get to hear now. Because a granted objection means you don't get to hear whatever was attempted to be introduced into evidence. Right. Um, is there such a thing as too many objections? <laughs> right. Absolutely. You see the, the text that from, from Amber that says, I'm at a coffee meeting now. You see that? I do. It's right there. So she tells you at uh, at twelve forty one p.m. I'm at a coffee meeting now. We'll be home soon. And then you respond, "Holy crap, whores! No goddamn meetings, no movies. Why? Why do you deviate from our agreement? What species of meeting? Fuck it. Just tell me when you get home." Did I read that right? You did, but a coffee meeting. You didn't want her to take the meeting that she was taking that day, correct? Um, it seems as though we had an agreement. Uh, what well, seems like 
we had an agreement to do something together. I'm actually asking asking what species of mating. So this is not necessarily a, 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 an angry text. It's just why do you deviate from our agreement? It's not about her doing films. How do you think she got Aquaman, sir? You tell her no goddamn meetings, no movies, because you didn't want her acting. You wanted to control her career, correct? Objection compound. That's uh, I'll, I'll, hold on, untrue. Mr. It's a Mr. Great Gibbs, guess. Sir. All right, Sorry. yes, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Sorry. Let's okay. we can we can move on. Uh, exhibit 394, please. <clears throat> Defendant's exhibit. Thank you. Johnny seems a little bit rattled. He's Definitely getting. You can take a look at the, the fourth text down. This is a text from you. He's getting hit over and over Dr. with a guy Kipper misunderstanding idiots. On, um, it's in the, the timestamp issue, I believe. It was sent on March 8th, 2015 in Australia, timestamped March 7th, 2015. Do you see that? I do, sir. You're on our move for the admission of 394. No objection with the proper redactions of the rest of the text messages and the identifiers. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. 394 and evidence with redactions. Lancelot652 says, does he speak English? A few of these are just common vernacular of him going away. Yes. Many of the moments were Johnny Depp clearly trying to leave a situation and the guy suggesting that he was beating Amber Heard actively at the yeah. time. Yes, yes, sir. But of course, if you have a bunch of people who are English as a second state, language... Uh, be a good tactic. Right after you had suffered an injury to your finger, you text Dr. Kipper and you say, hi, fucked, man. Had another one. I just cannot live like this. She is as full of shit as a Christmas goose. I'm done. No more. The constant insults, the demeaning, belittling, most heartbreaking spew that is only released from a malicious, evil, and vindictive cunt. But you know what? Far more hurtful than her venomous and degrading endless educational ranting is her hideously and purposely hurtful tirades and her goddamn shocking treatment of the man she was meant to love. Above all, here's the real deal, mate. Her obsession with herself is far more important. She is so fucking ambitious. She's so desperate for success and fame. That's probably why I was acquired, mate. Although she has hammered me with what a sad old man has been I am, Cowan has done me the most cruel of favors. I'm so very sad. I cut the top of my middle finger off. What should I do? Except, of course, go to a hospital. I'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her. Fuck the world. Did I read that right? Yes, Mr. Rottenborn. So even as you are ranting about Miss Heard to Dr. Kipper, even as you were talking about her ambition and expressing your objections to that, you still admit to him that you cut the top of your middle finger off, correct? Objection compound. Uh, sustain is compound. You're complaining about her ambition in this text to her, to, to Dr. Kipper, correct? Um, I'm realizing that her ambition is far stronger than her uh, supposed feelings for me, yes. And there's nothing about this text that's trying to protect her. Pr protect, protect her? her. From, and From what? And you tell Dr. Kipper, I cut the top of my middle finger off in this text, correct? It's just the way it was worded. It doesn't mean that no. I actually literally cut my finger off after, at the age of 12, finding the only thing that gave me a uh, piece, which is playing the guitar, 
very unlikely. Why didn't I start lopping off digits when I was uh, 13? Then? Just the way it was worded. Now, Ms. Yeah. Her Ms. Hurd wasn't the only one who had a problem with your, you can take that down. Ms. Hurd wasn't the only one who had a problem with your drinking and abuse of alcohol, correct? Objection compound. That wasn't compound. Uh, all right, it, uh, I'll sustain the objection. If you Ms. Hurd wasn't the only one who had a problem with <laughs> okay. your drinking, correct? Same question. <laughs> so if anyone had a problem with my drinking at any time in my life, it was me. The only person that I have ever abused in my life is myself. In fact, you tried to when hide you cut your finger off your daughter, Lily Rose, didn't you? Objection relevance. What's the relevance? When your nerves Wait, are pushed. Sure, if you can, can we sure. approach your honor? Okay. Uh, Wheeler in the chat asks, uh, why are clearly illegal recordings made by Amber Heard allowed? They got to object to them. They've got to object to them. Also, it depends where the recordings are made. Uh, recordings made in California are an all party consent state, but recordings made in other states, uh, in other places, they would not be. But the defense would have to object to any of those recordings as illegally obtained. And the court, they may have done so. They may have done so in a motion in limine pre-trial. I don't know. And if they had done that and the court just ruled that they could come in, well, then they could come in and you have to argue that on appeal. Um, but that's, uh, that's how that goes. They may have just not objected to them. Uh, Johnny Depp may have wanted all of the information or as much of the information to come in as possible. He did state that he's interested in the truth, the truth of the matter coming out. So, uh, he may, he may want that. I don't, I don't know that the recordings hurt him all that much. Uh, obviously the other attorney wants to twist them. They can address it on redirect if they feel it, if they feel a need to. Even that well, last text please. message that, that the, they just read, um, like 98% of it is in Johnny's favor. It actually reinforces what he was going through. It, and it's only this, I don't know, is he trying to argue that Johnny Depp did this to himself? Is that his argument? Yes. And Who knows? It may work. The jury may bite. Yeah, well, I'd I guess like to direct ready. your attention to the last text on this page. It's a text from you to um, Kevin Murphy. He was your, uh, your estate manager, correct? He was. This is a text from you to Kevin Murphy on January 21st, 2014, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of that portion of Defendant's Exhibit 207 with redactions. With the uh, identifiers redacted, that's right. fine. Thank you. 207. Tin Man says audio is perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Kaya Wee has a retracted message. I appreciate the donation, though. Stephen Cooper says some might call that a horde of women. Not us, though. <laughs> Spelled interestingly on horde there. Uh <laughs> Permission to publish? Yes, sir. And in this text to Kevin Murphy on February, or sorry, January 21st, 2014, you say, just trying to get over my shocking discussion with Vanessa that lasted five plus hours. Vanessa's your former partner, correct? She's the mother of my children, yes. The mother of your children, that's right. And then you say, I feel ill and have invested my guts into some side corner. Now, Lily Rose hates me because she thinks I'm drinking and she's right. But I can't admit or I fucking die in her eyes. Thanks for that one, Vanessa. Come to master in main house. Did I read that correctly? You did. Can you pull up exhibit 1092, please? Follow up question. Anyone, he, he anyone doesn't have follow-up questions because he knows that Johnny will actually answer them. Yeah. I think that and, I think that's what he's really concerned with. I agree. It's not a very good strategy though, because all of this will be picked apart on redirect and he'll be left with Mr. less Depp, than is nothing. This a picture of you with. passed out in a chair 
if done properly. Of course. Again, isn't passed out. Uh, a, that's a very specific term. Sleep could be one passed out. Um, let's just let, let's try it this way. This is a picture of you in a chair, correct? That is correct. Move for the admission of 1092, Your Honor. <clears throat> Any objection? I, I'm, I'm relevant, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm, I'm trying to move this along. Well, and when we stop with relevance, well, I just, I, you want to lay a foundation. I just don't. Well, is it this relevant? Is a picture of Mr. Depp in a chair. Introduced another um, on well, Thursday, you, another you, picture. I object to the chair. What is the date of this photograph? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, these objections are throwing him off. He he's he does not like it. They're really getting under his skin today. They should keep doing it. I think. Uh, also, you you want to you want to bring up a picture of him in a chair? Why? What's the point? What what about this picture of the chair has relevance at all to anything? Yep. Because you can't tell like. You could probably find bunches of pictures of me. I have narcolepsy, passed out in chairs on couches all the time. Does that mean I'm drunk? No. No. If I'm at my in-law's house and there's a picture of me, like drool coming down my face or whatever, I'm not, I don't drink at my in-law's house. <laughs> that's not, that's not a thing. So that wouldn't be, that would be an out of context picture. It wouldn't say anything. So is there something in this picture? Is there some testimony as to what's in this picture? Trying to introduce evidence through a hostile witness is often a bad idea. Can you take that down and put um, put up exhibit 470, Michelle, please? And he lost. I think it's illegal to sleep in a chair in about 39 of our contiguous states, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I have to check the law on that, though. Well, just call me an outlaw then. <laughs> Mr. Depp, is this is the bottom text on this page a text exchange or a text message from you to your personal assistant Stephen Duders on September third, twenty fifteen? That's what it looks like, yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of this exhibit um, with just that text and the appropriate redactions. Exhibit four seventy. Again, irrelevance, Your Honor, and cumulative. I'll allow this one if we Thank just... you, Your Honor. With the redactions. You sure, Nick, we believe you. It's never the whiskey. Never. Not at my in-law's house. <laughs> we... Permission to publish, Your Honor. All right. Let's go. Thank you. Do I have a favorite bourbon? Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, in the effort to, to move this along, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but I'm going to start with the, the, the word main bits, which is five lines down. You write to Mr. Duders on September 3rd, 2015, main bits needed are Xanax and Adderall and... I want no judgment from Kipper or Debbie. Kipper means Dr. David Kipper, correct? That's correct. And Debbie means Debbie Lloyd, your sobriety nurse, correct? That is correct. Just found out from Joel last night how much I spent on having Kipper and Debbie around. Millions and fucking millions, mate. All the while, Debbie just hung around broad BCH and gave me new meds like every two weeks. She was on set maybe four times. Wow. And five money symbols. Sorry, just how it is. Did I read that right? You did. Can we pull up exhibit 587, please? This is a recording, Your Honor. <laughs> is there any reason for that text? How is that probative to this case? <laughs> um, the excerpts to be played are 1940 through 1953 and 2304 through 2329. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. 587B right. evidence. <laughs> Why 
please go to my doctors and get Adderall and Xanax from them. And by the way, I don't want to hear any bitching because I pay them a whole lot of money. Can't hear anything. In that clip, Mr. Depp, you tell Ms. Heard, I'm never getting clean and sober, correct? It sounds like to me uh, that, uh, yes, either that or I have never been clean and sober. Thank it's you. One of the Let's two. play 2304, please. In the big picture, the big scheme of things, it does nothing but hurt us. And why? Because a gold booth doesn't make it easier for you to see how clearly that it. You gotta, you stop. Think, you gotta stop with the coke. All, and booze. all the coke you, you all the coke you've done today, and all the booze you drank today. By the way, has it helped you? I just got has it helped us? Just got home. Has it helped us? Sunday. Yeah, I know because la yesterday you were a thousand times better. Right. Yesterday did we. I'd like to turn now to a few more of your words around the time that you went into detox about how you viewed Amber's role in that process, Mr. Depp. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 120 underscore 40? Has anyone asked the your question Honor, yet? Um, 120 underscore 41 was admitted the other, the other day, but um, I'd like to introduce this as a separate exhibit. So 120B and that would be underscore 40, you said, 40? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Has anyone asked the question yet, like in their minds, maybe not necessarily on direct or cross, but why does Amber have all these recordings? Why was their personal life Mr. Depp, while recorded they're looking at that, periodically? The second text from the bottom, a text sort that you of. sent I'll to explain a minute. Amber's mom, Paige, on August 19th, 2014. Yes, that's correct. Sir. And this is when you were either in the middle of or finishing up your detox process from Roxycodone, correct? That is correct. All right. In, no, no objection. No objection. Okay, one twenty B in evidence. You want to publish? Or, um, as is correct. Uh, with with the other okay. text fine. messages redacted. All right. Thank you. Oh, with the okay, yeah, sure. <clears throat> So they had um, briefly, they had talked about they would start recording their arguments because they were each pointing things out about the other uh, that that they weren't seeing. So they wanted to record them to show each other what they meant. But that was for some arguments. A lot of these are not those types of recordings and clearly are being done from a purse or from sort and of in this text message, some sort of concealed area. Write Amber's mom. Yeah. August 19th, 2014. You say, my dearest Paige, how unbelievably kind and pure your message was. I am beyond thankful to have you in my life. There is no luckier man on this earth to have the strength that Amber gives me and the full support of each of you individually that I've gotten helps immeasurably. I don't need to explain the horrors to you. You know as well as I. What you do need to know that your daughter has risen far above the nightmarish task of taking care of this poor old junkie. Never a second has gone by that she didn't look out for me or have her eyes on me to make sure that I was okay. Why and words are truly feeble in attempting to explain her heroism in a text. Suffice to say that I have never met or loved a woman or a thing more. She has the strength of a thousand men, and that is due to no one or nothing but you, sweetheart. Thank you. I love you. Your son, Outlaw. Did I read that correctly? You, you did, sir. I'd like to take a look at a, another document. Um, oh, okay. Uh, 272, please. <laughs> Again, why, why would you read that text or that, that email? Well, I think the purpose behind that one is to show that uh, at, at, at least at that brief period, 
him and Amber were on good terms and she was supportive and helpful, but it doesn't mean it didn't spiral out of control the next week and then never return back to the same set. I think the date was like August of 2014. That's like the beginning of their marriage or relationship or whatever. Is this a text message yeah. that you shared a uh, text message exchange between you and Amber the following day on April 20th, 2014? Yes, sir. Your Honor, permission to uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 272 and ask for permission to publish. Uh, with the identifiers removed, we have okay. no objection. All right, remove the identifiers. Yeah, it's at the beginning of their relationship. And and remember, this is, but this is about him abusing her. Right. Like 72 in evidence. I think they they like that junkie line as if we don't know that he was a drug addict. Yeah. Now, Mr. Depp, you testified on Thursday that you saw nothing wrong with referring to Amber as a lesbian camp counselor when she was trying to get you to stop using drugs. <laughs> but she let's take a look at what same, you say. In she had used text. that term before. In this text, Mr. Depp, you say, just let to him let be. you know Jeez. that I'm fine, my angel. I miss you, of course, but this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. I love you more than life. Yours, Steve. Did I read that correctly? You did. You can take that down. Now, you've brought Why this did the judge let him the testify there? But for years prior to the date that Ms. Heard wrote the op-ed, there were numerous negative news stories about you. You'd agree with that, correct? Objection compound. All right. I'll sustain it to compound. <laughs> for years prior to 2018, when Amber wrote the op-ed, there were numerous negative news stories about you that were released into the public, correct? Objection calls for speculation. I'll allow it if you can answer. Um, by 2018, you're saying? Correct. Yes, it all started with um, Ms. Hurd uh, going to going directly to a court to get a TRO, which is with a bruise on her face and paparazzi. Uh, that that was the sort of beginning of the the ball rolling down the hill and gaining momentum. There were lots of negative destroyed. stories about you prior to May 27th. Let him speak. When Amber went into court, correct? Objection asked and answered. Now it's 2016. I'll, I'll allow it. If you answer. There are plenty of negative stories about you prior to that date, weren't there? So I've, I've, I've been in this, the racket of Hollywood since 1984. Um, my... Mr. Depp, it's, that's, I'm asking you a yes or no question. There were plenty of negative news stories about you prior to May 27, 2016, correct? From 1984 up until then, they're both, they're both. So, of course, people write negative stories. Sure. And you just testified to the jury that it all started on May 27, 2016. So that's why I asked you to clarify about the negative stories prior to that date. And you'd agree that there were, Correct. Can you be specific about the stories? Of course, there are sure. negative stories. Uh, I, I really want him to say All right. stories about me Your and Honor, Mrs. Heard. Um, no. Numerous exhibits in one sort of compendium. Um, all uh, press articles about. These are all hearsay, by the way. All of these articles are hearsay. You could also, if you're listening, hear Johnny Depp's team so whisper much. hearsay. They should be objecting, objecting to all of this. Your Honor, in, 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 having received this, I, I would like to preemptively lodge a hearsay lack of foundation. And I, he hasn't I, got him in evidence yet. I don't. Are you moving? No, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to approach, but they're certainly not being admitted for the truth of the matter asserted. But I'm happy to approach and discuss. Yeah, they literally are being admitted for the truth of the matter asserted. You want the negative inference that all of these articles are drawing against Johnny Depp. <laughs> he just handed him a giant stack. It's a brilliant defense move. Yeah. No, it's good because hopefully they printed out like every single page of every single article and made that stack thicker and thicker. So when he hands him a book, the jury sees a book. Yep. 
Uh, Stephen Cooper said, oh, wait, I read that one. Kaya Wee says, if Johnny Depp wins, it would be amazing if he donated all the money to the children's hospital that Amber never actually gave the divorce money to. <laughs> that would be a good move. Uh, Ron White says, Nick, can the jury award punitive damages in addition to the 50 million? Um, I'm not sure if they can in this case. Also, I don't know that punitive damages would apply really to like what punitive damage if they're going to give, they're not going to give 50 million, but let's say hypothetically that they did award 50 million against an individual. There's no way in hell they're going to have a punitive damage on top of that. Amber Heard doesn't have $50 million. The punitive damages tend to come in when you have a particularly moneyed uh, individual or corporation getting a small award or the, having a small award against them for sort of a grievous thing. And so you need to proportionally punish them to deter the activity. Cause otherwise like imagine if you sue Jeff Bezos and every time you sue Jeff Bezos, someone wins 50 grand. Well, that's not going to deter Jeff Bezos from doing an activity that would maybe otherwise be profitable to him. 50 grand is a, is a, is a pittance uh, for him. So for Jeff Bezos to be 50 grand plus punitive damages, maybe of a couple million dollars to, to, which for him is not that much either, but you get the idea to add, add some sting and, uh, and deterrence to it. I don't think in, in this case, if you're going to have, if you're going to have a multi-million dollar award against someone whose net worth is somewhere around 7 million bucks, uh, you're not going to have punitive damages on top of it. Probably. And punitive damages are usually only available in most States when there's like, uh, intentional act and it's clearly intentional and they prove it's intentional and or malicious, then punitive damage, unless, if that's not even an option, if that's not present, then punitive damages are usually completely unavailable. And that's, so with, uh, I'm not sure how it works in Virginia specifically. Johnny Depp is a pub, he's, he's a public figure. So they do have to show actual malice as part okay. of the, um, as part of the defamation that may preclude them from winning punitive damages as it's an underlying element of the defamation. It may also not, it may then be a foregone conclusion that it was malicious, but I'm not familiar with Virginia's specific defamation law on that point. Um, but yeah, uh, what, what you said it, there, there tends to have to show that there's some level of, of uh, consciousness to their actions beyond mere negligence. And defamation is normally a crime of negligence or a crime, a, a tort of negligence, except when you have a public figure, then it's actual malice. But, uh, yep. but again, I, I, I think that if you've got a jury, uh, that's going to, to dole out a multi-million dollar award already, they're not going to add punitive damages onto it against a single person, probably. But maybe they will. I mean, I who knows? Uh, but again, not not knowing the actual legal standard in Virginia, I'll try, I'll see if I can maybe figure that out uh, for tomorrow's stream or a, or a side video or something about it. C. Neil says, "My sons call me a boomer because I like calls and not texts." After this trial, I think I've proved my preference for talking. The phrase "never in writing and always in cash" is good for griping about your wife and hiring hookers. <laughs> Yeah, That's man. Fun. I mean, all of these, all of these texts are being taken. Uh, and, and this is how, this is how it all it works in any trial where you have written material you get, and you get to read them, especially as an attorney, you can't be too crazy dramatic, but he did something in one of those texts where there were two lines separated by ellipses. And he read those two lines together. He did not pause after the ellipses. Now he didn't, add a bunch of drama or inflection into it, but he read those two together and it made one flow into the other when they were clearly delineated in the text by Johnny Depp. And in all the other times in that text, he stops at the ellipses because that was, they were individual thoughts, but just that subtle way of reading it and just kind of storming through those two lines puts them together. And that's what the jury hears. And when they read it back, I mean, who knows if they'll remember what they hear or if they'll read it their own way uh, when they look at it, if they even review that particular text message later. So um, putting things down in writing is uh, risky business. You, you got to be you got to be conscious of what you're doing. I can't I can't wait. 
uh, the, the day that I get sued and all of my funny stuff gets read to the world, it'd be great. Cause I'm, I'm a comedic genius at all times. And I never have ever said anything that I regret saying, I'm sure. <laughs> so, You're also the most no. humble YouTuber I've ever met. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> nothing could ever come back to burn me. It's not like there's thousands of hours of video of me calling people horrific names or saying terrible, terrible things that can be taken out of context. <laughs> Uh, Taco Jim says, I can't believe how cartoonishly evil Amber's team is when Johnny wins. I hope John Malkovich plays Amber in the movie. <laughs> okay, that'd be funny. That would be good. I think John could pull it off. <laughs> Put a wig on him. He looks like Willem Dafoe in Boondock Saints. Uh, that'd be great. Jared Anthony, thank you for the donation. Steve C says, can I get a can I get a toast for my sanity? They're doing concrete remediation in my condo building. And it sounds like they're jackhammering in my living room and awesome cutoff on the drive stream last night. Lol. <laughs> yeah. I forgot we were running out of time and it, it, it cuts off on its own uh, to Steve C. May the pounding in your head be muddled by the dulcet tones of Johnny Depp on the stream today. And may the concrete remediation go quicker than expected for you, sir. Deserve a moment of peace and quiet. Cheers. Mr. Depp, Fine. if you could please take a look at the, the stack of articles in front of you. Um, yes, it's a stack of hit pieces. Yes, the, the first one is called the Ms. Hurd's Public just, City Team. Ooh. Mr. Depp, I'm, I'm, we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. I'm, um, I'm going to ask you about the first one. Well, we're going to we're going to talk about them. The first one is, is entitled uh, "It's from the Guardian." You see that? Apparently drone. Case. Yes, and this is a, an article from Sep, from November 15, 2014, entitled "Apparently Drunk Johnny Depp Cut Off at Hollywood Film Awards Ceremony." Correct. Uh, that's what it says. Yes, sir. And the next article is an article from May 7th, 2016. Out of object I don't know how they lost this foundation objection. It's entitled Johnny Depp. Friends and family seriously concerned about him. Here's why. Are these self-authenticating? The next article from May 1st, 2017, before yes, Ms. Heard filed uh, for a restraining order. A year and a half before she published, um, uh, no, sorry, this would be this would be after May first, twenty seventeen. Uh, the headline is Johnny Depp has a clear and epic sense of entitlement. Ex managers say, yes, published in the Hollywood Reporter. Correct. I was in a lawsuit with him, sir. The next article from May tenth, two thousand seventeen, is entitled Johnny Depp: A Star in Crisis and the Insane Story of His Missing Millions. Did I read yes. that right? That's straight from the same lawsuit, sir. The next article, also from May 10th, 2017, a year and a half before the op-ed was published, says Johnny Depp reportedly drank heavily and was constantly late on the new Pirates movie set. Did I read that right? You did, reportedly. The next These article, are also pieces. from May 10th, 2017. Mr. This, Depp, this is a pathetic attempt. Mr. Depp. Please just respond to the question that I'm asking you. What's your the question? Next question the morning. next the next document, What's your question? That's a good question. Published in Vanity Fair on May 10th, 2017. Yes. Sir. Is entitled Johnny Depp's Financial Woes Might Sink the Next Pirates of the Caribbean. Did I read that right? You you did. I don't know. The how next my article financial woes would do May that. 25th, 2017, a year and a half before the op-ed was published. An oh, look how excited he looks. Where did it all go wrong for Johnny Depp? After a string of flops and a ton of bad press, Johnny Depp's star power looks as wobbly as Jack Sparrow on a plank. I cannot that believe right? the judge is allowing this, by the way. Very, very well. The next one, Hollywood Reporter, May 27, 2017. Headline, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Diminishing Returns of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? You certainly did. Hollywood Reporter were very nice to me. At the time. July 12th, 2017. Why are all of Johnny Depp's movies bombing at the box office? Did I read that right? Um, 
you certainly is he trying to argue that Johnny was already losing his wealth and he in, in order to regain it he's suing here in Amber Heard now Amber really Ed. headline Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk wow. reports say did allegedly I read that correct reports say this is hearsay June 21st 2018 six months before the op-ed was published Vanity Fair article, the real reason Johnny Depp used an earpiece on a film set. I think that was explained read that in court correctly. the other day. Oh, you did, yeah. June 21st, 2018, six months before the op-ed was published, mm -hmm. a Rolling Stone article entitled, The Trouble with Johnny Depp, multi-million dollar lawsuits, a haze of booze and hash, a marriage gone very wrong, and a lifestyle he can't afford inside the trials of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? You did, you should read the article. And the last, one, the last one, the last one, 22nd, 2018, the Daily Mail, vodka for breakfast, 72 hour drug binges, and spending sprees that beggar belief. Alison Boshoff reveals why Hollywood's reeling over what's being called Johnny Depp's career suicide note. Did I read that correctly? You did. Who's Alison Boshoff and how does she know? Mr. Depp, you can't name oh, a single actress who has benefited in her career by coming forward and stating that she was the victim of domestic violence, can you? I can. She calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. I I mean, come on now. When Amber he made leave that in. He's, he's really good at trying to do those little tricks. Fair to say it got a lot of press attention, right? Objection calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. When Amber made abuse accusations against you in May 2016, you became aware that it got a lot of press attention, correct? Very quickly, I became aware. And she became associated with those abuse accusations that she made against you in May 2016, correct? To your knowledge. Objection calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. You, you became associated with those domestic abuse accusations that she made against you, correct? I think that's clear. And yes. you understood that she and you understood that she became associated with those same accusations that she made, correct? You testified to that. Objection, you just sustained well, this. She had a choice, I didn't. And you've talked about the immediate impact that those accusations on May 27, 2016 allegedly had on your career, correct? Yes. You testified earlier in your examination on direct that when Amber made those accusations in 2016, you said you lost, quote, no nothing less than everything, correct? That is correct, sir. But you didn't try to get the restraining order lifted in 2016, did you? I, I don't. If she wanted a restraining order. It's a yes order. or no question. You didn't try to get the restraining order. No, why order, would you? I? And you didn't have a divorce trial where you could respond to Amber's accusations of abuse in 2016, did you? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. I'm asking him if he had a trial. As right, a fact. I'll allow you didn't have a divorce trial where you could respond to Amber's accusations of abuse, did you? No, there were no charges pressed against you me. chose she didn't not tell to the police that I had done anything. She didn't mention my name. And and you didn't you didn't have a California divorce judge decide these facts, did you? Objection has been answered. I'll you chose objection. You chose not to try to clear your name at that time through any sort of legal procedure. Objection. Right? Objection asked and answered. Yeah. I'll sustain the objection. And you chose to sign a divorce agreement in which you stated that Amber had objection not made asked any and answered also about you for financial gain. We, we already went that, through correct? this objection asked and answered asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Nailed it. In fact, you waited until Amber wrote the op ed in the Washington Post. He's in just testifying now. 2018 to file a lawsuit against her, correct? Which is what you do on cross. He's not doing it wrong. Two, please. It was the only time that Permission I was able to honor. speak and use my own voice. You chose not to sue the Washington Post in this lawsuit, correct? Yeah, it was an op-ed. Relevance, asked and answered. It's not been asked and answered. It hasn't been asked and answered, but I'm not sure what the relevance is. You chose to sue only Miss Heard and not the newspaper that published this article, correct? Objection, What's compound. The relevance. All right, I'll sustain as to compound. You chose not to sue the Washington Post, correct? Objection, relevance. I'll sustain the objection. You only sued the author of this article. Objection. Relevance. Correct? Object again. 
which seems she was the one making the statements. Yes, I had the opportunity to fight back. Permission to publish exhibit two, your honor. All right, exhibit two is already in evidence. So we'll publish. Mr. Depp, you realize that the only job for this jury to decide. Yes, sir. It's only job is to determine. Objection calls for a legal conclusion. Op-ed. And this op-ed alone is defamatory. Objection calls for, calls for a legal conclusion. conclusion. I'll sustain the objection. This is the only writing that you are, that's the subject of this lawsuit that you brought, correct? Same objection. It's fact, Your Honor. He brought I'll the allow lawsuit. that question. I'll allow it. This is a version of that story of the op-ed that I have never seen. The one that was published before, the one that, the only one I've ever seen is the one that was published prior to this. They changed the title because they were in fear of trouble. Well, I moved to strike that last testimony, Your Honor. Well, I mean, um, th it's whether it's the oh, author, oh. this and there's emails, by the way, the only statement. The only publication of anything that's the subject of the lawsuit. Dude, Rodden Bourne, you just got burned hard. Sustain the objection. This op-ed, Mr. Depp, does not discuss any of the details of your relationship that we've seen in texts and emails and recordings over the past few days, does it? Objection, compound, and asked and answered. And I'll sustain both objections. In fact, this article doesn't contain <laughs> Object any again. details of your relationship with Ms. Hurd. Objection, objection. Asked and answered. I'll sustain the the objection. only thing that this article states, Mr. Depp, is that in 2016, Amber made accusations of domestic abuse. That's not true. It, it states Correct. a whole bunch of things. It's several paragraphs long. I, it was clear that she'd made allegations in 2016. And she so did that, that when she obtained a restraining order against you in 2016. Correct? Um. He's trying to use the re restraining order privilege. Yeah, I suppose, yes. Yeah, and even if you disagree he'll use that on closing. with the accusations that she made against you in May 2016, it is a true fact that she did make those accusations in 2016 and got a restraining order against you, correct? Objection, compound, asked and answered. Sustained. And calls for a legal conclusion. Next question. Oh, he's fine with the sustained objections. He doesn't care about the answers. He cares about the questions. Y'all, that's they, true. He just wants to tell Your the jury knowledge. what's up. The words that Miss Heard used in this article about getting a restraining order against you in 2016, those are true, correct? I'm sorry. The words that Miss Heard used. Document. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Can you can you go to? Um, the third paragraph. Well, the third paragraph. This poor judge is working overtime on this. The statement that then two years ago, Ms. Heard became a public figure representing domestic abuse. That is true, isn't it? I'm not sure what we're looking objection. at. Objection. Oh, I see it. Calls for a legal conclusion. So I'll sustain the objection. It's, it's, I'll it's sustain not. the objection. And in 2016, for the first time publicly, Ms. Heard accused you of domestic abuse, correct? In 2016? Yes. That's correct. No further questions. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, we'll go ahead and take there our we go. recess. That was, his, that was his orgasm right there. Research and do not talk to anybody about the case, okay? We'll come back. I don't think he came, bro. He'd been waiting to read off those articles. You could see it. He was so giddy. It's like, yes, I'm going to burn him with this. It did not work. His, I am not impressed. No, his tirade there at the end. I mean, he's he's testifying to the jury is what he was. That was his goal. I don't think he got his money's worth on that one at all. It. Uh, and props to Johnny's defense team. They were on the spot with the objections during that rapid fire stuff. Uh, very, very well done. Uh, they were not missing much of anything. Um, and they, they've they been winning about 90% of the objections today. They're doing, uh, yep. they're doing really well with that. So, um, 
even disregarding that last spurt of just repeated objections of the exact same shit <laughs> over and over, um, they were, they're still doing really well with it. So, uh, the, uh, but yeah, I mean, that guy's, his goal in this case was clearly to uh, testify to the jury about what the case is about. He wants the, they need that hyper-technical argument on defamation to win because they know that there's a real chance that the jury thinks that their relationship was a wash and not abusive, but just tumultuous. Mm -hmm. And if the jury comes to the conclusion that she's not abused, but was rather the participant in a rocky relationship, then she has defamed Johnny Depp by, mm -hmm. by making these allegations. I actually think he made some mistake there at the end by reminding people that she publicly accused him in 2016. Cause if he loses on that hyper-technical aspect, and this is where I think Johnny Depp's team is going and has been going the whole trial. They want to bring in, they want to bring in the idea that all of those prior statements are baked into the phrases in the op-ed. They want all of that to be cumulatively included. Now that's not a legal standard, but they're not before a judge anymore. They're before a jury and the jury can say, yeah, I mean, she's been lying about him for years leading up to this op-ed. And that was just the, you know, that cut the rope. That was the, the ember that burned the, that broke the rope or whatever you want. Some idiom, uh, pick an idiom. It doesn't matter. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what they, I think are going to argue and cross is that all of this has been building to this op-ed and this is where she dropped the ax. And this is what said it. This is what killed his career. This is what did all this stuff. And I think him drawing attention to the fact that she did this in 2016, uh, really hurt them. And now they get to go through if they want to all of those articles and let Johnny Depp explain each one of them. And one of the things he said is, you know, these articles were were hit pieces from her PR team. And if he wants to say that, go ahead and say it. What are they going to do? Object? <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's, uh, yeah, whoo, kind of some interesting rapid fire going on there. For sure. Um, I'm interesting, interested in seeing how uh, Johnny Depp's team is going to rehabilitate uh, rehabilitate him on redirect and what are they going to focus on because I, I think there's so much has been thrown at Johnny on cross the smartest move for them would be to limit like the highlights like the most important points because the biggest mistake an attorney can make right now is to try and rehabilitate their witness on every single negative point that's been made which is the jurors, you have to understand the jurors are people too. They're not stupid. Yep. They have their, their bullshit antennas going throughout the trial. They are listening. They're paying attention. They understand. Like, for instance, today, the whole, um, what was it, putting, uh, throwing against the wall? We hit a wall. And yeah. Like, I hope to dear God they don't redirect on that because that is going to be, that's too obvious. It's just a waste of time, you know, right. stuff like that leave it for the jury because that's the, the obvious things they just need to leave but certain things require clarification like those tabloids had absolutely nothing to do with your relationship with amber and this lawsuit in no way shape or form is sparked by whatever rotten bottom is trying to like prove on cross-examination yes no it, it you know it, they need to clear up several points for sure but there i hope that if they're smart they're going to limit the redirect um, to the most important highlights. Yeah, well, let's take a look uh, at IMDb here. Johnny Depp, because I'm curious when his last film was. Uh, so Johnny Depp's last feature film. Actor, actor, actor. I keep calling him uh, Rotten Bottom. I'm sorry, Rotten Born. I, yes. I don't know why I keep saying that. So, yeah, 2018, Fantastic Beasts, 2018, City of Lies. He had one, two, three, four, five movies in 2018. One, two, three, four, five movies in 2017. Or five uh, credits. Five credits in 2017, five credits in 2018. Um, a, couple, a couple of those are feature films each year. 2016, he had uh, 
two feature films and uh and a tv movie um oh wait three feature films and a, a tv movie so uh what he needs to do is just simply say they need to just ask mr depp when was this article published or this op-ed pu uh, published such and such 2018 and what films have you done since then <laughs> or what like well when did your when did you stop getting offers to do films when did the script stop coming in when did people stop talking to you about doing this well 2018 when this op-ed hit but you were doing movies between 2016 and 2018 weren't you Yes, you were still getting proposals between 2016 and 2018, weren't you? Well, I, they can't do it this way. This is leading. Did you receive any movie proposals between 2016 and 2018? Yes. Did you receive any after 2018? No. Done. Like yep. that that establishes that timeline. So they need to they need to do that because this is one of the things that defamation cases do. They, they this is such bullshit. And I've, I've seen this in a case that I was covering um, a couple years ago, but they'll have these compound accusations that build up and build up and build up. And then there's there's something about whatever that cuts it, that says now this is the thing. And they'll say, well, isn't it true that for the past 10 years? people have made accusations against you. It's like, well, yeah, someone on some message board somewhere made an accusation that in some way mirrors this and no one cared for 10 years about it. But it's this statement. It's this moment in time where everything comes cra uh, crashing down. And so there's some sea change that occurs. It's something about these statements make them more damaging than any of the ones that were prior. And so they they do this mm -hmm. uh, and, and they'll have cumulative accusations because they weren't working. If the goal is to harm someone, if Amber's been trying to harm Johnny Depp since 2016, I don't know if she has, but hypothetically, if she's been trying to harm his career and his person since 2016 and the statements weren't working, well, you find a different way to ask him and a different way to ask him until you hit your goal and then you're done. You got it. You got it. But you can't say that uh, that all of that other stuff well, it was, it was the same quality because it clearly wasn't. It didn't do the job. Uh, but that's the trouble of defamation, yep. especially especially now. And so that's that's why I think that Depp's team needs to be very adept at bringing together all of those accusations and incorporating them into this statement. All of that baggage was brought, and I think they should focus at this this op-ed in the Washington Post wasn't a message to the public. Those public accusations had come and gone, the tabloids, and it wasn't working. This was a message to the industry. She was calling to the industry in a major publication in a way that other people have made their accusations by becoming, quote unquote, the face of domestic violence. She is trying to paint Johnny Depp as a villain for the industry insiders who know all of the drama and have refused to act until now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's how they do it. I could be wrong, but I think that's how they, they do that personally. But I think it's a good assessment, Nick. Thank you. Uh, okay. We've got some super chats here to read, by the way, I'll super chats are all a little bit later. If that's okay. Yeah. You're going to pop out for a bit. Yeah. All right, man. Have fun. Talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Chad. I'll see you later. Yep. By the way, guys, uh, DUI guy is in the description. Um, if you want a guy who knows cross-examination in particular, but uh, trial process, examination, you can go on DUI guy's channel you, in the description. Click on his name. It'll bring up his uh, YouTube page. Check out some of his video. This guy has videos of himself destroying people on the witness stand. I mean, that's, that's what he does. He does it really well. He breaks down their credibility. He raises questions for the jury. Uh, if you want to watch a guy who's an expert on, well, on DUI defense in specific, but really in how he does his examination and cross-examination of witnesses, how you raise doubt for a client, that's the guy. And you can watch him do it in real court with real results. So, uh, so go check that out. He's, uh, he's a, he's a very interesting dude and, uh, he's got a, he's got a cool channel. Um, Satan, the sir gaming and stuff says came in a little late. So I don't know if it's been asked. What are your thoughts on the makeup 
company coming out and showing that Amber couldn't have used the makeup palette claimed because it came out in 2017. Um, that's great for public opinion. They, they probably don't really care about it in court so much, uh, because it doesn't really matter, I guess. And calling too much attention to it might be useless, but I, I don't know. Uh, the question is, the question becomes, how does Johnny Depp's team get that in front of the court in a meaningful way? So for the case, I'm not sure it matters so much. For the public opinion piece of it, which is re like that is a critical element of their overall strategy. Absolutely. Absolutely important. And great. I know it proves she lies, but how do you get it in front of... Because like it's a statement made by someone not in the lawsuit. It has to be... Uh, it, it's hearsay. <laughs> specifically hearsay. So you have to bring it in. You already have your witness list established. And I'm guessing a representative from the makeup company probably isn't on it. How do you authenticate the statement? How do you get it in? How do you make it relevant to the case? These are the evidence challenges. Not that the statement isn't valid. It's just the process challenges of introducing that evidence. But but right, like right now, if they were to try and introduce that statement, that would be a hearsay statement. It's made out of court uh, by someone who isn't there, right, by this company. Um, and it's offered to prove the truth of the matter, that this makeup didn't exist. That's exactly why they would introduce it. Now, they may be able to, uh, if she's dumb enough to talk about it on her direct exam, and they, she raises, she says, oh, I, I wore this foundation. Then maybe they could raise it on a uh, cross to impeach her, but she would have to raise the issue. So right now, the only, the only thing is the attorney asked Isaac Baruch, the crazy cat lady attorney asked Isaac Baruch if, uh, if he was aware, if Amber was wearing a particular cream. So it's not like in evidence that she was wearing a particular cream. It's a sneaky tactic to put in the minds of the jury that she, she may have been wearing this particular foundation, but it's not in evidence that she was wearing that foundation. So there would have to be testimony that she was to impeach the testimony that she did. That makes sense. So will amber testify almost for certain i her not her not uh testifying would be a grave mistake her testifying will probably be the same but um roc destination being not from america from what point on does a jury decide and not a judge anymore the jury will decide the outcome of this case the judge is to uh is to deal with the procedural issue of this case so the judge is to weigh evidence and make legal determinations. The jury will make fact determinations. And at the end, the jury will have constructed a factual scenario and apply the law to it, apply the legal standard of defamation to those facts that they agree that they, they decide on in their deliberation room. So, um, but they will decide who wins the case and they will decide uh, I, I believe the jury will decide what the award is as well. The judge is just there to be a referee between the two sides as they make their cases. So good, good question. I hope that helped answer it. C. Neil says, you need to do a poll. How many viewers have been going through their phones, erasing text messages, griping about their spouses to friends? I got asked this weekend, have you ever texted? No, ma'am. Erase, erase, erase. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Josh Vermillion says, super chatted earlier about a DUI hearing I had today. I won full license reinstated. Effing finally only took 16 years. So here's a celebratory tip. Thanks for all the great coverage. Josh, that's fantastic. 16 years to be vindicated on that. Whew. Congratulations, brother. DCV Titan says, yes, because he's going to text your daughter is a massive cahoots and deplorable female dog to a lady that he claims to really like and get along with. I mean, Amber is the problem, not her mom. Oh, yeah. And that's what DUI guy was talking about. 
Don't rehab him on everything. Don't go through every text message that he sent that was negative. Maybe hit a couple of them. Maybe hit a couple explaining the way he texts. Um, talk about the dramaticness. Does he remember any of the specifics of any of these instances? Uh, what What's up with the hyperbole? You know, the ones he may want to think about are the ones where he talks about burning her and, uh, and drowning her and burning her and then um, violating her corpse, right? What's going on here? Yeah, we were actually talking about a book or we were talking about a potential script or we were talking about something, uh, wh whatever the explanation may be. Or maybe they shouldn't, right? Like if the explanation is, no, I was literally going to kill her. And I was contemplating how. Like, if that's the explanation, you don't want that. You don't want Johnny looking like a maniac. But if you have a good explanation for it, use it. But don't go through every single thing. Not worth doing. But again, going rehabbing him on the finger is important. You lied to the, did you lie to the doctors about your finger? Yes. Why? I wanted to protect Amber. Why did you want to protect her? I loved her. We were in a relationship. Our relationship had its ups and downs. It had its rockiness, but, but I still loved her. And I knew it would happen if the tabloids got a hold of her cutting off our finger. Our relationship was in a valley. And if the publicity came in, it would have, it would have severed it off. But we weren't ready to end it. I wasn't ready to end it. There you go. Do that. Have, have that type of testimony come out about the finger. So I lied about it. I certainly didn't chop off my own finger. Why would I? I get my solace from playing guitar. How did this impact your playing guitar? I wasn't able to play guitar until my finger was rehabbed. And in fact, I'm a little slow switching chords now. It makes it harder. It hurts after an hour of playing. It hurts. Why does it hurt? Well, it hurts because Amber Heard chopped it off. That cold bitch. Uh, do stuff like that. You you want to get to why he did this. You want to get to how ludicrous it would be to chop his own finger off. You want to get to all of those things to rehab those particular issues because I don't personally have too much of a problem. Like I get the finger uh, text, but that's one where you could have some confusion because he needs Amber Heard to have chopped off that finger, right? That's, that's the abuse that that's massive abuse. No one can look at that and say, oh yeah, she's fine. Squizgar says this judge needs to be removed and run out of town on a rail. I don't know if I agree with that. Don Travis says sending a box of goodies to you and the family today, just a way to say thank you for the long hours and laughs. Hey, thank you, Don. I really appreciate that. Uh, Lancelot 652 says tabloid pieces. Are we using bored housewife trash as evidence now? Well, we are using Amber. Come on. Come on. Okay. Uh, Joy Mace, thank you for the donation. Uh, Crudest Rue says, why do I feel that Johnny Depp's lawyers are out of work SAG actors that said, I once watched my grandma watch a Law & Order episode? So, no, I think that Johnny Depp's lawyers are doing fine today. Uh, they're doing, they're doing well on the, on objections. Uh, they were on top of it. Um, they've been much better today than they were the first couple days. Uh, and, and Thursday they were very good too. And now we'll get to see how they do on redirect. They may be trash on redirect. I hope not. Be seated and redirect. Good afternoon, Mr. Depp. Hi. Could we please pull up plaintiff's exhibit one? Mr. Depp, is this the version of the op-ed that you recognize? Yes, ma'am, that's the one. Um, I would move exhibit one, plaintiff's exhibit one into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. Right. Any objection? No, All right, one in evidence and publish. Mr. Depp, when did you see Ms. Hurd's December 18th, 2018 op-ed for the first time? It was, um, I 
it was uh, presented to me by one of my team, I can't remember, but um, it was within a day or so of it. A uh, couple of days of it having been written, I, I, I believe. And what was your reaction when you saw it? Shock. Why were you shocked? Because I, at that point, it had been a good solid two, two or so years of this, um, of the accusations, of the allegations um, planted firmly on my back. So something that I had to carry with me. Um, and uh, I just couldn't believe that it that it was continuing. Um, on, I, that it was continuing in such a way that, that, that the the it was clear that the more bad press, the more hit pieces that came out on me, the more of these stories of Ms. Heard um, and her righteous. Um, uh, chase um, against me. The, the, it, 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 it was. It, it wasn't stopping, and and um, it's difficult to um, once you've chewed on it for a couple of years, it's, it becomes pretty difficult to swallow anymore. It, 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 as it's as it was completely untrue. How did you feel when you saw the op-ed for the first time? Objection asked and answered just now. I, my prior question was about his reaction. All right, I'll allow it. Hurt. Yeah, a, a, a blinding, um, a blinding hurt, it was, it was like somebody hit me in the back of the head with a two by four. I, I um, and as I said, I had no, <clears throat> I had had no ability to speak prior to, because even if I had done an interview to try to explain myself, it turned into a hit piece. So my mouth was, uh, shut um and this was the opportunity where i thought it, 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 it something's got to be done it's, it's just got to be done i couldn't take it anymore when did you first learn that disney was not going to recast you in the pirates franchise good question a, probably two or three days after this op-ed appeared Excellent. Um, one of my crew, again, I don't remember who had sent me, <clears throat> excuse me, had sent me um, a, a piece that was in some magazine and Sean Bailey, who was the, the number three. Objection, hearsay. I, I don't know yet. I'll, I'll rule it at this point. Thank you. May, may I continue, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Sean Bailey, who was the uh, the third the third in line, as I suppose, in, in the upper echelon of Disney, um, just basically said in the objection in, hearsay. Um, Your Honor, this, this is present sense impression. It's about him it's learning in, about this. Article. It's not for the truth. It is the truth. It's, she's asking. Do you want to approach? <laughs> Okay, so this is this is one of the tough hearsay objections. So she's asked him when, uh, how he learned about Disney uh, deciding to not, you know, not cast him in Pirate Six. He's telling how he's he, and he's trying to say what this guy said, and they're saying hearsay, but it has to be to prove the truth of what the guy said. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury who Sean Bailey is? 
I, I think you were starting to. Yes, I'll try again. Looks um, like Depp's team won Bailey that objection. The number three, or was at the time, I don't know what his status is anymore, but uh, at the time he was the number three sort of upper echelon of Disney top dogs. And uh, Sean Bailey was quoted as, as, as saying that- Objection uh, hearsay. Uh, Mr. Depp, where was Sean Bailey quoted without getting into what he was quoted as saying? He was quoted in whatever the article was that I was uh, uh, that was brought to my attention. And can you please just clarify what article you're referring to? I don't know what what uh, journal it came from. I don't know what magazine. I don't know uh, any of that. So I don't know. I don't know who did the interview with him. Objection. Lack of foundation. Uh, a rule objection. Go ahead. Mr. Depp, how did you feel when you learned that you were being dropped from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? Um, well, it was the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Um, it, it was a character that <clears throat> Captain Jack Sparrow was a character that I had built from the ground up um, and was something that I, 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 of course, put a lot of my, as you do with all characters, but you put a lot of yourself into the character. So, you, and also having worked on these films with these people and having added much of myself, much of my own uh, um, rewriting of the dialogue and scenes and the jokes and whatever they are. Um, I didn't quite understand <clears throat> how that after that long relationship and quite a successful relationship, certainly for Disney, um, that they would, that suddenly I was guilty until proven innocent. Up until the point that you learned that you were not going to be in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise any longer, what was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies? The, the last thing that I knew from the, um, the, the, I say the the, the power. The, the, there's the producer team. There's the creative team, um, and there were many discussions. Um, I, in in fact, uh, had been approached to take part in writing Pirate Six. Mr. Depp, what was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies, aside from what you'd been asked to do? My feeling was that these characters should be able to have their proper goodbye, as it were. A franchise can only last for so long. Um, and... Um, there's a way to end uh, a franchise like that. And I thought that the characters deserve to, to have their, their way out of, uh, to, to, to end the, the franchise on a, on, a, on a very good note. I planned on continuing I, until it was time to stop. This is all good. This all came after that article, Mr. Depp, right um, after it. Last week, Mr. Rottenborn asked you about uh, a quote where you said you wouldn't come back to the Pirates franchise for $300 million and a million alpacas. Do you remember that? I do. When, when relative to learning that you would no longer be a part of the Pirates franchise, did you make that statement? 
I think long before I made the statement, there was <clears throat> a very deep and distinct sense of having been betrayed uh, by the people that I had uh, been working with, the people that I had worked hard for, the people that I had delivered a character to that they initially despised, but somehow, um, you know, even I stuck to my guns with the character and it seemed to work. So. Um, do you recall when specifically you made that statement about the $300 million and the 100 alpacas? Jackson asked an answer. Oh, overruled, I'll allow it. He, he actually didn't answer when at all. Um, I, I believe I made that statement during a press conference in the San Sebastian Film, at the San Sebastian Film Festival when I was, I was asked about my um, well, situation. And what year would that have been, if you can recall? I believe it was last year or so. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 804? Mr. Duck, do you recognize this document? As soon as my eyes go on, I hopefully will. Um, Scaramanga Brothers, yes. Pirates of the Caribbean, four and five, yes. Um, what is this document? What, I what is it? Don't quite know. I'd have to read it to get some could we, understanding of it. Could we scroll through so Mr. Depp can look at the rest of this document? Oops. We have no idea what's actually on the screen, so it's hard to say if he should if it should be obvious what the document is. Is it a contract? Is it an article. There it goes. It, it looks, uh, this uh, appears to me to be some s species of contract. No? Okay. So there, it's a contract. Okay. If he can't identify this, this contract, contract that you entered into with Disney, Your Honor, I'd ha ask that. Uh, plaintiff's exhibit. They should object. 104 be moved into evidence and published. Object. object, lack of foundation. I think it's outside the scope of direct or, or cross examination. I'll rule on that objection. Okay. And yeah, we'll, uh, I'll reserve other objections to portions of the document, um, depending on what she's going to ask about. It could be hearsay. But she's asking to put it all into evidence right now. Well, then I, I would object to that at this point. Uh, business records exception, Your Honor. So they're going to object that this contract is hearsay, but uh, I would I would state that it's a business record. It's kept in the ordinary course of this type of business. Uh, it's a it's an authenticated document. They should have objected to foundation because it didn't look like he recognized it at all. This is some sort of contract, isn't it? Woo! Very very shaky. Very, very shaky on that one. <laughs> they really need Johnny Depp to know what's in that, to know the document. Oh boy. You could hear that lawyer's nerves shattering. Like, please recognize the fucking document. <laughs> Scroll down to his stupid signature. <laughs> Scroll down now. Whew. Oh, we turn the volume back on, please. Where's where's the volume? Can the court turn the volume? I can copy that at some point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Depp, if I could direct your attention to section six of the contract, which is on pages eight through 10 of the document. Damn it. 
Mr. Deb, what does this reflect? Um, sorry. It appears to be the agreement um, of Pirates 4 and 5, comp compensation and <clears throat> merchandise. Mr. Depp, at this time, how many other franchise films have you been a part of? Like a lot, love. At time, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Um, boy. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Um, so these are just franchise films. I'm so pathetic when it comes to knowing what movies I've done. I'm sorry. I, I just, <laughs> I don't watch them. I feel better not watching them. Um, I, I think just know. Alice in Wonderland. I mean, uh, what was the question again? Uh, how many? Uh, how I have many order in the court or I will have you removed. Understood? Thank you. How, how many other franchise films had you been a part of at the time of this contract? Um, there was a third. There was there was Pirates. There was, um, oh, sorry. Um, with Warner Brothers, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and then Crimes of Grindelwald. Oh yeah, Fantastic Beasts. And how does the compensation reflected in this contract compare to that, you, what you receive for the other franchises that you've been a part of? Jackson Foundation. He, he just established that he was a member of other franchise films at this point. How would he not know his own compensation? Foundation that he knows how he's compensated. Are, All of rule deduction, if you are you serious? You dummy. How could he know what his own money was? Um, I believe them. Um, um, the compensation, obviously, all the, the, the pay and back end and all those things are negotiated by Asians, lawyers, and this was a, comparatively, this this was, a, this is my salary on that film. Um, and other, other salaries were of a similar, uh, of a similar um, status, I suppose. Uh, if I could direct your attention to the 12th page of the document. Yes. Cool. Uh, is this your signature, Mr. Depp? Yes, it is. Okay. You can take this down. Thank you. Mr. Depp, I, I recall just that, you by that. that you don't know during a given period what movies you were working on. So my question is, who would know that? Um, well, first and foremost, is that my agent um, or agents. Um, I do recall a couple of the other films that I'd made after. One was... Um, initially called Richard Says Goodbye, and that was, uh, they changed the name to The Professor, and uh, during all of the <clears throat> the um, nastiness over the past uh, six years, uh, that film went straight to uh, pay-per-view. And there was, um, another film called Minimata that was produced. Uh, uh, it was uh, my co my company, uh, Infinitum Nile. Uh, we had uh, developed a, a film called Minimata about Eugene Smith and uh, the Minimata. Uh, uh, the, the, well, the 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 the, po the mercury poisoning of of a very small fishing village in um, southern Japan. Um, there was that one. And then there was a film called um, Waiting for the Barbarians, 
with uh, one Mark Rylands um, and Robert Pattons, and um, those were three films that I'd done. Mr. Depp, during your cross-examination, Mr. Rottenborn showed you a number of text messages between you and, and Paul Bettany. Do you remember that? I do. Um, could you explain, please explain to the jury what your relationship with Mr. Bettany is? Mr. Bettany and I had, uh, we'd met um, while I was making a film called The Tourist in, in Venice, and we were, um, it was an instant connection. He's he's uh, born and bred in the UK and uh, has a that English uh, sort of dry kind of obtuse abstract sense of humor, um, and that was one of the things that we connected on. Is uh, taking even if it was a, a difficult uh, or un, unpleasant situation, we would, you know, do our best to deal with it with humor as opposed to just a constant complaint or whining or anything of that nature. We dealt with it with humor, albeit sometimes um, in, as these are private texts that uh, have been, there was there was a lot of um, in they were context. Crass. It's important to know that none of it was ever intended to be real, and the language that's used, which I, yes, I am ashamed that um, that has to be. <clears throat> spread on the uh, on the world like um, peanut butter <laughs> I uh, this is his text about burning drowning her and burning her for example the text that is about um, burning Ms Heard is it's 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 a, it's directly from Monty Python um, in the sketch about burning witches um, and then drowning the witches, this is a this is a film that I, we'd all watched when we were ten, and it, it's it's just um, irreverent and abstract humor. Um, that's what we were referring to in those texts. The, the text message that you just referenced, there other than go. Mr. Bettany, who else saw that text message at the time that it was sent? No one. Of course not. Based on your own observations, how would you describe Mr. Bettany's relationship with Ms. Heard while you and Ms. Heard were together? Abominable. Ab Why was that? Oh. Um, Abominable. Ms. Heard despised uh, Mr. Petney because mainly because we had become such close friends and for her he was a threat um, and would take me away from her in, with regard to if Paul Bettany was getting the attention from me, that that was a that was a, that was a showstopper. It, it would it would cause all kinds of um, unpleasantries. It's not hearsay. Where Just when saying. we were on the island with uh, Mr. Bettany, his wife, and his uh, four children. Um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Bettany got into some debate over lunch, and I just remember that whenever Mr. Bettany tried to make a point, she would talk over him 
and then it started to get quite rude. She got, she got mean um, and she got loud. And then his, I believe it was his 18 year old boy who was, who was, who was getting ready to go to a really very bright, bright brilliant kid. He entered the uh, conversation because these, this was something to do with what he'd studied in school and he knew quite a lot about it and he voiced his opinion and uh, Ms. Heard demeaned that young man <laughs> to the point of where he, where he, he burst into uh, tears and Whoa. walked away. Um, and it was at that point that I had spoken to Ms. Heard and said, that's, that's just unacceptable. It, that behavior is unacceptable. You have no right to 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 demean that boy to, to, to be, you cannot always be right you should try being wrong sometime because you might learn something and then um i asked her i asked her to i thought it was best that she leave the island <clears throat> damn Send her home. Can you please pull up to get on the plane and get the hell out. And Mr. Depp, I believe this is another text message with Mr. Bettany that you were shown on your cross examination. Oh, well, we have over 20,000 live viewers. It's crazy. Uh, please, while you're here, go ahead and like the um, video if you like the and coverage. Directing your attention to the text message at the top of the page from May 30th, 2014. Heard words. This text message you sent to. Paul Bettany. We're an exception to hearsay because yes. they were against her interests, by the way. That's why and he was able to talk about what she did and said. What you are conveying to Mr. Bettany in this message. This again is, it's a, this is a, I suppose an example of the way that I write um, and ex express myself. That is to say, you stretch, you stretch the, um, you stretch your situation out to, to give him the understanding that you're drowning, essentially. So everything that I say here is, in fact, an impossibility for the human body. I, I, I would have been well, I would have certainly at least had to be rushed to the hospital for a stomach pump. Um, there's a line here that if, if you don't mind, I say that when I say I'm done, I am admittedly too fucked, pardon me, fucked in the head to spray rape my rage at the one I love for little reason as well. I'm too old to be that guy, but pills are fine. The pills that were referenced were, were the pills that I had had to, that I was coming off of. And um, they were the only thing that could give me some semblance of the same numb, numbing effect that I searched for as a child with, uh, with my mother. And saying that I was too messed up in the head was, it, it, it's kind of like if you've been told since you were a child that everything you do is wrong um, and that I shouldn't have even been alive or whatever, you know, joyous little treats that my, my then very sick, very ill mother um, uh, brought to me. Um, Ms. Heard was well aware of my past, my childhood, therefore was uh, very adept at 
knowing exactly which buttons to push. So at this point, I mean, I, I felt like, well, I was that little boy again in my head, like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm the, I guess I am incapable of doing anything right. I guess I will never be happy. I guess that this is self-defeatism and self-doubt who I am. I can't get along with this person. What? But, but it was, it's confusion. You know, it's, um, it's, it's nothing that you can, it's nothing that anyone could sustain for any length of time. It's, it's nothing that anyone should have to sustain for any length of time when you're being demeaned, berated, judged um um and 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 treated like a lesser animal and treated as if uh, i'm only surrounded by yes men and that i'm a bad father and that it was these things were endless they 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 were endless and they There was there were there was no call for them. I, I, it's hard to understand why someone that is supposed to love you um, could be that cruel. And I, I there were some times where you just say, "Okay, I, I'm going to I'm going to try to not have a. I won't fall for the argument. I won't participate in the argument." Um, because I knew where it would go into her circular pattern of um, uh, psychological uh, abuse. She's like an ocean vortex, right? Just sucking everything in. Deb, what do you mean when you use the term blackout in this text message? Um, blackout. Ah. Yes, because I'm I'm talking about a thousand Red Bulls and vodkas, a thousand of them, two bottles of champagne, um, no food for days, half a bottle of whiskey. I wish you would have just said he was um, talking about Amber Heard's behavior there on the plane. That would have been funnier. Those things had that been all absolutely true would have not only caused a blackout, but it would have caused uh, a severe um, alcohol poisoning, um, overdose. Um, I would have had to have gone immediately. If that were true, I'd have, I would have had to have been taken to a hospital or I'd just die. Um, so no, um, blackout is when someone get so uh, drunk on alcohol, essentially, on, uh, on alcohol. Um, but the, the pills that I was, that I had my addiction, uh, that, that I was addicted to, the, the roxycodone, which are very, very powerful opiates. Um, I, two, two of those would knock me out that is to say so there's blackout which is you can be a, a person could be wide awake and wreaking havoc or having a giggle in a blackout and never remember it but when you go when you are um when you've taken the the prescription medication the it 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 knocks you out you are certainly not, well, you're not in any condition to, first of all, swing at anyone. You are out, you, you, you go on what's called the nod, and then it takes you away into sleep. It's just very deep sleep. 
and uh, I found that much more accepting than having to hear constant uh, badgering and insults. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 153, which um, I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Yes. Do you remember seeing this during Mr. Rottenborn's examination of you last week? Yeah, yes, I do. Okay. Now, I, I'd like to show you the, the full text exchange, which is in Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. And since there's been a number of uh, text messages drawn from this document, this would be Plaintiff's Exhibit 120C. And which page would that be or underscore? Uh, this would be four and okay. five, Your Honor. Four and five, thank you. So someone earlier was asking about Mr. inside and outside these text messages. The yes, scope of redirect. I'll finish this thought in a minute. Your Honor, I'd move um, plaintiff's 120C into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. Okay. All right, 120C in evidence, publish. Mr. So reader, Depp, who are you communicating with in these text messages? She keeps cutting me off. It's very rude. Oh, very in rude. In fact, though it says Marino, um, I was, these are texts between my um, ex, uh, that is to say the Vanessa parody, the mother of my children. And this is a, again, abstract humor um, that we're that we're conveying back and forth to one another. Uh, this was all. Um, it's it was a joke. It wasn't about. It certainly wasn't about Miss Heard. We didn't speak of her much together. Do you recall what you were talking about? I don't recall um, who it was. Um, I don't recall who it was, but it was it was someone who had um, for some reason I think it was oh I think that the possibility is that two thousand thirteen. It might have been, we had a nanny at one point um, who we, in fact, we had, uh, we found her, we, she was caught stealing even from, even from my, um, at the time my, uh, yeah, maybe 10, 11 year old boy, Jack, who, was bright enough because he knew it. He was bright enough. He had a he had a five dollar bill that he wadded up and put on his desk in his bedroom. And when he came home from school, Your Honor, I'm just going to object on relevance. The question right. was, who was this about? Yeah, we we can move on. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Depp, I'd also like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 143, which I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Um, do you remember seeing this email exchange? If you could scroll down as well, please. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, who are you exchanging these emails with? Uh, Stephen Duders, who was at the time was my assistant. And what are you and Mr. Duders discussing here? Um, gobbledygook, essentially. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, as I remember, it was a day of work and um, there were times when I would send a text to Mr. Duders because he's the worrisome type. I, I would send him a text 
in jest, of course, and and uh, to to get a rise out of him, to get some reaction out of him. So, um, you know, I would tell him things like, uh, you know, I woke up and um, I'm bleeding profusely from, from the inside of my ear. Is that normal? You know, it would be things like that. So this is exactly the same kind of thing. I think we were even referencing uh, uh, The Hangover, uh, the film The Hangover, uh, in, in Lakta, he does have problems with his eyes. Mike Tyson. And, He's legally uh, blind in his left eye. Sort of bizarre uh, circus that I was telling him that I had in, in my room and that there was blood everywhere. It was, it was a joke to just sort of throw him off, worry him, and make... Ultimately, it was a joke, and we, we were laughing about it. No, he meant literally Mr. that Depp, there's what blood if any everywhere. Portion of this email exchange is literally true. Oh, the stupid Streamyard tried to balance my audio. Sorry, it's not. It's we're all Streamyard is stupid. Only one thirty p.m. Hope you rested well. I did not turn up the mic, guys. Mr. Depp, I'd like to talk to you about some text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you, where you refer to the monster in this is in the context of in conversation that crossed? don't include it was Mr. Redirect so remember far. seeing some of those it's kind of rambly yes okay. uh, <clears throat> first i'd like to show you defendants exhibit 427 please which is a text message from you to jerry judge by the way welcome to the show joe oh wow thanks thank you so much it's a privilege How being here the first time ever monster in this context when you're communicating with mr judge The monster, the monster could essentially, the monster could, it, 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 it could be two separate things. The monster in her eyes was my, um, Objection as to what the monster was in Ms. Hurd's eyes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, it's his state of mind. Yes. Rephrase. It's not the truth of the matter. The monster was defined um, by Ms. Heard. There you go. As this out of control Same objection, thing. Your Honor. What Ms. Heard oh, no, this is a party admission. Mr. Depp, how do you know how Ms. Heard defined Oh, no. Why are you giving up on that? Um, she said the words to me. And how? what words did she say? Peter. With respect to the term. What's monster? up, guys? Yep. It was it was her go to phrase. And it was the go to phrase for me being again, you know, as has been embellished and elaborated, um, the drug use or the drink or the whatever. But the monster was for me. And again, you start to think about these things and you put it in your own head and what the real context is. The monster was sobriety. The monster was, was trying to be, to, to, to be sober because I was plagued by these uh, requests to, to stop drinking. And, um, but the monster could also be, uh, if, a, <clears throat> if, a, if, a, if a conversation, if, if something starts as a conversation, which would quickly ramp up to um, mm -hmm. uh, quite an antagonizing argument, um, if I responded to her, if I took part in the verbal back and forth where people do in life end up saying obscenities, screaming obscenities at one another or, or calling them names or, or, or it, it, when it gets to that point, um, I mean, 
the monster was just the for me was just the guy who actually was dumb enough to to to, to continue to take part in arguments that would ultimately get nowhere. It's not a great answer. Um, Nobody believes that's the monster. Well, so I agree with that, you on that. that is when he's drunk or high, sure, call that the monster. Why yeah, calling sobriety the monster is a tough sell. From Ms. Heard and not participate in her debates and her. The I actually like this redirect until this point. To me and uh, circular and painful um, insults that were constant. It was rapid fire. So. I stopped participating in those. I tried to walk away. I tried to go to another room, even to the point of locking myself in rooms so that she just could pound, pound on the door and scream. Um, that, 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 that was clearly a mis I should have never fallen for that or taken the bait to, to allow myself to get into a conversation which led to an argument, which led to physical violence. It, 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 it was not going to be good. So I would, uh, I just walk away, which drove her through the roof. So Mr. Deb, why would you use the term monster when, you really need when to communicating with people other than- Focus Mr. these answers a bit though. His own lawyer has to ask him over and over again to try to get the right lawyer. answer. Because I heard it, it, it all the time. The lawyer needs to be more pointed. I mean, it was, as I said, that was that was her go-to. The monster. The monster's here. The monster's back. The monster. Um, so I would refer to the monster again, in terms of, so with with uh, Elton, or with friends, Patty Smith, uh, the monster was uh like with elton i think it was just a monster was i i you know i let the monster creep back in or something that is sobriety that's that's what i'm telling him is i have i have failed um and i and i've had a drink or i've been drinking but my drinking again was not to excess. There was no, I would never went into blackouts or anything of that nature. I was disappointed in myself. I think the monster should have been Amber for not, not staying there. Though, when you are constantly in a position to be harassed by your beloved other. Um, what else could I do? I, I wanted to be numb. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to feel that, especially from one, from one who had professed such love for me, but gave me mostly hatred. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to switch subjects, so if this would be a good time for the lunch break. All right. We start a little later, so I don't mind going a little further. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. I believe uh, Mr. Rottenborn showed you this last week and, and again today. Yes. Yes. Do you recognize these text messages as between you and Ms. Heard? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, why are you informing Ms. Heard that there's a book called Disco Bloodbath? I, I at that when I texted her, yeah, two thirty in the afternoon. I was uh, I was in a bookstore, um, a, a, a used bookstore or a, a um, bookstore that had a lot of first editions and things like that, which was sort of a passion, and. I saw a book called Disco Bloodbath, and I thought it was uh, I thought it was a funny title. Uh, I can't say that I was necessarily referencing anything other than I thought it was a funny title, Disco Bloodbath. 
Um, it sounded like a, a sort of a bad slasher movie to me. So I said, just thought you should Sounds know like that there exists a movie. book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. And then she said, we need that book. And then she asked me, is, is it about last Friday night by any chance? And then um, my, my answer uh, to her, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? The, the fact is, uh, this, this is a lighthearted exchange that she's even saying, we need that book. Then she makes reference to last Friday night, which I don't recall what last Friday night was or whatever. So I just um, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? I, I, a hideous That's moment. Good explanation. Wrap it up. Some grotesque thing that we saw on television. It could have been I would anything. Just it could have been a I, fight. I it's yeah, fine. No, but yeah, a fight would be all funny. I was saying is, and it even better if it's a fight. My text, he hates fighting. That's that all. Way he's expressing that. Just go bloodbath. You know. Um, so I, I, this was not a, uh, he needs to tighten it up though. Not, yeah. That's what I said. Wrap it. In this exchange whatsoever. It was very lighthearted. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you defendants exhibit 375, which is another document. Mr. Rottenborn showed you last week. Yeah. On, yes. on that one, like, um, could you please remind the jury? Couples make light of photograph? big fights later when they've resolved it. Um, um, on the this this is from Australia. Uh, on March eighth, I believe it was, where um, after my finger had been um, the tip of my finger had been taken off. Um, I, I began to, I was in such shock, I just started writing on the mirror on the on walls and um, basically what these were for me to Ms. Heard were reminders of moments in our past where I had caught her, caught her, where it was revealed to me, even by her, that uh, she had been caught in lies that she had told me. So that's what these are in reference to. The, the, the red, the lipstick um, that says, call Carly Simon, uh, Call Carly Simon. She said it better, babe. Um, in reference to you're so vain, I am imagining. But that's not. My, I didn't. Uh, the Carly Simon message is not mine. That's Miss Hurd's. So let's just break this down a little bit. Who who wrote the the text that's in black on the mirror? That that would be me. And and what does that say? Um. Uh, she loves, I don't know, like naked Hollywood or something. Um, an artist of, I don't know what the rest says, but is, what that is, is Ms. Hurd had come to me and she was seriously seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in in Hollywood. She was she was concerned that because she had done films where there was uh, kind of arbitrary nudity and things of that nature. Best she nudity. had voiced to me that she did not want to be um, 
she, she didn't want to be looked upon that way in the industry. She wanted to be able to escape the, the chains of being objectified by ho the Hollywood system, which is a difficult thing for any woman, certainly, uh, unfortunately. But she, she, she asked me, how can I, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the as the beautiful blonde who who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to and why would you want to be something in, else in act like an ugly bitch uh, and i gave her my um ad advice on it on how on how to avoid it which i thought was pretty accurate and uh it, it she uh, her ambition was uh, stronger than than um, than what she received from my advice uh, is, is, is what it was. Do you think this is good? It doesn't strike my me as good. It's not bad. It's just not I helping. Thought long and hard about because I did care for opinion. her and I did understand. I didn't want. I it's interesting to, to do that and see more of a glimpse of the relationship. My career, I. I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on, I could have been just a guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years. And then, you know, what was going to be left of me was, uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things. And I, I've fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't, that's not who I was. So I, I I had had I had experienced something similar in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not, and so I fought against it in the very beginning, and um, it it worked out for me. For, you know, That's true. He did a great job of transitioning from pretty boy to serious actor. Advice. Now, Mr. Depp, you said that you did not write this portion that's in red here that says Carly Simon said it, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. Is that right? Yes, no, I, that's that's not mine. I don't um, make smiley faces. How do you know that it was Ms. Heard that wrote that? Objection, lack of foundation. Oh. Overruled, I'll take an answer. There are- um... How do you know is a foundation question? It's- well, first, foundation for foundation he wants. looks like it's trying to match my handwriting, but my handwriting is, is a lot more uh, of a scribble. Um, and also, there's another photograph of this where she went in to make sure that there were, uh, uh, that the red um, was more prominent. Um, I believe there's also a napkin down there where Objection, someone Your Honor, lack what, of foundation. He's referring to exhibits that are aren't in evidence and or I'll have no I'll, idea whether they even exist. I'll sustain the objection now. Next question. Was do you recall whether the lipstick writing was on the mirror when you wrote in the, the black paint? No, of course not. No. No, you don't recall or no, it wasn't there. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you one of the text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you concerning the injury to your finger. So if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 398. Um, this is a text message from you to Dr. Kipper that I believe Mr. Rottenborn showed you on cross-examination. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And why are you apologizing to Dr. Kipper in this message? Um. I believe that um, at, at that point, 
in in my brain and in my life and in my heart I was um, completely and utterly frustrated with how I had to or how I was living my life and I had had some uh, disagreement with uh, Dr. Kipper and uh, I was I was apologizing to him for having um, uh, gone against his uh, his wishes or gone against his advice, let's say. What did you mean when you said, I have chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should never cut off, cut my right finger off again? It's, again, it's my way of dealing with um, dealing with a painful situation it's 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 my way of dealing with a painful situation where i resort to humor so i had lost the tip of my right finger and so i'm saying to him i've now cut off my left finger to remind me never to cut my right finger off again that's that's not he, he rarely says she severed I mean, my finger she almost, he almost never says that. My finger yeah, it could off, be it's because it was an accident. Or this or that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you did it yourself. And again, I'm a guitarist and have been since I was 12. And that was the only piece that I found in my life at the age of 12 where I knew what I, I knew who I could, that I could escape into music and learn music. And the last thing, I'm a guitar, I mean, I, I still play the guitar with, it's still my first love, aside from my children, it's still my first love. There's no reason in the world why I literally would cut my own finger off to ruin this this beautiful opportunity that I was given at 12 to learn how to play the guitar. Um, and, 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 and again, what why would I start lopping off digits at, in my 50s if I, if I um, as Mr. Rottenborn suggests, <laughs> am, a, am a kind of, you know, a walking tantrum? Um, when I was younger, I, uh, what, what, why wouldn't I just start chopping off fingers and, or, 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 or some kind of, why would I ruin the only thing that was really good in my life aside from my children? So when this finger went, the tip of this finger went, um, the only thing I could think in my mind was, thank God it wasn't the left hand, which is the fret hand. I'm right-handed, so that's the fret. Mm. That's where the <clears throat> fretboard is. If you lose a finger from your left hand, you know, I'm not Django Reinhardt who had only two fingers to play with. Um, if I'd have lost a finger from here, uh, I would have had to relearn how to play the guitar all over again. Um, it, 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 it's just not the case. Even though I say, I've chopped my finger off. It, it's like saying, you know, I, 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 I bumped into a knife uh, or something. You know, it's 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 not. Yeah, we I'm get it. Just wrap it up. I think if I was going to admit to someone, I do think this is more likable. Like why people like him so much. Just this kind of an explanation. explanation. It would have been a long explanation as to why I got to that point, but. Uh, no, I can't take responsibility for 
I think the text is why people like him. What I now call Little Richard. Text is funny. <laughs> oh, there it was. He calls his uh, finger Mr. Little Depp, Richard. At the time that you sent this text message to Dr. Kipper, um, had you told him what had actually happened to your right finger? Oh, 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 oh yes. Yeah. And, and when did you tell him that? He was aware of that that, that day, the so day that it happened. Malcolm was aware of it. Jerry was aware of it. Stephen was. Everyone was aware of it. And and when I and of course yes, when I went to the doctor, the emergency room, I lied to them because I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think it wise to cause a ruckus, implicate, misheard, and then have eight million stories out in the yes. press about <clears throat> how she'd thrown a bottle of vodka at my at me and it smashed the all the bones in the tip of my finger and cut off about well it was all sliced down through you've seen the pictures. <laughs> it was pretty horrible. Um, it was, it was, and I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to put her in that situation. I didn't want to put any of us in that situation. I didn't want to put the film in that situation. That was why I said it was crushed in an accordion door, and it was only the second doctor who had, uh, who actually told me what he, what he, he was. Your Honor, hearsay. I haven't finished my sentence. How do you know? <laughs> he just defended his own objection. It was amazing. Um, well, it was the, the emergency room doctor was first. The next day I went to see a specialist, a, a hand surgeon, and, and this was still in Australia. And he had recognized- A normal client gets admonished by the judge there. My excuse for the finger being gone. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay, what the doctor conveyed to him about his thoughts- Medical records exception. Classic hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, it's in the context of medical treatment. No, I'll sustain that objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I think this is That's a good, good stopping point. All right. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our, our lunch recess again. Do not do any outside um, any outside discussions and don't talk to each other about it, okay? And we'll see you after lunch, okay? If everybody in the courtroom could still be quiet, please. Court is in session. Thank you. Shut up, kids! You stupid kids in the back! <laughs> Shut your mouth! <laughs> All right. There's a bunch of Zoomers in the court today. Well, it's... Judge's worst nightmare. She can hear them hitting their uh, the touch screens on their phones, texting their friends. All right. So we can take a recess till 2.20. Just for planning purposes, though, I plan to go to 5.30 today since we had a late start. So just to let you know. And I know you plan on having a remote witness, which is fine. Just let us know so we can set that up. Um, but also make sure your remote witness knows that this is a courtroom. I don't expect them to be any outside uh, noises or anything else going on and direct attention. And also if they would know that if there's an objection for them to hold off answering until that's resolved. That goes for all remote witnesses when we get to them, okay? All right, see you at 220 then. Thanks. You would think she would let the jury know that they're gonna go until 5.30, but I guess that's not. That's no, not the jury's possible. just gonna sit there until she says they can leave anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they might wanna plan their day. So you thought he was rambling too much. Well, I just, I mean, I, I think objectively <clears throat> that's true. <laughs> he was just, some of those answers took a little while to get through. Uh, he is just not focused on direct. He's very focused on cross. It's He's great at responding to questions in, in succinct ways. On direct, he's asked to narrate. And his narration goes through... A whole lot of filters, man. It go, it goes, it goes through a lot. By the way, welcome to my guests, uh, Good Logic and the lawyer you know, 
uh, who is, can I say your name? Can I, can I call you by your first Everyone name? Everyone knows his name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Feel Peter. free. Absolutely. Peter. I prefer it. Okay, good. So uh, we got my friends Joe and Peter here uh, to, to give some, some lunchtime analysis. Uh, how's it going, guys? Thanks, it's God. Going well, Thank man. God. Yeah. I, I actually appeared on Peter's show before anyone had ever heard of him. And it was during the Arbery. It was, after, it was right after the Arbery decision, I think. It was right around then. And... We had like a phenomenal time. I think I at least had a great time talking to him for an hour or two hours. His audience hated me. I mean, they hated me. They There's were, a lot to hate, to be fair. Well, they were okay. So they were simping very hard for the prosecution. And I, I had was, a lot of people also. I mean, I may focus on the good comments more than the bad ones. It's just mm -hmm. kind of how I look at all of how this works. And I had a lot of people also talk good about you as well. So okay, now I, I yeah, we all focus I think on the negative, but. I was simply putting it as to like how defensive strategy, what it should be, and what's and what's fair given our justice system. Not like okay, you know, are they racist or they're not racist? I was really focused on, you know, ab about the I don't know as a lawyer would approach it. And apparent a lot of them had very passionate pro prosecution perspectives. And because I was not passionately pro prosecution, I had some, and I had some. Um, I wasn't even uh, I wasn't even like insults for the prosecution. I just wasn't glowing about the prosecution. That I, wow, that's like the that's like the most hate I ever saw in comments was from his and and to his credit, Peter never spoke to me again. He's like, he's, yes, <laughs> come on, come on. First off, he's like that dude. He's gone. Peter, I want to buy your book on how to never speak to Joe again. <laughs> I need to defend myself here. Okay, first off, still nobody's ever heard of me. Um, this is the first trial I've ever been on on any other channel or anything anyway. So I, I still don't think anybody's ever heard of me. Number one, number two, you can come back on my channel anytime. We actually referenced you a lot. And actually, it was right before the Galen Maxwell trial, because then you were just dug in there. Yeah. And we referenced you a lot. And I pushed people to your page a lot during that trial because you were there, which is really fun. Time. I know, totally I know, totally I know, I know, I know, I know. Totally but it's fun. And I'm glad to be here, Nick. Thanks for having us on, man. Um, yeah, th this is this is a wild ride, man. To, to just stream a trial is is tough, and the way you guys do it, it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of prep, it's a lot of being on all the time. I mean, it's I, I only pop in for an hour here or there when I have time, but I, it's a grind. So I mean, everybody out there that listens to Nick and Joe and everybody that that comments on this stuff, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of time and energy to put in to where this actually makes sense and you can add to the conversation. So kudos to you guys. I could never do it, honestly. It's it's tough to really dig in and know what you're talking about, about this stuff. So it's, it's been fun to kind of see a little bit of it. So speaking of that, how have you guys caught some of the trials so far today? Yes. Prior yes. to, prior to coming on, I hope. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, what's your, what's your impression of how cross ended up? Joe, you want to go first? So I actually came in at the start of redirect, so I didn't catch the end of cross. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to pass on that, but on the redirect, I have a lot of thoughts. So I'll, I'll let you handle the cross. So I actually thought Cross started out well. I thought the clips at the beginning of Cross today were the most damning ones for Johnny Depp. Um, I think I even had a couple notes about them. Like some of the stuff, there was actually some physical stuff. He, she accused him of beating her and things like that, and he didn't deny it in the recording. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it happened, but we do have a lot of recordings of him denying things that she's saying or saying you're crazy or you're just trying to make it sound like that. We didn't have a lot of that in... Um, the initial recordings. And then I actually like their strategy of finally trying to break it down to this case is about defamation from this one article, these three statements, and then the judge kind of cut them off. And I thought Depp's lawyers did a good job of continuing to object, even though I kind of disagreed with some of the judge's rulings there. Um, mm -hmm. I think he should have been able to get into why did you sue Amber and not the Washington Post, especially because on in the beginning of direct, his their first question is, why are we here? Explain to the jury why we're here. And Johnny Depp went into a humongous thing about how what Amber did to ruin his life and wrote these hit pieces and blah, blah, blah. So he should have had to explain with somebody asking him questions, pointed questions as to why he picked to choose her, why he picked these statements. Um, and, you know, people, the objection was like legal conclusion. That's like saying if I have a criminal defendant on the stand and I say, did you do it? Did you murder this person? And they say no, like I'm asking for a legal conclusion because that's what the jury is there to decide. That's not what a legal conclusion is. Right. They're not asking for legal definitions. He's just saying you, this statement is what you sued her over, but that statement's true, right? It's not a legal conclusion. He's asking a question. I think he may have been able to audible and say, 
the DV TRO was in 2016. Did that actually happen? Did she file a TRO? That may have been a question to get around that legal conclusion of, is it true? Since that's right. kind of what we're here for on defamation, but he blew it at the end. I mean, I thought it was, I thought he was kind of in a groove. He was getting some good shots off. I thought Johnny was getting really annoyed. Um, he was arguing with him, but then Johnny Depp's lawyers, when you start to feel a judge is coming your way, they doubled down, tripled down, objected, objected, objected. They won, won, won. And then he kind of sat down flat at the oh, end of the crowd. That was, that was my feeling, but I don't know how you took it, Nick. No, I, uh, similar. I thought some of the early recordings were, I mean, I, I of course can ex in my mind, rationalize and explain them away. But what you bring up is good in the recording. He doesn't deny anything. Uh, and he, I think he even said in the recording, you didn't deny, you didn't deny hitting her. Did you? Um, I thought some of the other stuff was kind of weak though. Like the, he said something, she hit, she hit me with it or I uh, hit me with this or whatever. Uh, yeah. She said in the recording, you hit me with this and then you stab and you stab. And it's like, clearly she's not talking about a physical hit. So this is kind of ridiculous. I thought I, I think they're trying to throw like this kitchen sink at him on stuff uh, from the defense perspective. And I think they really need to laser focus on the defamation elements, like you said, because I, I do think that's the strongest part of their case. And then if they really wanted to hit him on some of this stuff, I think they should have limited the amount of texts and stuff that they brought in that involved uh, idiomatic language and, and hyperbolic language and really focused in. I mean, every time he calls her a cunt, I think they should put that in there. I think because I, that's such an evocative word in today's climate. And I think that's that's good. Um, the I mean, heck, the uh, the. I think one of the best recordings is the one where he screams at her. You're so fucking dumb or something today. Like, cause that was one of the first recordings we've heard where he sounds completely unhinged. And that's uh, he, what they need to get. They need the, 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 yeah. the, the fence really, really needed to, to, to get that ugly animal out because he's so likable. And I think so much of this case has come down to the likability factor because on a, from a technical perspective, as far as establishing under the law, is this defamatory? The the defense is in a really strong position. Where, where they're losing is on the likability. And, and if there's enough of an opening there, given what we're expecting to be completely divergent likability factors, with Johnny being so likable and Amber being looking at, like, you know, Cruella DeVille. So I think that we're looking potentially from – the defense has to be concerned that the, that the, the jury is going to be looking for reasons to justify well, a decision in his favor. And what, what the the plaintiff's attorney's job on close is going to be, they're going to stand up and tell you that this case is isolated to these two sentences from this article, and you're supposed to pretend that nothing else has ever happened. That Amber Heard didn't spend two years trying and failing to get Johnny Depp canceled. That she didn't spend two years lying about domestic abuse, elevating herself at the expense of him. And it just wasn't working until this time. And we know that once this gets published, and they got this out on redirect, which I think was actually really good. Once this gets published... Just days later, the Pirates of the Caribbean 6 is gone. And that is when Johnny Depp's career ended. But you cannot look at these two statements in a vacuum as if nothing else has ever occurred. Everything she said is wrapped up and packaged in those statements. She meant them. And this time, this time, she put it in a publication and she knew that that publication in the Washington Post would go straight to director's producers and studio executives and this would finally be the axe that severs the tie of johnny depp that's what they need to hit as his plaintiff's attorneys and i think we're going to hear some version of that on close because that seems to be their strategy and i think it's the strategy they have to do because those st two statements alone way too weak to win a defamation case on uh, in a vacuum but yeah. in the context of an article you get this little weird sort of benefit where uh, statements in an article are not actually allowed to be taken in isolation. It cuts both ways. It's the gist of the article. It's the understanding that the reader is going to obtain from the overall piece. So at the end of the overall piece, uh, is Johnny Depp more or less, uh, it, it, does he come out looking better or worse is kind of the, the way that goes. They don't get to just pick this as a statement that exists. And then this one now, 
I'm muddying the water a little bit because you don't necessarily get to bring in external comments, but the jury doesn't, isn't a legal scholar. And right. so you, you want to, you want to cloud that up as much as possible and let them decide, like Joe said, on charisma, who do they like? And that is a lot of times how juries make their decisions is just which client they like better, which is why it's so important. Johnny being on the stand, it's going to be so important when Amber takes the stand more than most other cases, because it's kind of a weird legal cause of action to bring a case under. It's not easy to win for defamation. Everybody thinks they have a defamation case, but they don't because it's so difficult. So it's really going to come down to, in this case, who do they like better? And that's where Johnny's winning. And that's where I think his direct and his cross has actually done really well. And, and the bulk of his cross being the full day Thursday was the best part for him, in my opinion, as far as likability goes. And as far as if he's going to pull the jury with him, I think he did a good job there. Um, and then we'll see what happens when Amber takes the stand. Which that actually brings me into the redirect, where I thought one there was a brilliant moment. We always talk about turning lemons into lemonade. He took those texts where he was talking about, like, you know, being like somewhat vicious toward her. And he basically brought up his mother and how he found himself in this helpless situation where all of a sudden he's a little boy again. And this whole framing, to my mind, I was listening to him describe Amber as being his mother. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all of a sudden it becomes equated in their mind that evil bitch mother is Amber. And now you take these awful texts and instead of looking at it like, wow, he's a he can be a really dark twisted person you look at it as like oh my god this poor guy found himself basically married to a younger version of his own freaking mother and she just she's as awful and terrible as he was and look at what how she destroyed his life where now he's going back to the drugs back to the alcohol and looking to hide away from the world and you feel such sympathy for him where he's like no one should have to live like that you know and i, I don't wish on anyone that, that no one should ever have that existence and he's having it twice in his life and the second time is all about amber and i think that goes a long way towards taking some really terrible sounding texts and twisting it 180 degrees on its head where all of a sudden now, instead of looking at him as being the bad person, you look at Amber as if she's the evil mother all over again. I, I want to answer this question from the chat because it's a good question. Um, and he had asked it earlier and I thought I had answered it, but it, his question was a little different than I interpreted it. So this is from Michael Palmer. He says, Nick, you're missing the point. The question is, why did Depp's team choose to file the case based on the specific op-ed piece? They didn't have to file it this way, but they did. I think I know the answer. One of the really hard parts of defamation historically is proving that something was said by someone to someone else. Because you can kind of infer that people talk you can infer that a conversation occurred, but if you can't point to when and where a statement was said, you've lost on two of the critical elements of defamation. You have to prove that a statement was made by the defendant to a third party about the plaintiff. And when you've got a publication in the Washington Post in an op-ed piece, you've got a date You've got an author. You can prove that those words came from that person. You don't have to rely on a potentially unfavorable witness to try and elicit the testimony. You don't get the, the opportunity to muddy words of what was said. I mean, it's right there in the text. You can prove that these statements occurred. And up until the internet, and, and this is why I think defamation law is actually behind, because that w used to be the challenge. Prove that someone said something to you at all. That's why a, why anti-slap laws kind of came about is because you could just say, well, this person said this nasty thing about me to someone else and therefore you file a frivolous lawsuit. Now we can prove when people say something because they put it on Twitter, they put it on Facebook, they put it in an op-ed, wherever it gets published, that publication is now recorded and it's time-stamped and, and you know where where it was said. I mean, we know the, the whole reason this case is in Virginia is because the Washington Post is headquartered in Virginia. So we know that that statement was published in Virginia. You can't necessarily assume that that statement was published or directed anywhere other than where it was actually written and, and, and put up. So Amber Heard went to Washington Post. She went to Virginia virtually and published a statement. So you've got when... Uh, who, who, when, and, uh, and where, and you've got those three questions covered. So that, 
that I think should help understand why they're doing it this way. I mean, would it be okay to bring in all these other statements? It starts to get hard. Can you prove that they made them? And if you, if you start getting into these cases and they're like, actually, she didn't say that or you get a, a witness who contradicts the very notion of what she said, suddenly you start to lose credibility. So part they of, focus this way and there's, there's positives and negatives to it. And part, and part of defamation is, is one of the unique characteristics of defamation along with fraud is that the, the, those are two, I, I, I might, off the top of my head, they're the only two, which have to be pled with specificity, as opposed to most times when, you, when you're pleading a complaint, you really want to keep it generally, you know, you want to keep it as general as you can while making out the elements of your case. When it comes, there's a requirement, otherwise it basically will, the, the, the case, the cause of action will fail. For failure to state a cause of action, you are there is a requirement to, to plead with specificity. So with respect to getting the exact words the person said and when they said it, if you don't have that, it gets it, the case is lost on a motion to dismiss. So if yes. you're just saying, I think something was said, you lose on a motion to dismiss. And that's why what Nick is saying is so spot on with respect to these defamation cases. It is a little easier today because of social media and everything being recorded and the internet being forever. But here, whatever she said bad about him in the past, you don't know when she said it to who she said it. Maybe someone overheard it. <clears throat> here we have an actual direct quote, which is why I think this probably is where he locked in. Why, why do you speculate that he left out the Washington Post? He was worried that they would get clipped and she would walk free? Or what's your thought? Oh, Oh, dude, one, uh, you're, you're fighting a team of lawyers who are going to sit there and run roughshod over like some First Amendment protection. Two, it's an op-ed piece. It's not published in the news. Uh, so they're like, you know, we publish opinion pieces the, all the time. We don't, we're not as concerned with their veracity. We're not speaking to the truthfulness. You get, uh, you've got the public figure part of it where they have to prove actual malice. Prove that the op-ed meant for Amber Heard's words to be defamatory is a lot harder than proving that she knowingly lied about it. I think the, you just uh, avoid a ton of issues. And I think that her lawyer is right to try and bring that in. Like, why didn't you do that? Play on the ignorance of the jury there. But I think mm -hmm. that their team is, is also right in saying that calls for a legal conclusion. Like, why didn't you do that? Johnny Depp probably has no legal idea why they're not suing the Washington Post. In fact, he may want to sue those sons of bitches too, but <laughs> his, his lawyers might've been like, look, this is going to raise a ton of problems. Plus you're going to, you're going to bog down the entire system even longer than it's been with appeals on first amendment grounds with it. I, I just think they avoided a ton of the issues and really focus on who made the statements. That's my, the, that's my thought. The problem they have is if I'm part of the defense, part of my closing is going to be, you know, this only be, the context here, the essential context, why this article was so damaging was because of the headline and the headline is the Washington Post. That's not Amber. So I think that that the, the headline creates the framing for the reader, meaning if I just I don't know anything about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's relationship. And that's the first time I'm looking at it. It's the framing by The Washington Post, which is what makes it so damning, as opposed to those specific statements that she made. And look, I'm team Johnny as hard as as, as hard as you want. But I have to look at the reality of the situation. And that is that this framing is created by the author specifically with the headline there rather than those specific quotes. I don't think Johnny now, really cares about the 50 million. I think that's why I think he cares about going at Amber Heard and a lot of this stuff might not be admissible if the Washington Post was in here too, as far as the character assassination going back and forth. Um, and just a quick last thought on those three specific lines from the op-ed. Nick said multiple times, you got to publish it, you know, publicized. But what that actually means is you have to say these defamatory words to enough people to where it's actually going to matter and hurt that person and cause damages. So if she's texting her friend or, you know, the Johnny's text messages to Paul Bettany are not defamation because he's just telling Paul Bettany. He's venting to his friend. He's not publicizing it and trying to ruin her career and putting it out there. And that's the other thing that, you know, an op-ed in the Washington Post, that's per se published, you know? I mean, you just get over certain steps by using specific language in an op-ed like this. Right. Um, one other thing. Uh, so I'm thinking that the headline is probably a lost cause for them. However, I think they will make the argument and this might work for the jury as well because that headline is not stricken as uh, as part of the cause of action. It is still part of the cause of action. I think they're going to work really hard to get the back and forth communications about this, uh, about this article, about this op-ed, which those back and forth communications involve them crap, trying to craft it to uh, not trigger a defamation suit specifically. Um, and I wonder 
if there's, and I'm not familiar with the full extent of the communications, but I wonder if there's not something in those communications that they can argue that the Washington Post drew from to get out that headline. And if they can go ahead and not necessarily pin the headline on Amber Heard, but pin the background stuff on, on sort of the things she was saying in drafting this thing, then the jury might say, yeah, but the, the Washington Post person, where did they even get sexual violence? Oh, wait, from the statements made in the drafts of this op-ed that were going around. Okay, now I see she was defaming Johnny Depp uh, through that, and that's where it comes out. So I think they might, have some sort of strategy there. I'm completely speculating on that. But if I were their lawyers, I would hope to have some strategy around trying to at least attach the result of that statement, even if they can't attach it uh, exactly. Because this isn't appeals court. You don't have to win over a legal conclusion from, from an astute, uh, learned audience. You have to just convince the jury that they did this and that it's their fault, basically. So I think I think that's great. I think that's going to be the biggest pitfall for Amber Heard is on cross. They're going to ask, do you have anybody else help you draft this article? You did, didn't you? And and, uh, you know, you, and you you specifically removed Johnny Depp's name because you didn't want defamation or whatever. And then once she if she denies that in any way, if she opens the door to those communications, they're all coming in. Yeah, a lot of people asking to throughout all, you know, my videos and I see it here in your chat, will Amber Heard even testify? Are we sure she's going to testify? She has to testify. I mean, yeah. and in a civil case, you can't say no. So if you're that bad that your side doesn't want to call you, the other side can call you and make you come to the stand and ask you questions. So there's no way she gets out of trial without testifying. So we're going to hear her testimony. We're going to hear Johnny Depp's lawyers ask her questions. Um, and we might see parts of her deposition if she gives inconsistent statements and they have to impeach her. And then you can play the video, which is one of the benefits of videoing depositions sometimes. And you choose strategically when you want to take that extra step. And, you know, people say she was horrible on it. I haven't watched the whole thing, um, but I've seen clips of her rolling her eyes and laughing or giggling about certain serious subjects. So maybe they'll get into that. Maybe they won't. But she's definitely going to take the stand in the case. Yeah, you, you ha Johnny Depp just spent four days on the stand. You or, well, he's spending his fourth day on the stand. You have to. You have she she will have to try and be uh, more likable than him. I anticipate she's probably going to spend similar amounts of time on the stand that he spent. Did she? Oh yeah, her would, side of the I story is going to take no 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 shorter period of time than his did. So you know, and, and part of one defense is truth. So we're going to be hearing all her stories as to like you know whether or not she actually was abused. Let's hear about these incidents where he where he was engaged in domestic violence let, 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 and, and fleshing those out. And then the cross-examination on that, I think that there's going to be, I think she's going to spend probably, she could potentially spend even longer on the stand than he does. So. Yeah. It, it all depends on how they approach it, how much time they have left. Uh, you know, the judge has made them very aware of the clock early on in this trial. And so by the time they get to Amber Heard, if they want to spend four days, five days, six days with her on the stand, then they need to make sure that they're going to have to truncate some of their other witness testimony, I think. And they, they may want to do that. They also may want to focus it down because if she's unlikable and believe me, they'll know because they have to deal with her. If she's unlikable, uh, then they may not want her on the stand that long. They may limit their questions. If you're, if you're the prosecution, you keep her up there just so everyone could be like, oh, yeah. he had to live with her for years. You only got stuck with her for four days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like, do you see how terrible this is? Wouldn't you beat her? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> like Bill Burr no, says, you know, it's never right to hit a woman, but... <laughs> so. I mean, I think that it's that's the that's the the crux of the trial. The two The two parties... In this case, basically calling each other liars and abusers. That's the whole trial. You know, we can have all the friends and sisters and people on the payroll come up and try to help out their friend. But when it comes down to it, it's just going to be between them two. So I think she's going to be up there for a long time. And I think Deb's lawyers are prepared for it. And I think the jury's probably going to hate her at the end. That's what it seems like, you know, where the world is leaning. So we'll see if that's if that's how it turns out.
and, and I think the audience is reflective of the jury. You know, when you feel like something is boring and slow, that's probably how the jury's feeling. And when you're sitting there, you know, thinking like, wow, this poor guy and wow, she's evil. That's probably what the jury is thinking also. They're just like you or me. I mean, they just, they literally pluck people at random. That's the whole beauty of our jury system. So if you're wondering how they're feeling, chances are that many of them are, are feeling the same way you are about the testimony and about these respective um, and, litigants. And, so. And when the gallery laughs, if the jury's not laughing, it's because they're trying really hard not to laugh. I think they're told not to. I think they're told not to show up. Everybody's yeah. told not to, but sometimes you can't help it when you laugh and somebody <laughs> says something funny. I mean. Yep. John And Johnny Depp has had the gallery laughing a couple times today. Uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And um, that likability, that's going to, that's going to pay more dividends than any amount of testimony about how he means that the monster is when he's coming off of in his recovery and he's struggling. And like, I mean, I know I get it, <laughs> right. That's factual. But uh, the, I, I think the defense made a mistake in focusing so heavily on his drug use, frankly, like, cause cause that, that eventually just became like, we, okay. Yes. He's on drugs. He did cocaine a whole lot. All right. Well, it could it. be it could be that this is part of an overall strategy that they're expecting when she gets on the stand, she's going to start describing how every time that he was on drugs, she was in fear that she was about to get hit again. Like if that's if that's basically that he was going to become, you know, verbally abusive, physically abusive, whatever. And that that's why they're trying that. That's the only justification that maybe there's, they have a payoff they're expecting at the end. Now that we, we spent so long fixating on all his drug use and all his abuses of of you know these of different narcotics or alcohol now we have a payoff at the end where she talks about how he acts you know to his wife when he's when he's under the influence and yeah so. while i think that you know it seems like a mistake based on what the case is actually about i think it is pretty shocking to a normal person the amount of drugs and the way they were just everywhere and the pictures and him passed out i do think there's some shock value like that to the jury who you know, do you think so? I mean, rock stars and celebrities, I think that the public tends to sort of give them a pass and almost expect them to all be on I, drugs and alcohol all the time. I'm sure there so are I, people on the jury on both sides of that, you know, or where some of them give be. them a pass and some people are like, wow, that's a lot of drugs. Right. It could be. Usually could be. if you take a cross section of society like that, there will be people on, on both ends of most aisles, hopefully. I mean, that's the point of what our jury system is supposed to be. It, it also could help. They also might be thinking it, it, it takes away from someone's likability. If like, right. you know, if, if you know someone is, is a drug addict, it, it makes them less likable. So that, Just generally speaking, right. right. And he's starting out so high. Everybody mm -hmm. likes him so much. Everyone, you see Jack Sparrow. He's up on the stand. Exactly. You can't help but think of Jack Sparrow. Some of so. his text messages literally sounded verbatim like Jack Sparrow. Like there was one where he was like, you'll remember the day that Johnny Depp bit <laughs> off your nose or whatever. And I was like, literally going to say you almost caught Jack Sparrow is what I was thinking in my head when they were reading that text. It was hilarious. He is so creative with his whole writing <clears throat> style. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. I wish I could get text messages from Johnny Depp. That dude can write. He's just like, he's so artistic in the way he, he describes things. He's like, you know, I don't want it spread all over the world like peanut butter. Just the way he words things in normal yeah. conversation is so unique. And yeah, I, I, I'm just, I grew new respect for him with respect to his intellect and his, yeah, and he his seems, creative ability. He seems really smart. That's what I was going to tell you. And Nick mentioned it earlier as well that he doesn't feel as sharp on direct or redirect, but on cross, he's listening to every word every objection he's following their line of questioning he knows where they're going before they go before they get there that's a really good witness and you can just tell he's an intelligent guy he's a really smart guy drugs and alcohol aside they obviously didn't mess up his brain too much because i think he seems really smart really sharp like nick said on cross he was really sharp because sometimes witnesses can get tripped up so easily with a lawyer asking certain questions knowing where they're going yeah Yep. He, he just has, uh, he has a narrative style. He's a storyteller, right? Like this, this is an actor, director, musician. This guy wants to tell a story every single day and, and anyone to anyone who will listen, he doesn't watch his movies. That should tell you a lot about how much he cares about telling the story. He doesn't want to hear it. He knows the story. He doesn't need to watch it. He made, he brought it to life. And so he, he wants to sit down and talk. And that's the, that's the hard part of direct with him is that everything 
goes back before what they ask and goes past what they ask. They're going to get all of this extra. They're going to learn about like uh, just that bit explaining Paul, the text to Paul Bettany. Right. And, and like, it took him forever to just say, yeah, it was from Monty Python. Remember the witch scene? You guys all remember the witch, witch scene. Huge. We've all seen this movie. That's huge. Right. Yeah. But it, it took him forever to get there. And then the follow-up is like, he goes into this story about how Amber Heard rips this kid a new one. And that story takes minutes to tell. And it's, he could have just said, well, yeah, uh, Paul hated Amber because one time his kid was telling a story and she kept cutting him off to the point where he started crying. And I, I had to send her home. I, I had her leave the island. I disagree like with I disagree with you. He's killing her by telling that story. He, no, just, no, no. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying that that was a bad moment. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it, every single answer is like that. It's right, it's that's all true. these long stories, and on some of them they get a little rambly. No, I thought that was a very good story for him to tell personally. Right, right. I, it's funny, you know. Sometimes they they say objection asked and answered, and it's like no, I asked the question, he just didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> because I asked, lawyers. Him, I asked yeah exactly i asked him like you know what you know when did you sign this contract and he's like and he's like well i thought it'd be a good idea to do it and it's like when w prepositions when not why not how not yeah. what color pen we're using when that's why the they, objection is asked and answered not right. just asked that's that's not Which, the, by objection. the way uh, by the way defense there i thought really missed the trick they sort of said move to strike prior answers non-responsive and then that way sure. you're sort of play, getting into his head that like all your gamesmanship of like going on and on and telling different stories i'm going to use that i'm going to use that to strike it down and when he hears that that hopefully would start clipping some of his answers down i felt the defense really missed <clears throat> golden opportunities every time when they said ask and answer for them to say, you know, well, he didn't answer. It was okay. Move to strike his prior his prior response is non responsive. And what what the hell can the can the plaintiff say at that point? Well, yeah, it's true. It wasn't responsive to the question. He has to strike it now. So they, I, th I thought I thought defense could have gotten under his skin more during this redirect than they have. And I uh, I feel like they're not really being very effective in using objections. In he was shell shocked that, after they, the end of that cross. He was, and and it, it caused him. I think I think they should have objected to the foundation on the contract, mm -hmm. the Disney contract. It did not look. Sorry. It had. It looked like Johnny Depp had no idea what that document was, and in the way he even answered, it appears to be a contract of some sort. Like, I mean, immediate. I'm like, objection, Your Honor. He has no idea what this document is, and then yeah. make somehow get his attorney to ask him a question what is that document you can you please and i don't think he could have answered i don't That's think he hot. could have answered at all and i mean he and might they, have spent 20 minutes going through it i think he's smart enough he could have figured it out eventually he said to a contract between me and walt disney so yeah he it, still, it sounded like a question million. to me <laughs> 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 really like i would have just i think if they could have really shook him on that with the object even if they would have ultimately yeah. lost i think they could have made it look like this guy doesn't even know what he's signing he doesn't know anything about his career uh he's he's trying to make it look like he's all aware and on top of things he had assistants doing everything uh you know this guy is not the the master filmmaker he presents himself doesn't even know his own contract when he looks at it that's embarrassing right yeah. like i i think they they should have objected i i would have like the second he says it appears to be objection your honor foundation well, we're not we're not interested in what his yeah we're not interested in what he thinks it may be today yeah. we're interested <laughs> if he knows what this contract is he yeah. clearly doesn't strike it no yeah. at the very least even though she look this judge gets every objection wrong practice it's, it's been so tough. <laughs> so you know you probably lose on that one because just given her track record but at least if you the more you can rattle him the whole goal sh really should have been let's get that ugly side out of him let's take this likability down a few notches by letting the jury see him get angry not not snarky and mocking me but ain't like really riled up and, conf and 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 a little bit lost that he can't use his normal meandering style because we're going to strike his testimony he can't use his normal meandering style because then it's not going to be proper then it's going to be speculative it's going to be it's going to be um it's not going to be actual testimony and if you can get him off of his standard game 
and with the way he does things and then start drilling with questions, that's how you start breaking down a witness where he actually shows his emotion. And, and he's a tough witness, a very tough witness for any attorney to try and break apart because of that meandering style. And that's, how, that's, that's one way of, of cutting through that, where you basically start actually getting under this person's skin and show that there is an ugly side to him. He's also a hard witness because you're not Amber Heard or his mother. <laughs> he, <laughs> he has been literally abused for years by two people. And you would have a hard time abusing him sufficiently on the stage. And he doesn't appear and he doesn't appear broken by it. Right. Like there are some people where you can you can ignite their trauma or whatever, but you're not going to be meaner than Amber Heard. You're not going to be meaner than Johnny Depp's mom. Like you're not, so you, uh, you may try to like big time the witness by being mean and not like mean, but just bullying them. And you can't bully someone who has spent years being bullied and only really lets the people he likes bully him. Because in spite of being bullied by these two people, the guy also made $650 million off his own efforts. Like he's, he's clearly not intimidatable by anybody he has to open the door for you and he's not going to let Rottenborn in so I, I think it's he's a very challenging witness um, yeah he's definitely there was, prepared I mean definitely prepared for this yeah I what do you guys think do you think they did some uh, some mock cross examination hired just the meanest son of a bitch they could to just rip him apart um, if, if they had to hire somebody they got a problem because they got like 10 lawyers there if one of them couldn't <laughs> handle his cross that's a problem yeah, but yeah, I, well sometimes you want yeah. outside counsel because you don't want to taint the relationship with the client even if it's unintentional no you, yeah. you, no what you do is you say okay look we got this guy who's not working your case here and he's like the biggest <laughs> a-hole in our firm everyone everyone hates him we all hate him you're gonna hate him too and he's gonna drill you with questions it's so. actually not a lawyer it's their ad sales guy yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> One of the things that's interesting to do when you do a mock cross like that, though, if you do have somebody internal or somebody you're providing, you know, like you hire that you provide, provide documentation to is you'll know more than the other side knows. So you can really go worse, go harder, hit things that they might not even know about or might not even go into just to really try to rile them up or get into things, you know, may be inadmissible. Exactly what Joe's yep. saying, because the way they win is to bring the monster out on the stand. So you try to do that so that you can guard against it so that no matter how bad his answer is, as long as he doesn't look like a monster on the stand, it comes out as a win, um, like Joe was saying. I think they completely failed to pull the monster out of John Agreed. Depp. I mean, that, that that's a big miss for them. Um, and the reason those, those recordings at the beginning of Cross today I felt like were so good and were the best is because I really felt all the recordings from day one fell so flat about mm -hmm. how he was drunk and just like, nah, and calling her names. But like, I didn't think any of them sounded like a physical abuser to me the first entire day of cross, which is why I felt like the recordings today were much better. Not yeah, that they I, were, I you know, this, they win the case over them, but they were better. Yeah. Just in spite of how bad the first day stuff was. No, I, I, so I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, question from Don Travis. Uh, can Johnny Depp attorneys ask Amber Heard if the article was about Johnny Depp? She's screwed either way. She answers N uh, not to get out of the de no to get out of the defamation. And yes, it is defamation. Um, yeah, she's they're definitely going to ask that question. I mean, that's that's one of the first questions you may even ask. Who'd you write this article? You or wait, you wrote this article about Johnny Depp, didn't you? And she'll try and weasel around it and say, well, the whole article is actually about more than those two statements are about Johnny Depp, aren't they? No. Well, here we go. We get to impeach you now because we have the records where you and your lawyers are trying to remove Johnny Depp and, and specific language because you're trying to avoid this exact thing, aren't you? you know, or, what if, or what if you just say, who are they about then? <laughs> yeah. they're not about John. let's defame someone else while we're here it's, all it's the about, cameras are on it's about white men in general basically <laughs> I, I mean if she says no she can't say no she can't say no and i don't think her lawyers have even intimated that that's going to be an argument in the case that this is not about johnny depp right uh gwen the ferret says leading question yes it's cross-examination you do leading questions that's how it's done um, that's why he I'm corrected gonna himself mid-question <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, changed exactly. it into a leading question i made it leading on purpose exactly um, let me read some of these super chats here because yeah, just one uh, last wanna... by the way, with respect oh. to the whole leading question thing, I just want to yeah. point out that the, that was part of the failure of the defense. They needed to basically 
ask very pointed, short questions, not allow him to meander all over the place. Yes or no, you know, it's, you know, and when he starts meandering, just say yes or no. Like drill him, drill him, drill him, drill him. And I didn't feel, I didn't see, sense that from Ron Bourne at any time. There was no point. He basically gave him as much leash as Johnny wanted. And that I felt was very poor strategy because that's that's how that's part of getting him off his game and getting him angry and get letting that monster rear its, up, its head up. That's how you do it. And when you let him he, just stay in his comfort zone, you're screwed. He did it at one point, at one point when he was reading the headlines of those articles, which I am really shocked that the judge just allowed him to read these headlines like that. But, but okay. He read the headlines and that all of them were admissible, but uh, he reads the headlines of the articles and Johnny was doing his thing where he responds a little bit uh, <laughs> here and there. And finally Rottenborn had learned to just steamroll through, read the next one, read the next one. Don't let him do his thing. And I think that was getting a little bit irritating for Johnny Depp. And the other point, Joe, that you, you hit, reinforcing the point that you made, which was very good. Um, they also were not protect like his own attorneys were not protecting his ability to answer questions. So the times when Rottenborn did cut him off, they just kind of let it go. And so Rottenborn should have taken that cue and cut him off every single time. No, you answer my question, Mr. Depp. Thank you. We're going to move on to the next one. Uh, right. and then no, it, not like do what he was doing the other day and call to, well, I'm trying to respect the court's time. Cause like, well, that sentence doesn't, but just the best, just push through and, and ask your next question. No, thank you, Mr. Depp. You answered. We're moving on. Thank you for your answer. Here we go. Next question, next question, yep. next question. And I think that would have, uh, that would have thrown him off because he, he does like to, he likes to talk. Um, go, go to super chats. Yeah, so Farmhand Tom says, if she mucks the bed, the smell will linger. Flick it away, then cut off your finger. To put the remaining odor at bay, order a bottles of amber odor eliminating spray. Search for Farmhand Tom on Google, and you can find Amber's odor eliminating spray. Uh, many, many people have purchased bottles of it, and I encourage you, look, if you've got defecation in the sheets, you need the meanest odor cause uh, odor fixing spray in the streets. So you better you better get some. <laughs> and what's meaner than Amber Heard? I know of nothing. I know of nothing. There you go. And Check out Farmhand Tom. And that's Tom, the guys. final word. <laughs> Cart says, "Funny thing is, no one cares about his drug use other than Amber's legal team. Everyone else is like, yeah, and what? I think it. I think it's getting that way. Um." But, uh, I mean, it remains to be seen. Maybe the jury is a bunch of, like, uh, teetotaling Amish. <laughs> it's all Amish on the jury. And they're like, these people's lives are astounding to me. <laughs> Jedediah, get the carriage. Uh, yeah, exactly Tom right. Grawl says, woo, woo, woo. Elon's hooked on a herd who left a turd on Johnny's bed. It would be uh, funny if we ever got a, a, a camera like paneling over the jury. You just saw a whole bunch of people with beards and no mustache. And <laughs> you just, you just saw, I mean, they all came from Dutch country. A couple of women there with like the white handkerchief over the, over the thing. The black <laughs> a dresses. bunch of Mennonites. <laughs> uh, Blaine's Escape Corner says, since last chat, my channel doubled in subs. Do it again. I can almost get my name in the URL. 7 p.m. PST, come review anime, learn to drop shows that suck and rant about Twitter's woke takes that make no sense. Kenpai, uh, that's Blaine's Escape Corner. Guys, if you like anime, you can check him out. Ocean Redux says, Nick looking fresh with that fade. Do a JoJo pose. Just kidding, unless, no, uh, JoJo has no place here. Uh, and you, you should know that by now. Who's JoJo? And we're not going to talk about it. Okay. Not not you, Joe. J O J O. Not J O E. I, I, I didn't think it was me. I I, I yeah. don't do poses. So, yeah, good. Debbie O says, Nick, did you hear anything about Friday motions? Wondering what occurred there. I did not. Did you guys hear anything? If anything occurred on Friday, I didn't hear anything. All I heard was about like flyers and you know stuff like that. I, and Johnny got a new lawyer added to the team. That's basically all I heard over the weekend. Oh, yeah. And the flyer thing, guys, look, unless there's a specific connection to Amber Heard uh, ordering these people to post flyers and even then um, flyers outside on cars outside the courtroom, 
the jury's cars are probably not outside the courtroom in a case like this. I'm guessing they park the jurors off site and bust them in or something like that. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah. uh, I, I, I don't know that a flyer on a car is going to be. Um, the judge impactful. can't control what people outside are doing for the most part. I mean, yeah, like you said, yeah. if Amber Heard or her lawyers specifically are telling people that work for them to go put flyers on the jurors' cars, sure, then there could be sanctions and whatever. But if it's just supporters doing something outside and laying flyers, court doesn't have a lot of jurisdiction to do anything to them. There, yeah. was, there, were, a bunch got, of me too, there were a bunch of Me Too flyers out, um, outside the some, courtroom. Something about supporting Amber Heard. I don't know what the flyer mm -hmm. said, but... But but realistic, like your First Amendment, the First Amendment rights of those people are, are going to be probably trump any court orders unless you can make some connection uh, to them violating an order or being under the jurisdiction of the court, which the legal teams are under the jurisdiction of the court. The parties are uh, witnesses, may be. like if if a witness called up and ordered two people to go do that, that would be that would be bad. Right. But uh, but generally speaking, most people are not going to be able to do anything about it. Um, but yeah, I didn't hear anything about Friday. If there were any motions that were impactful, sir, J dog 21 says almost finished book six of the overlord light novel in depth voice explained to Rottenborn what an idiom is. You see Mr. Rottenborn. Um, when you make a statement that is apparently ridiculous, but it has meaning beyond the words that might only be understood by a native speaker familiar with colloquialisms. Um, you have an idiom which would be distinguishable, in fact, uh, ultimately from idiot, which is you. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, there's my Johnny Depp impression for the day. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't as long as his. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say it was like five minutes. Too That's short. what she said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he follows up with, "I will be going to a work conference next week, so probably will miss some coverage. Hopefully, I can at least get drunk." Heard still has resting bitch face, even with her better hairstyle. What do you guys think about her hair? I think her hair is great today. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's less aggressive. It's less aggressive today. I like it. I like it when it, it's 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 sad that we have to analyze this, but it's it is reality. That, that the jury is definitely going to be looking over and, and getting a feeling about her. I don't know that all the jury. jurors are. Again, Joe, so see, me and you, we may have some agreements if we were both on the jury. We may have some disagreements. I, I have, like, talked about her hair and her outfits. They don't affect me at all on how I think about her, how I would view her. Affect, they don't affect me. I think she's me. pretty. That's I'm all talking, I've said. Is like... I, they don't affect me, but it doesn't mean that she doesn't come across a certain way. I mean, people in the audience, we were just talking about how, how the people in the audience here are reflective of how the jury is. And, and oh, the I fact get it. is, I, think I mean, you right. were talking about that, frankly. Okay, no one would argue. <laughs> I was, <laughs> you didn't deny it. You didn't, you didn't deny, deny it, Johnny. It. You didn't deny it, Johnny. <laughs> Yeah. So no, yeah, but I, I agree just, with you, Joe. You're 100 percent right. There could be one person that like makes a huge deal about it on the jury, and one person that doesn't make a huge deal about it. Right. That's the whole point. So I guess it matters. I just I don't know how to define hairstyles with whether or not you're an abuser. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm just I'm commenting for me. I think I I did not like her hair when it covered the side of her face that was towards the jury. I think that was. Uh, I don't know if it was an intentional move or not, but I think it was a bad move. I, I tend to think a lot of her moves are intentional. I mean, okay. she's she's spending money on that hair, I think. Uh, and and I think there's some choices being made about it. But um, I, I think the one where it covered her face was bad. I think when it, at first when she just had it high and tight, I thought that was a bad look. It it makes her look cold. And I, I kept comparing her to, to 90 Sharon Stone when she always played like the basic instinct character, but other characters too. When, whenever she was like playing cold bitch, that's what she looked like. And, and I don't think that was a good look for her. I think, I think she's, uh, I know everybody wall, 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 she's 35, whatever, but I think she's still plenty pretty enough to look pretty in court and do it well. And I think this is a nice refined look that is not like, uh, it's not trying to be sexy, but it, it looks good. It looks professional and it looks intentional. So and, I, I just like it. Peter might disagree with me. I'm not saying what should be. I'm simply talking about what what is reality. I mean, in reality, she shouldn't have to struggle more than any other litigant as far as how what her appearance is. Um, but that's what should be. 
But in reality, I think that a pretty woman in this circumstance has a t much tougher job than virtually any other litigant because she is drawing all lies because she's pretty and because she's a litigant and she's Amber Heard. But what I'm saying is she's definitely drawing she's drawing all attention unless the attention is being given to Johnny. And when she's drawing and when she's drawing that attention, I think that she should have been the look, the overall feel you should get when you look at her is this is a sweet innocent poor little flower that's what i think would have been the healthiest impression to try and drop on the jury given her face and that's her facial demeanor her hair her dress everything i think that if she looks weaker it's sad and it shouldn't have to be that way but it is reality that i think if she looks weaker i think it, it helps her not come across as being an evil bitch. You just look at her like, how could that person ever be such an evil bitch? She looks. Yeah, like I think you're probably right. I mean, I think you're probably right that she's under mother. more scrutiny than a normal defendant in a case like this, for sure. I actually think the bigger look difference came when Johnny pulled his hair back versus having it in you know in front of his face. Oh yeah, that was a big difference for me, who doesn't yeah. usually notice that stuff, obviously. But that that felt very different to me. No, and that that was one of the I, I mentioned that really early on in the show today. Once once he came in, that I think that was huge because uh, we're not just focusing on female looks here, guys. This, <laughs> the male gaze cuts both ways. No, um, uh, I I think at the beginning I used the word bedraggled. He looked haggard. He looked tired yeah. and and mopey and angry. And then when he pulled his hair back, he looked he looked more alert. He looked cleaner. He looked it almost looked like he was like. You know, wake up. All right, here we go. Let's do this. You know, he did. He looked yeah. tired the first couple of days. And he looked professional once he pulled his hair back. Like a professional used car salesman. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. he just... Since when does a guy pulling his hair back make him professional, right? I, I, nobody's told me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, do you have any Chevy Novas for sale? Yeah. No. <laughs> we got some really good ones in the back. We're just winding <laughs> the odometers back. Give us a minute. Yeah, come on back. Kick the tires. It'll be great. Kick the tires. You got to talk to my manager first before you leave. <laughs> Mr. Krause says, uh, Mr. Krause says, the more texts he shows, the less I care. Yep, I think I think they're flooding with some of this stuff. And I think the, the problem with flooding is they're reaching further and further away from believability. And it, as they try and just hit with volume. And it to me, it seems like that's been a big problem for them on this so uh gremlins rage says i don't think amber heard's team was saying that she used that specific product throughout the relationship just that she used makeup to cover bruises what they showed is probably just the product she uses now well remember that that was a it was a specific product mentioned by crazy cat lady lawyer but as i said earlier there's no testimony that she used that product so it's going to be hard to bring in that did you guys see that by the way uh, the the statement from the makeup oh, yeah. company that said, yeah, this this foundation didn't actually exist back then. 2017 or whatever, right? Right. But uh, I was talking bum, about the bum, challenges bum. of <laughs> the challenges of getting that into court, though. Like, what do you? You're not impeaching any statements. You don't you gotta, have when she's on the stand. You got to bring yeah. it up. And when, you got to ask. Stand, that, you're asking, did you, what cream did you use? Yeah. You know. Oh, I would I would tell her you used this Milani cream or whatever that you. I would go grab it because her lawyer used it as a demonstrative aid in opening, I would go grab it and say, this is what you had in your purse the entire time of your relationship. And guess what? Go to Ricada Law and grab that part of the stream because you can literally pull it. If she says, I didn't hear my lawyer say it, we have that recorded. Show the lawyer showing it, boom. And then you got to get a business records affidavit from Milani saying that didn't come out until 2017. And Amber on the stand has to fumble through well, that's what I use now. I used something similar back then. You know, it's not exactly the then same. Then why'd your lawyer but... mention this? Exactly. If you have, <laughs> by the way, I'm going to ask you all, all kidding aside. If you have a big client, you're representing Amber Heard or, or Johnny Depp, would you not assign at least a paralegal to be watching streams like this to sort of see like, maybe we're missing something. Let's get, it can't hurt to have outside perspective. Let's get a feel for what Chad is saying and what the jury might be thinking. I mean, I think that I actually, if you're investing so many millions of dollars in your legal team, I actually think that they're idiots if they're, if they're not stationing someone to be as observing and get like what a panel of attorneys are taking away from this. I am really offended right now that you think they would have to pay someone to watch this show, which they're actually, already watching for their pleasure. Joe, just want no, to put that out there. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize <laughs> you see you're, 
a solo practitioner. So you don't realize <laughs> that law firms find any excuse they can to, you know, big law firms find any excuse they can to basically rack up billing hours. So while I'm sure they're having a grand old time, that's like the plum job in the firm today. That should be a job that's assigned to someone who is the bill is going to be sent to Amber Heard. That's all I'm saying. I, I think uh, you mentioned the business records affidavit. Uh, and if they're, if they weren't already on the phone, with Milani getting that records affidavit the moment that thing came out or like, you know, within an hour. Seems they, like they want to cooperate. Yeah, they would, they need to get that. Cause Milani doesn't want to be involved. Well, I don't, I don't know. The, the fact that they made the statement is actually kind of surprising to me. I would think they just want to not be involved at I all. Agree. But yeah, nobody would have known it was them. I mean, I mean, I should say I would have never known it was them even after that opening statement. I get what the point was. Cause I was thinking, if I was her lawyers, I just wouldn't have been so specific, you know, just yeah. say she had to use, she had to use makeup that had some Brown and black and blue contours or whatever, because she had bruises all over her face all the time. Just say something like that. It gets the same point across than to tie yourself in or box yourself in using this specific one. Now you would never think that something like this was going to happen, I guess. Um, but you know, I mean, they, they stepped in it now, so they're going to have to figure out how to answer it. I yeah, the other thing you could, uh, you could, get the business records affidavit, man. I wonder if there would be any other, like if they just refused to, well, you could subpoena them. I mean, in theory, like, and you could do uh, it by you, zoom today's day. Cause this age. is, uh, this is new evidence, right? And this, this would be the type of evidence that would, uh, it would be a surprise. However, it could be sufficiently probative and, um, it was not, it was not a surprise elicited or planned by your team. Clearly they made this statement independently uh, in reaction to what happened from Amber's team. And it may not even be evidence or an exhibit. It may just be for impeachment purposes. That's and if right. you provide the business record affidavit, that's you can impeach with a pizza box. Yeah. And you, you just, as long as it's authentic, you can impeach that it does not have to come in. The jury doesn't have to see it. You can just ask the questions and say, well, Amber, look at this business records affidavit. That said it didn't come out till 2017, but your relationship was all 2016, 15, 14, whatever, when this didn't exist, did it? And just see how she answers. And that way it's not new evidence it's not an exhibit it's not something that's going back to the jury it's just impeachment correct well done uh, it's wild though man right i mean this is just <laughs> what this is what happens when all these eyes are on your case and joe's right yeah. you should be watching because i mean if Depp's lawyers didn't think of that and it's not that they're dumb or we're better or they should have hired us like like i i appreciate that that's very nice of people in the chat to say but in reality they're dug in they're they're just grinding away at this case they are focused. They are razor focused on this. I mean, this is what they're doing. They're eating, breathing, sleeping this. So, you know, we're just kind of taking bits and pieces and off the top of our head saying things like business records. They may know something we don't as to why they can't get into it. So don't give them too hard of a time. But Joe's right. Listen for ideas. What's the worst that could happen? You bill your associate at 150 bucks an hour to sit here and listen to Nick all day. Well, 150 and, and bucks. That's the associate, your that's lowest paralegal. level. Somebody you basically no. want to punish to have to watch this stream all day. Okay, so that's why all you right. picked your lowest in York, level. In New York, associate. in these big firms, uh, uh, yeah, like Peter, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. We, weird. <laughs> oh gosh, the internet just killed him. <laughs> no, it's uh, but when when you're in it, you can't see from outside too. Yeah. So like you're you're thinking about all these other things. You've got your overall strategy. You've got your prepared stuff, and something that comes out. That could be a gem to your, uh, not, let's not oversell it. A nice yeah. little nugget to your case, right? That that you might not have caught, uh, or you might not even be thinking about because you've got all this other stuff on your mind. It's, it's someone mentions it, you. Oh, hey, yeah, actually, yeah, get somebody on that. Get get that. Let's get a statement right away. Um, we actually Drew saw Jen in house that, that Mark Richards used some of the stuff that that we had said. I actually had Darth Crypto on and supposedly he used some of Darth Crypto's um, analysis of photo and was actually like, like quoting some of the stuff that he, had. it was certain things that he had said, which made it clear that he had like watched Darth Crypto, which was, which was pretty cool to like have any sort of influence on that trial. So they, I believe that they definitely are, are watching. And to what you said, Nick, in general, whenever you have a problem of your own, it's so much more tough, difficult to, to analyze because you're in the forest. So as opposed to the three of us in the overview, it's like we could be like someone's lost in a forest. We could be like, no, go to the east, like like 30 yards and you're out of the forest. Otherwise, if you go any other direction, you'd be going for like 4,000 miles. And, but if you're in the forest, you can't see it because you're so like in the thick of things. And that's why we have a much easier job 
doing this than actually trying to try the case. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Drew Jensen says, for you D&D types, stop by Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition server Amia. All the 3E fun, none of the woke bull. It's free once you grab the game on Steam. They still have a Neverwinter Nights server? Uh, okay, cool. Very cool, guys. Sorry, that's nerdy, but it's real. And it's mine. Mo says, Twitter deal seems to be done. Elon tweeting that he hopes his worst critics remain on Twitter. Look, I... I was just, I was just begging to let Elon buy Twitter. Like, please do it. It can't be worse than whatever Twitter is. It'll at least be funnier because we have a weirdo running it. And, uh, and, and I, I think it'll be, I think it's good because it'll either burn the company to the ground, which would be deserved, or it'll make it better. I mean, that's, that's honestly the two options. So I'm, I'm with it. Uh, and, um, Elon, if I could please uh, change my Ricada media handle back to my Ricada law handle that was banned, that would be great. And if you could never ban me again, that would be nice too. Thanks, brother. Uh, I'll let you simp for Amber Heard twice without making fun of you if you do that. Billy Witch Doctor 99 says, current Fox News headline on this trial, Johnny Depp, Depp admits to burning Heard with cigarette in bombshell recording. Pretty sure that didn't happen. What the fuck is wrong with the media? Yeah, he did not admit to burning her with a... Uh, with a cigarette and in fact specifically denied doing that afterwards. Um, so, but dude, you're in, you're in me too town. This is, this is dangerous turf for anybody. That headline writer could be afraid of losing his job if he writes the headline wrong. And I'm not exaggerating. That's how weird uh, the me too power has been. Um, that's the stranglehold it has. Uh, so you have a problem with the me too movement? Really, Nick? Yeah, yeah, I think they're a bunch of lying bitches. There, Peter, I'll say it all day. I think Peter's got to leave soon. He's gonna be like, I gotta get out of here. You said they, all, I mean, I disagree that they all are obviously I mean, no, every single one yeah, of them, right. everyone without exception. I don't care if they have video, they're lying anyway. If you latch onto the Me Too movement, you're done with me. You're I'm gonna have to get to an exhibit list, I'm gonna have to get an exhibit <laughs> list before I can respond. But see, I just put up the trick question because there is never any video with the Me Too. There's never any evidence. That's the problem that we've got. Uh, so anyway, but yeah. My, my, my we, goal uh, was just to pit you two against each other, like Woody Woodpecker. So I'm like, <laughs> we, we yeah. fight about it on screen yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uncle Anko Stone says, objection, gobbledygook and ha objection, gobbledygook and havoc, your honor. <laughs> A uh, wick dipper says, can a witness do their own objections or defenses to objections on the stand? They're not supposed to. Uh, but John, Johnny kind of did one there. That was pretty funny uh, when he defended the objection and it worked. <laughs> so I'm going to guess. Ocean Usually Redux, the judge don't... doesn't like that. Usually no. the judge wouldn't like the, the, the client being sarcastic on the stand to the lawyer that usually gets a reprimand. Yeah. I think, And that's, I think, a little testament to uh, his charm. He's Johnny Depp. Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to stop him? I mean, how can you? Uh, Ocean Redux says, don't know if you saw my first super chat, but anyway, speaking of Jelaine Maxwell, what was the real reason they didn't air that trial? Uh, the judge made a statement claiming it was too scandalous for the general public. Is that why? Um, well, no, the reason they didn't is because there's a federal rule that says that they can't. It's 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 in the federal rules of civil procedure or criminal procedure that they don't air trials. Uh, it's rule 55 or 58 or something. We we looked at this thing uh, in our lawyer little powwow on Twitter. We looked at this thing very extensively trying to find out if we could even broadcast like pirated audio that was sneaked out of the courtroom. And we all came to the conclusion that we would be very much risking licenses if we did that. Um, it's a pretty clear and and uh, direct rule. You cannot do it. Uh, Lancelot says, I'm ready for when Amber suddenly starts bawling her eyes out on stand. Oh yeah. The waterworks are going to turn on. It'll be real interesting how she plays it. KW defense strategy. If you cannot dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. Did I read that correctly? <laughs> you, you did so very good reading. Thank you. Uh, a Finch, regardless of outcome, Depp has successfully rehabilitated his reputation. That's all he wanted. Money. Psh. The public display of this trial was a loss for her and a win for him. He just wanted to get his side out. Uh, the other side hasn't gone yet. 
So remember that because theoretically they could have something that would destroy his reputation that would, that would unrehabilitate it. Uh, so. And it's a civil case. So we expect the other side to put on a lot more evidence and go a lot harder than maybe some criminal defense lawyers would be when they go. Right. True. Wolfram says, will Depp's team use the incident of a turd activist playing, placing sympathetic flyers on a car windshield wipers last week? I doubt it. I, I don't think there's much they can do about it. They could maybe this, bitch and ask the judge to tell people not to, but the judge can't really actually stop people from doing it. Good job Panama Jack turn activist in the literal way also. <laughs> Panama Jack's Jim, thank you for the donation. Ron White says, just a thought to the panel. If Johnny wins, do you think the jury will award him the $7 million that Amber Heard never gave to charity? Possible. We, they could really, they kind of get to do whatever they want. I mean, frankly, they, they whatever reasoning, because they'll never put it. They don't write down on paper the reasoning they came to the answer. It's one of the weirdest things in our civil justice system is we ask for a number. The defense says to give us a different number and the jury comes up with whatever number they want. And a lot of times it's not either of those two numbers. It's yep. weird. And it may be kind of how they get to a unanimous verdict, too. Exactly. If they barter over the number. Exactly. They say, well. Uh, Dr. Spoon says if Amber Turd's lawyers are watching Nick's coverage, they would be commenting about why do the chat always ask balls or no balls? <laughs> Shree says Milani cosmetics are considered a drugstore makeup brand. They know the majority are on deaf okay, side. So they made a statement because it draws women who didn't know they existed them and makes them money. Well, there you go. Mr. Depp, before the break, we were talking about your, how your finger got injured in Australia. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. Okay. Cheers um, to 10,000 like likes, up, by the way. Um, defendants exhibit 394, please. Isn't it 11 o'clock there, Nick? Is it a little early for this? <laughs> it's 124. Death, thank you. Recall, um, Johnny's question. Showing you this exhibit, um, on during your cross examination. Yeah, yes, I do. <clears throat> and can you please explain when, relative to your finger injury, you sent this text message? That's the day before. Is it, am I correct? Uh, At the bottom, it says, I cut the top of my finger off. What should I do? Except, oh. of course, go to a hospital. Ah, Australia. Exactly. The time difference. Sorry. Uh, yes. That's, uh, that's what I said. And so when relative to when your finger was injured, did you send this text message to your best recollection? This this looks like it's um, um, at the time to me. I um, and in the middle here it says her obsession with herself is far more important. She's so fucking ambitious. She's so desperate for success and fame. That's probably why I was acquired, mate. What did you mean by that? Unfortunately, I meant exactly, um, I meant exactly what I said. It's not what your lawyer's looking this for. This text, it seems, it's, you know, it had become clear. But there were um, she seemed to take more care in and importance in um, going on auditions, getting going to the Met Ball or going to any any sort of uh, premiere or opening or <clears throat> whatever where she could be um the question, Your Honor. Uh, sorry I, I he was watching joe i think he was listening to joe what he wrote in the <laughs> <laughs> he said, I meant exactly what the 
Joe said. Now he's going to be oh, Everyone should listen to Joe. Question. Thank you, Mr. Rottenborn. Uh, sir, if you could just answer the question, Mr. Depp, please. Boom. The, the judge was listening to me. Okay. Sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Depp, last week, uh, Mr. Rottenborn showed you an audio recording where you referenced your, your finger getting cut off in Australia. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to play a different portion of that recording um, that came before the portion that Mr. Rottenborn played. So if we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343, and we will be playing the portion from at 1 hour, 54 minutes, 11 seconds to 1 hour, 56 minutes, 10 seconds. early it's quick it's so not it, you're not interested in not fighting you are guaranteeing a fight when you do that and i've tell i've told you this so many times you guarantee if you were interested in not fighting you would be respectful if you needed the space to make you would be careful not to perpetuate the fight longer by saying i need i need a few minutes and then actually honoring that how can i trust you that it will be a few minutes when you've done this in the past and disappeared for hours. You know, I got mad at you in Australia about this. I've said, baby, I want to trust you. It's hard for me not to try and work it out. If you want to be the person that's like, I need to cool down, help me do that, give that to you. But I can't give it to you if you always let me down and, and fuck up and forget. Because I and gave you a time limit because I said I'll be back in three minutes. So I'm just- No, it's if different. That happen, if it happens- It's different, you never- If it happens. I'm just going to say, look, I need some time. That's it. I'm telling you, that will make it worse. No. I guarantee you it will. If you're, if you're stuck in throwing punches. I'm not, not talking about throwing punches. I'm talking about an argument. Really right. good for him. In arguments, you tend to throw I think. punches. I'm talking about arguments. I'm not talking about the times when it's about physical. I'm talking about arguments. I'm talking about arguments. I'm talking about arguments. I'm yes, talking in our arguments. Argument. Earlier and earlier and earlier now. You split. You take off right away. You don't deal with the issue. You don't deal with the confrontation. And you split. Whether you it is right away. And then you do it for an undetermined amount of time. You do it without actually respecting when you do give me a time. Like, say, I need a few minutes. And You've never. Uh, Mr. Depp, whose voices can you hear in that audio recording? Ms. Hertz and myself. And. There was a mention about Ms. Hurd getting mad about something in Australia. What would what did Ms. Hurd get mad at you about in Australia? There were, there were many, um, there were many instances where Ms. Heard would um, get upset, angry, um, and <clears throat> argumentative and violent in Australia. There were many, there were many times. I, I, the one that was the, the day when my finger, tip of my finger disappeared. <laughs> um, that had to do with a phone call. When she arrived in Australia, she um, complained that uh, an attorney who was ex explaining to her um, the, uh, uh, the object pre objection, your honor, is hearsay as to what he alleges her attorney was explaining to her. That's clearly- We can move on, Your okay. Honor. Yes, ma'am. Um, in the context of this audio recording that we just heard, what to your understanding is Ms. Heard referencing when she says you split? I would, I leave, I, I would her in half. excuse myself from the <laughs> situation. Um, I would try to get away so that, so that nothing escalated because if given the chance uh, to uh, allow things to escalate, Ms. Heard would take it to the very extreme, um, which ended up with my finger being chopped off. 
So I'd rather have thought it was the best idea to avoid things like that. Good answer. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 272. I believe this is another document that you saw during your cross-examination. Do you recognize these text messages? Uh, yes. And this, these were after um, your detox on the island, is that right? That's correct. Now, where it says here, this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. What are you referring to there? I... <clears throat> when we were uh, on the island and um, I was going through the process of detox, the detoxing from uh, the opiates, which was a very uh, unpleasant and powerful, painful process. Um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't working with Miss Heard there. I, I, I could not properly uh, detox um, as it, every day was a, a, another problem or this or that. Um, so, <clears throat> I asked, I asked that we leave the island and go back to Los Angeles. And I asked Ms. Hurd if she would please allow me to um, get a, 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 a bungalow at the Beverly Hills Hotel where she and her friends could go for, I needed five days, six days, seven days, anything I could get where I could finish the detox by myself without any unnecessary interruptions or unpleasant interruptions, um, to which she replied that she was, uh, felt like she, I was throwing her out and abandoning her. And after all she had done for me, when the fact is though, no matter what I wrote to her mother and to her, I, I needed the time because she, I, I was, I would have gone straight back to the pills. I would have not been able to detox properly without that time alone. And um, she reluctantly gave me the time. And uh, I sent her and her friends to to uh, Beverly Hills Hotel and um, in a bungalow and went through the detox by myself in the uh, in penthouse three for the next five or six days. Mr. Depp, last week, Mr. Rottenborn showed you a video that was taken of yourself where you're slamming some cabinets. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, where are you in that video? That's uh, the kitchen at uh, a house that I've, I've on Sweetser um, that I've lived in for since. You know, we have nine. one policy on this channel. It's no spamming. Do you recall what Sorry, you guys. said about in that? You're going to have to get banned. Objection leading. You got to say your piece. Now you're done. I don't recall, as I, I don't know the date of. I'll unban um, you later. There's no metadata that I. You can come back and say um, it a different I'm aware time. of for that tape. Also, uh, apparently looking for any metadata is impossible as it is your not Honor, owned by. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. You want to ask the question? Mr. Doug, what do you remember? What, if anything, do you remember being upset about that resulted in what was seen in that video? I can't recall if it was bad news about my mother's health. I can't recall if, if it was something to do with my former business managers. Um, so it sounds like you'd have to speculate to give us an answer. A very nasty ride. I don't recall exactly what it was about. What I do know is that it didn't um, have anything to do with her. Objection beyond the scope of the question. Overruled, I'll allow it. Sorry. He waited too long. I, there, there was nothing between us before she entered that room. It was me alone. Uh, 
Okay. Do you know where Ms. Hurd was before, before she entered the room? Um, I'm, I, I assume that she was up in the, you know, she'd gotten out of bed and <clears throat> gotten dressed and come downstairs. Mr. Depp, earlier today, Mr. Rottenborn played a recording where you can hear Ms. Hurd um, seeming to claim that you put a cigarette out of her, on her. Do you remember that? I remember hearing that, yes. Um, I'd like to play you another recording, which is Plaintiff's Exhibit 365. Okay. And this is, for the record, a, an 11-second recording, so we'll be putting in the entire. All right. Any objection to 365? No, R-365 in evidence. <clears throat> couch. 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 You give me one couch. I gave you three other couches. Two couches. Give me one, please. Please give me couch. couch. What do you want? Couch. Couch, what do you want? I want couch. I want couch. Agree, please, though. You said you agreed before yes, agree. we started talking. I'm going to stop fighting. Is this code? Yes. Your Honor, she said yes, this was 11 seconds. It's been nasty and provoking. It's, it's, it's mean spirited. And then, no, I'm not saying that. Nice. You asked that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I misspoke. It may have been 45. I may have misremembered it. It's a, 11 seconds. I okay. apologize. I misremembered. So what, Rottenborn? Yeah, like, you agreed to let it's, it in. It's all in evidence. Yeah. She can't count, Your Honor. Yeah, there's no chance. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, can we play that? Thank you. Couch. 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 You give me one couch. I gave you three other couches. Two? Two couches. Give me one, please. Please give me couch. What do you want? Couch. Couch, What do you want? I want couch. I want couch. The fuck is couch? Please, so. You said you were free to go. You started talking. I'm going to stop fighting. He's probably going to answer that. Have I been fighting? Everything you've said has been nasty and provoking and mean spirited. Not yours. And no, I'm not saying that. You asked me yours. By the way, you just threw a fucking cigarette on me. Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's in that recording? Do I recognize what's in the recording? Yes. Um seems pretty clear that she's ordering me to the couch. Um, and I didn't want to go through with any, again, avoiding confrontation, trying to avoid confrontation in any way. Um, so it's like a dog command. Um, I can certainly say that the, the, without hesitation, there is no way under the sun that I would flick a cigarette at her or burn her with a cigarette if I flicked ashes and an ash got on her but she's certainly not screaming out in pain as if a cigarette is being put out on her uh, that's ludicrous maybe couch is like a an agreed that term that out of your recording we go to the couch talk this out maybe yeah something. it sounds like couples therapy like I want a couch now you got I one earlier or something like that uh, excuse me, Toronto, um, <clears throat> which was right after the Venice Film Festival. It's we were at the Toronto Film Festival. Mr. Depp, I'd like to ask you about a couple text messages from May to twenty. Excuse me, May twenty second, two thousand sixteen, that Mr. Rottenborn asked you about um, earlier. Yes. Um, and before I do, could you please remind the jury what was going on between you and Miss Hurd's relate? between you and Ms. Hurd on May 22nd, 2016? On May 22nd,
on May 21st, <clears throat> um, I had, she wanted, I hadn't seen her since the, since the 22nd of April, her birthday, which was when I left at 4.30 in the morning. Um, what, I, I believe, Objection, Your Honor, this is cumulative. He's already gone through all of this in his direct examination, and she asked him what was happening on May 22nd. And he's getting into what happened on May 21st. We've already been through this. Yeah. I, I, I believe that we're he's providing context for where they I were on we the, can, 22nd, we can go but, to the 22nd. But um, if you could, Mr. Deb, please explain what was where you were on the 22nd of, of May in 2016. As far as I can remember, the, on May 22nd, 2016, I was. Um, Preparing, either preparing to leave for New York for uh, <coughs> rehearsals and then a tour with the Hollywood Vampires. Um, I was either preparing to leave or I was uh, had left. I, I... Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 736, please? And... Do you recall sending this text message to Ms. Hurd on May 22nd, 2016 at 6 19 p.m.? Yes, I do. Um, what did you mean when you told her nothing I have to say to you should elicit anything but a sense of ease? It was essentially, for me, it was a, I was bringing up what I had spoken to her about before, which was a peaceful resolution to the problems, a peaceful resolution in terms of a peaceful and private and quiet and calm divorce. Um, and so that's why I say, it shouldn't elicit anything but a sense of ease um, because it was not about, I didn't want to argue. I didn't want anything but to end the marriage in the kindest way possible for all her family, my family, her, her myself, etc. And what did you mean when you said all my love and profound apologies? Profound apologies is that it just didn't work. We just could not work. There was no way. And I had to try to put a peaceful end, a peaceful stop to the endless um, the endless opportunities for, 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 for these constant arguments. If I didn't put a stop to it, then I mean if if I didn't try to put a peaceful stop to it, a peaceful end to it, then it, if you don't stop it yourself, it'll stop you it'll stop you and, 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 and you don't know what that could be, it, 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 but it's, uh, it was horrific. And I wanted her out of it and I wanted out of it. No one deserves to live like that. No one deserves to live like that. Not her, not me, not anyone. So I just wanted a smooth exit for both of us. That's all I was looking for. Mr. Depp, uh, yes, or <clears throat> last week, uh, Mr. Rottenborn played a clip from an audio recording where Ms. Heard told you that you vomit in your sleep a lot. Do you remember that recording? Yes, I do. 
And what's your response to that? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't vomit in my sleep. Someone, when someone tells you that you vomit, because you didn't tell me. Is, I, is that a weird thing to do? Is that weird? That. <laughs> That's my response. When someone brings up the fact that you vomit in your sleep every night. And, well, at first I think you'd be aware of it. Um, Usually evidence involved with also, the vomit. I think uh, the first thing you do is seek medical attention. It didn't exist. I'd never vomited in my sleep every night. I, I, there were times when I would get, yes, physically ill from the endless uh, uh, shots that y you take when you're just you can't you you're you're unable to take it anymore and when you say it doesn't can't take any more you shots you mean drinking after a while you, you so i would have to leave and go and um vomit in uh, when fights got into these surreal and absurd and horrible places um but it still confounds me as to why she would record that i, I don't know why anyone would record that Mr. Depp, the, the portion, the clip that Mr. Rottenborn played was from Defendant's Exhibit 839. And just for the record, this is a portion of a larger recording, which is reflected in Plaintiff's Exhibit 342. So with the court's permission, I'd like to play a clip from Plaintiff's Exhibit 342. Um, and the, for the portion I'd like to play is at 19 minutes, 40 seconds to 25 minutes, 25 seconds. And do we have 342 already in evidence? Or? I don't believe so, Your Honor. No, so you wanna put 342, it's just the entire audio in? Yes, evidence. I don't believe that there's anyone else in this audio recording, Your Honor. I don't believe, I hear this before. Okay, 342, any objection? As long as there's no one else in the audio recording. We can, we can confirm afterwards, so. If, if your honor would, if it's more comfortable, we can put in it in as 342A. Okay. And what was the, let's put 342A and what's the, I'm sorry, what's the part that you're going to? Play? It's uh, 19 minutes, 40 seconds to okay. 25 minutes, 25 seconds. All right. And there's just the two of them and that's this excerpt. That that's correct? correct. All right. That's 342A in evidence then. Thank you. Okay. Do you understand? Why 10 minutes downstairs doesn't seem real? I don't care. Did you hear what I said? I don't care. I don't care. Please do. There's plenty of things you've done, plenty of things you've fucking done. Absolute fucking lies. I didn't I'm, I'm ever. I didn't fuck with you about it. So anyway, don't leave it. So I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Is that what matters? Your lies. Is this what matters to you, your party? Your lies, my I never let you. And what we're talking about tonight is what? Who are you? Why? Why are you doing this? Leave him. Why? What is what is it that is so important always to run away to? Why? It's wrong. Yeah. I run because I'm a cop. Why are you? Day. I you asked me once not to leave and I'm asking you so why every five seconds do I get I'm leaving because there's a fucking movie party I gotta go to I have never prioritized you behind that and you of all people of all people all this talk about not being that guy you have done nothing but over the last two days but tell me that your movie parties were more important including the night before last when i said to you the same thing stay and today you apologized said i love you i'm so sorry and then and then today it takes you two seconds it takes you 20 
seconds at most to go, fuck that, I hate you, I don't want to be with you, goodbye, I'm leaving, I'm running away, but I'm not running, I'm walking away. Then if you don't want to be with me in life, Goodbye. then you need to actually do it. You need to actually take off your ring and forget that five hours ago you said the opposite. Otherwise, you can't keep throwing that around. You can't keep saying to me that this is something you care about. Is that what it's worth to you? You, the mother's bitch, the mother's these rules, all these rules. Because I asked but, you to stay. Because because I asked you to stay. No, because you're you're fucking. What was it? Me. What was it when you asked me to you're stay? In the ass. What was it when you asked me I to can't stay? Stand it, no. What was it when you asked me to stay? In Australia, you said you promised me not to leave. You you said you promised me not to leave. What did I do? But you changed. What did I do? Not change. What did I do? Did I stay or did I leave? You changed. Did I stay or did I leave? You stayed and you didn't change. You were a fucking stayed. Cunt. Yes, you were a cunt. So I stayed. And I've been a cunt ever since, which is why you told me Pretty about much. every other day how you couldn't imagine your life without me, including today. So, when which guy? Does that seem normal to you? Does that seem normal to you? Why are they playing no, You told me tonight that you couldn't imagine your life without me. And now you're throwing your ring on the ground. Does that seem normal? That's how you tell me. That seems sober? You, you seem you seem you normal? The definition of normal. You. you. Does that seem normal? You. Does that seem normal to you? Borderline personality disorder. I'm borderline personality disorder now. Without question. When I've been consistent all night saying, don't go, don't fuck this all up. I'm not fighting with you anymore. I've been saying this to you the whole night. I'm really sorry we disagreed. You're not perfect. I said this two hours ago. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. I love you. But, but we don't first. have to do this every time we disagree. No. No, we don't. We Please. Do. We do. Please. Come here. And you have Please come here. here. Insult. Please come here. I'm not insulting you. I have not been insulting you. I love you. Johnny, what do you need me to do? I love you. Stop. I'll smack me on the ear again. Oh no. I'll smack my ear again. So it fucking resounds in my fucking cranium. Here it is. There it is. That's what it was. I love you that much. I kill myself. No, you do not. I will not kill myself. And you want me to fucking be some kind of cursed goddamn parrot or a fucking weird frenzied dog? No, I won't be it. No. Frenzied dog, I'm trying to or, talk Or your goddamn mm. fucking lover. Calm the, the, down. Uh, Calm Asia, down. Calm I'll explain in a second. Baby, stop. No, I don't want stop. to be with you. These are the fucking stop. rules. Oh, God. No one's He said, You want to hit me in the ear again? It resounds in my head, and she said, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it is a Another argument that is apparently not an argument to her. The screeching of her voice, the, the demand that things go her way and only her way. I was, I was done and I think I stated clearly, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be with you. I, I, I'm not going to be a parrot on a, or, or, or some, you know, little dog that runs through hoops for you. I ain't going to do that. And I want it out. 
She said, take your ring off. She still wouldn't let me leave. I did, and she still wouldn't let me leave. Um, so it's, it's just another example of um, kind of being nailed in one spot and not allowed to uh, do anything but react to her screaming and, and um, screaming like a banshee and then telling me to calm down when I had been pretty calm, I thought. Where were you trying to go, if you can recall? Anywhere, away. And why did you ask Ms. Hurd if she wanted to smack you in the ear again? She had given me a good chop in the ear, you know, one of those where um, leaves you ringing, you know. And um, it was not long before that. And so I thought, maybe this will make you happy. Will it make you happy to, would you like to hit me in the ear again? Would that, would that make you feel better? Will that make you stop this? Would have done anything to have stopped outside of taking anything to some physical level. I disagreed with that wholeheartedly. That's not me. It's not who I've ever been. It's not who I'll ever be. It's good testimony. Excellent. Excellent. Mr. Depp, um, I'm going to play another audio recording. This is a and after that recording. You believe him? What Mr. Rotten yep. played for you today? It's EX yep. very powerful. Five ninety eight. Um, I believe the portion Mr. Rottenboard played was designated five ninety eight B. So this will be five ninety eight C. Okay. Um, and first, I'd like to play the portion from thirty one minutes fourteen seconds to thirty three minutes four seconds. Any objection to 598C? No, Your Honor. Um, and then we will go on and play the second portion, which is 56 minutes, 27 seconds to 59 minutes, 54 seconds. Okay. All right, 598C in evidence. You know, and it builds, right? Like you build, I build, you know, it isn't like at one moment, either of us sign a certificate of saying, or like sign the contract or say, okay, now I'll blood back. No. So acting as though there's a choice between the two is, is relevant. I'm not asking you to stay over having a bloodbath. I'm asking you, I mean, over walking away. I'm not asking you to have a bloodbath over walking away. I'm asking you to work it out over prolonging it and making it bigger. Right, but if I mean, it, at least that's how I see it. Indeed, you know. but if things get heated, yeah, and it looks like it's going somewhere nasty, and the name calling begins, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I've got to get away mm -hmm. because it, I don't want to be ever in a situation again like that. Never, me too, me too, never. So, me too. that's that's don't freak out if we do have a fight and I walk away. I'm not going to do that i'm asking you to state when you feel you are also in the interest th of working it out i think it's a good idea for us to take a moment or two or i mean a moment i mean take some time take some time to think by ourselves without being you know barraged by each other's uh, uh fucking bullshit whatever's i just i just let's take a let's take a break from it and then come back try and be calm and, and walk through the thing, but but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna stand and fight with you. I will I not. You can I call me a coward. I don't you can call that. me anything you want. All those names, do it. But I will not do it again. Please stop asking. I mean, please, can you stop for the sake of this conversation? Well, I'm just saying I won't do it again. That's all. Why didn't she want him to keep talking about it <laughs> for the sake mm -hmm. of the conversation? Because she's recording. Yeah. It's very inconvenient it's just... of you. It's it's very un, it's very unsettling type of thing that might play at a, at a trial one day. So, please stop talking about this. Okay. 
Okay, great. Then let's take our space and let's not do this anymore because I'm really getting frustrated and I'm really, really, really sick of this. He's consistently right moving away from confrontation. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay? Okay? Stop. Why are you saying stop? May he's, he's I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe it. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, I'm then say goodbye. <laughs> I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me oh leave. Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop rushing me. Stop throwing me against the wall. I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me. How is he pushing, poking her? I don't understand that. I'm rushing you. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space. Whether you like it or not, I will take it. And you will take your space. But if you keep halting I'm not doing anything this to you. and continuing I'm with not the continuing rhetoric. It. I'm ble- begging you to stop. I don't. Okay, stop. I'm just. I'm stop. Stop. Now I have to go. Okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours. Okay? I'll give a, some kind of revelation makes you feel better. You know, I hope I do too. But uh, we'll just see when I get home. We'll just talk or we won't talk or we, you know, we'll finish this or we won't finish it. But this is not, well, Please this is not happiness. Stop. This is not. This Please is, stop doing this. Please, you're going so much. I'm gonna die at this age. I'm gonna fucking die. Oh my goodness! So much stress. Please stop. Please, I, I feel like I have heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please and, and stop doing, doing why, it. Please stop being so fucking mean. Why are you fucking with me? Bully, stop. Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation, fucking like normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. It would have been fine. It would just if we allowed ourselves to have fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me with this. You're killing me. You're, you're killing me. Oh my god. Killing me. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Wait for that on the witness stand. That's going to be great. Could you, uh, please, I want you to just go. I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, I think, thank you, Sean. I'm ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm ready. Wow. Mr. Depp, in the beginning, well, first of all, do you know where you are? He doesn't sound unreasonable. Nope. And it's, it's exact opposite. Of an abusive person. He's the like, only, we need space. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only clue that I have is that um, Sean is being called. I, I called Sean and said to drive her home. Or I believe it was probably at Sweetser. So then she could drive back. He would drive her back to um, <clears throat> downtown. And I was three uh, with a, a, she didn't seem in any shape to drive to me. And earlier in the clip, there was a reference to a bloodbath. What does that mean in the context of that conversation? I, I don't know. Again, it, it, it seems like some word that, that was uh, it became Jackson, part Your of Honor, the, he, he said he doesn't know. All right, I'll sustain Jackson. Next, next question. Mr. Depp, at the end of the day on Thursday, 
uh, Mr. Rottenborn played an audio recording for you where you were heard saying you were going to hurt yourself. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. And I'm not going to play that audio recording again. It, it seemed upsetting to you, but I do want to ask you a couple questions about that. Okay. Sure. Um, could you please tell the jury when that recording is, is from? Uh, the recording is from um, July of 2016. This was um, a couple of months, a few months after the, uh, uh, the restraining order had been put on me. I had been on tour uh, through Europe and then coming through the States, I, I got messages from Christian Carino, who was both of our former agent, um, saying that Ms. Heard wanted to meet with me in San Francisco because we had a, one of our last dates on the tour was San Francisco. And I was confused as to why Ms. Heard wanted to meet with me, especially since I was under a court order not to come within, I don't know, 100, 200 feet or something for, of her. Um, so at first I, I said- I, Objection, Your Honor. The question was simply, do you remember when that was from? Yes, yeah, uh, Okay. So where were you when that recording was taken? <laughs> there you go. There you go, nailed it. There you go. <laughs> that was in San Francisco at a hotel room. Uh, Follow so the cues we of the client. Hotel room so we, we could finish the discussion that she wanted to have with me. And how did that discussion go? Not particularly well. I was quite confused as to why I had been summoned to her. Um, at that point, since all the news was uh, all the news was just about the fact that I had allegedly uh, done all these horrible things to her, and um, so I was talked into going there. I went and met with her in hopes that she would retract um, her. lies that the world was now fed had been fed um, say lie every time you can and in no way was she uh, ready to do that and i couldn't understand why i was there every everything had been taken from me um my children couldn't escape the fact that uh, uh, all this had gone down so Actually, i was Your Honor, the question was how did the discussion go he was talking about his children yes. I'm way beyond the scope. Just talking. Uh, sir, just wait for the objection. Okay. I think he's describing the context around that conversation. Right. It's way beyond the scope of the question. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Can you describe the context around the conversation? Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Beck, ask more. Why were, why were you there? Threatening to hurt yourself in that audio recording. In fact, I wasn't threatening to hurt myself. I thought that Ms. Hurd had brought me to uh, San Francisco at that point. It was clear she was <clears throat> under false pretenses. I don't know what she was after. So I, I had a, a, a knife in my pocket and I just took the knife out and I said, here, cut me. That's, that's what you wanna do. Ultimately, you've taken everything. You want my blood, take it. Have my blood. Classic dramatic and Johnny. She said, no, no. And then I said, look, if, 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 if you don't, if you're not going to take it, you want it. I know you want it. That's all I've got left. Take it. If she wasn't going to do it, I would have done it. Because that's psychologically, emotionally where I was. I was at the end. I was broken. Not only had I had to deal with everything from coming in from, you know, arrows from all over the world. Sorry about the but crinkling guys. I don't know what she was trying to do. 
So I just thought the only answer is here. Cut me. Take my blood. That's all. That's all I've got left to give you. That was my fault. Um, and it, obviously, there was no threat to Ms. Heard with that knife. It was about spilling my blood because I thought that's what she, the only thing she didn't have at that point. And I was, uh, I was, I was broken and uh, really just at the end, just at the end. I couldn't take it anymore. It's, uh, I thought, it, I mean, everybody, I know that that's his job, but I, that, that was quite a cruel. Objection, uh, Your Honor, we're well beyond yeah, the scope. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Um, finally, I'd like to play a portion of Plaintiff's Exhibit 357, specifically the portions at 18 minutes, 43 seconds through 21 minutes, 46 seconds. 357, is that correct? 357, yes. All right, so is this going to be another one where it's going to be an A, or is this going to be all that's going to be offered? Um, why don't we go with A to We're be safe? We're going with A. Okay, could you give me the numbers again <laughs> just so I can have it for the record? What, what are you going to play? Um, it is um, 357 beginning at 18 minutes, 43 seconds through 21 minutes, 46 seconds. All right, any objection to 357A? Our 357A in evidence. It's been going on too long, Albert, and we just gotta stop this. Just gotta stop it. I don't know how to get my um, reputation back. We write a letter together. Is that me? Saying that we're gonna take this out of the public eye. Saying that we're gonna try and work this out on our, on our own. Saying that the media has created such a fucking hateful storm that it's sickening that we love each other and that we want to make sure each other is okay. Have we had fights in the past? Have we had this or whatever? Fuck it, they already know all that shit. Don't matter. Here's the deal. No, oh, it matters. It made, I, I have been, I have you have no idea. I don't have credibility. It's been taken from. I mean, and done so in a dishonest way. You know. Time mute next time. The abuse. The abuse. Got it. We've got to deal with that. Yeah. We've got to deal with that. Any way of my credit is my credibility. You know what? I. Why did you put that out there? I did not. Force me to by going on the offense. I didn't force you to. The beginning. I promise. Look up the timeline to these things. Everything is. Forget it. Forget it. You don't believe what I say. You don't believe what I say. But I. I did not. I did not choose this. Every step of the way has been an offense. I did not put this anywhere. I didn't. Let me talk to the fucking team. I did not. I.O. called the cops. You told I.O. to call the cops. I did not call the cops and I did not give them any statement when they came. I've been trying to protect you. I you told I.O. to call the cops. When? When? You, while, it, while it was happening? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because the last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life and I thought you would do it on accident. And I told you that. I said, oh my God, I thought the first time. Amber, I, I lost a fucking finger, man. Come on. I had a fucking, I had a fucking, a mineral can, a jar of can of mineral spirits thrown in my nose. I used to tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny, that I, Johnny, that, man, I'm a victim of domestic violence. And I know it's a fair fight. Believe how many people believe or side with you. Wow. It doesn't matter if it's a fair, fair, fair fight. My ass. It, 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 exactly. Because you're... Let it play. Mr. Depp, when did you have the conversation reflected in this recording? With mm. this Should have played it out. 
I, I don't recall exactly when it was. What's your best estimate? My best estimate is that it was um, before, long before the, a while, quite a while before the meeting in San Francisco in July. <laughs> Excuse me. How far after May 21st, 2016, do you think that conversation was? I'm asking for his best estimate. I'll allow it if you can answer this one. Which is speculation, but. Could you ask it again? I was distracted. How long after May 21st, 2016, do you believe that conversation took place? I would, I would say that it was uh, not too far, maybe a couple of months. It was far enough to where the, um, the world media uh, was already bombarding me. So um, it, was, it, it was an attempt to try to make all the... All right, I'll sustain the next question. What are you referring to when you said you and Ms. Hurd will write a letter together? I was trying to make a peaceful settlement. And what are you referring to when you say you lost a finger? A very large bottle of vodka severing my index, uh, my middle finger in Australia. And what were you referring to when you said a can of mineral spirits was thrown at your nose? One of the uh, arguments on the island where Ms. Hurd had uh, been howling at me with some argument and um, she picked up a can of uh, mineral spirits about yay big and uh, heaved it at me and uh, it, it uh, struck me on the bridge of the nose and the right there you know the forehead and what did you say in response when miss heard said tell the world johnny tell them johnny depp i johnny depp a man i'm a victim to of domestic violence i said yes i am i have nothing further your honor so you can have a seat next nice week. finish attorney please <clears throat> there you go really nice finish all right your next yep. witness man that mm -hmm. that ben recording King. that recording Somebody was really bad for amber heard uh, why well, nick it was almost as if she was recording it or something please tell them it was mutual tell them it was the same they won't believe you though should have let her finish saying because you're a man just let him let her finish out that statement. You know, you probably shouldn't do that, petting your client on the back and that type of thing, but it's hard not to whenever you, you think your client's done a really good job in a tough situation. I don't know that it's so bad. I think it's okay yeah. for like the jury to see that you think he, you know, he held mm -hmm. up well. Yeah, I, I do it. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, you know, if you actually give a shit about your client, which normally I do. So. Be Stephen Duders, who this guy is. Okay, sir. All right, and good afternoon, Mr. King. Good afternoon. 
Oh. Would you please state your full name for the record? Ben King. And Mr. King, uh, can you briefly tell us where you're, where you're from? London, central London. Couldn't you tell me? And can you tell us a little bit about your background? What's your Mate occupation? would mean he was from Australia. House manager, think, personal assistant presently with a, an individual Governor. who also lives in Central Governor. London. Okay. Can you lean into the microphone a little bit yeah, more? Yeah, sure. So, there we go. Yeah. Right. Say no more. Uh, no, did you say you're a house manager? That's right. Personal assistant, house manager. And can you just tell boy. those of us in the courtroom who aren't familiar, um, what does that mean? Uh, I work for, uh, presently for a, a gentleman who's in the entertainment industry who, um, and I manage his property, a large apartment in central London, take care of the daily needs and running of that oversight of the staff and traveling with him when needed and things like that. Well, leather. For How long have you been in this occupation? Ooh, um, since about 1991, I started in private services, if you like. Um, in house management, in butlering, in in all that that stuff. Uh, typically based around London. Correct. I started work in in London. Was my first fluffing on occasion. Palace, yeah. funnily enough. As you do. Um, for four years, and then I continued in different positions, full time and and uh, self employed, freelance capacity, and for many years as well. Just generally, can you tell us, and without getting into any specifics, but what, what type of people would you say you, you did provide these services for? Generally high we net worth right people, uh, individuals or families, residents. Hey Joe, we're in control now. Oh, we can do literally, are you familiar with we can do literally anything we want. Yet. Yes, I am. No, and how are I you only found out that, that Nick was doing this because I saw Jack Vesobic uh, tweeted it out about work, it. So. Uh, oh, Devin. wow. It's pretty cool. Just kidding. <laughs> a name drop. And oh, yeah. a couple of yeah. times. I didn't want to do it in front of Nick's so headwind as well. Okay. And can you briefly just explain to the jury how it came to be that you were working for Mr. Depp? Sure. Um, yes, I. Uh, at that point, I was working in a freelance, self-employed capacity. Uh, I was. A lot of my jobs came through friends of friends. You know, personal recommendations, etc. And uh, I was asked by a friend of a friend on this occasion, would I be available a to go and manage a property where Mr. Depp was going to be staying for a, about a month in central London? Was I available? Would I be willing to do it? And I was available at that point. And so I said, yes, I'll, yeah, absolutely. And just to make sure we're on the same page, what time frame are we talking about here? That was August um, 2014. Okay. And did you, in fact, end up working uh, for Mr. Depp in that time frame? I did, yes. Now, just to clarify, uh, were you employed by Mr. Depp? No. So, so who was your employer? Uh, I was paid through a, a large hotel, which was close by to the house, who also, uh, they, they provided the housekeeper who was working with us for that month as well. So I was paid through them. Can you just generally explain to us what kind of work you were doing uh, for Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd in this time frame? Sure, yeah, it was the setup of the house basically. Um, sorry, setting up the house initially, which, which meant ahead of the principals arriving, uh, which meant making sure all the linens were in place for the bedrooms. It was, it was a sizable property and just organizing everything ahead of their arrival. Once they arrived, it was Damn, the nice back. property, the oversight of it mm. and the day-to-day -day running some service, you know, like butler service and managing the housekeeper day-to-day -day through that whole month. And when you refer to the principals, who are you referring to? Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Uh, where exactly were you working in London at this point? Uh, just kind of describe for us the house. I guess. This house, this was in Mayfair. It was a large townhouse in an old building, but it was very contemporary inside, uh, modern, uh, furnished, very modern sort of way. Um, quite spacious, maybe four or five bedrooms, I think. A, a small indoor pool, a small gym. Uh, quite an open plan layout throughout the house. 
Um, and how long, how long were they there? For the month, essentially, yes. Okay. Can you tell us just generally what hours you would typically work in a day while you were working for them in London in this time frame? Yeah, um, approximately it depended on what was going on, but I mean, generally seven or eight in the morning till seven or eight in the evening. Typically, there was a chef employed as well. Russell, brilliant chef. He, um, he, he tended to stay after I left in the evening. He would cook dinner, serve dinner, and thankfully cleaned up after dinner. So I, I could leave sort of early to mid evening, usually most days, unless we had guests, sorry, unless there were guests or other things going on. During your time managing the house for uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd uh, in, in 2014, did you have occasion to observe the interactions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How often? Most daily, I would say. Pretty much most days through that period. And did you yourself interact with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes, also daily, I would say. Which of them would you say, or did you see one of them more often than the other? Ms. Heard was there, Mr. Depp was, um, the reason I think they rented the house was because Mr. Depp was working at a studio. He was, I think it was Mordecai, the movie. So Ms. Heard was there at the house most of the days. Mr. Depp often went to work and came back later on in that evening, that day. Yeah. Uh, how would you generally describe the, the interactions that you observed between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? Initially, very sort of loving towards each other, you know, nice couple. Um, Mr. Depp was always a gentleman and, and keen to make sure Miss Heard was taken care of, anything she needed, often pour a glass of wine for her. Um, God, I want an English nice, butler. You know, pleasant. I do too. Isn't that cool? Oh, yes. I, I had one for a week, but he's not. With the couple. How, how did you get along with them both? I think very well. Um, very overrated. Yeah, I, they were really open to me, and I mean, my background is quite formal, so it was it was quite an informal setting. It was I was able. The to typing is a keyboard on the stream, really guys. It's not us. Miss Heard, especially, it yeah, really helpful to get. I mean, I actually was typing on the screen. But let's the time they wanted dinner, yeah. you know, basic stuff like that, or anything. It was it was good interaction all the time with the both of them. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned wine. Uh, can you tell us uh, to what extent did you observe either of them consume alcohol over the course of these four weeks? Sure. Um, before I, when I started that job or when I was taking that job on, I I was told I think by Mr. Depp's assistant that he was. Oh, sorry. Can you answer without telling what you were told? I w was made aware that Mr. Depp was. Same Could you put your microphone okay. on? So, same objection. He's explaining what he was been told. Now he just said I was informed. I don't think it's offered for the truth, Your Honor. I okay. think it's just offered for to, his, to, to explain his, his state own of mind. Um, behavior towards the couple. State of mind. State of mind. State of mind. Can we approach? Okay. Again, that tricky offered for the truth of the matter hearsay is then requirements. What was it being offered for, counselor? God, he was, it was. He was not offering. He was not saying what was happen, happening to say that what was told to him was true. He was saying what was told to him to explain why he right. believed or did something. Why? What his impression was of the couple, of their relationship. But counsel should be prepared to rebut a hearsay objection with not offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Right. We're asserting it for this reason. You shouldn't have yep. to play 20 questions. Just You don't please. need a sidebar. You don't need anything. It's just, it's yeah. back and forth. Two right, seconds. So, so and you're like, King, not offered for the, the conversation. Next, yeah. people are bitching about um, my uh, microphone general, being too loud. There's, I don't think anything I, I can do. No, I got you turned down. And, and what you personally witnessed. Sure. I knew you'd be there for me. Um, I didn't see Mr. Hub, Mr. Depp uh, consume any alcohol that, during that time in London. Um, I, I there was a large consignment of wine that had been delivered to the house at the start. Like because he's it, having the best time. In cases his life. that I had to store, I had to find a place to store. And generally speaking, on a day-to-day, -day, 
about one or two bottles of red wine were consumed per day. I think that's fair to say. Did you ever observe Mr. Depp drink any of the wine? No, I didn't. Did you ever observe Ms. Hurd drink any of the wine? Yes, I did. Regularly? Daily. Now, I think you already testified that you observed interactions with, with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, and you generally found them to be friendly. Is that fair? Very much so, yes. Um, were there any exceptions to that? Towards me? Oh. I'll rephrase. Okay. Did you ever observe any arguments between the two? Yes, I did. I'll allow it this time. Go ahead. That's not a leading question. You can answer. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. OK, and can you describe for us the arguments that you observed? I can describe two of them, um, certainly. Uh, there were a few arguments on that during that month. Let's just start with those two. OK. Uh, the first one I remember was a, an evening. Actually, they were both the ones I recall were, and I was close to, were evenings. Uh, first particular evening, the couple were due to go out for dinner, I, I guess. Um, I know the car was waiting in the in the little courtyard there, ready for them to go, and security were waiting to, to take them. I was waiting to see them out into the car, I was at the foot of the, the, on the ground level, ground floor level, to uh, wait to see them out, essentially. And He's I got heard, literally perfect hair. Uh, I was misheard shouting upstairs in the master suite where they were getting ready to, to leave. I heard her shout something, I don't recall what, you know, I was in the vicinity, I wasn't really there to listen. And um, I heard footsteps, loud footsteps sort of going across, a, a, there's a, like a corridor, if you like, at the top of those stairs that went around the master suite. Uh, loud footsteps and then more footsteps following, more shouting. And that, that sort of went on for some time. I mean, I, I knew that they, what time they needed to leave. I don't recall what time that was, but they, I knew they need, they were supposed to have left already. And it, it went on for a bit. Do you recall how that first uh, fight or argument resolved? No, not necessarily. I mean, I know that they left eventually, albeit late. Uh, I, I don't know how it, it really resolved. As I, as I made myself busy, but not going too far away from the door to make sure I saw them out. All right, and then what about the second argument that you mentioned? Second one, I was pretty much in the same vicinity, the same room on the ground floor. Uh, again, I, the couple were in the, the TV room, I think, which was off the main sitting room early evening, and I was going about my early evening duties, replenishing drinks close by, um, you know, lighting the fire, lighting candles, whatever it might have been. I was close enough to to hear Miss Hurd say, "Why did you take your hand away from me, Johnny? Don't you don't you love me anymore?" Like, not in a playful way, I might add. Um, I love that. <laughs> of course, I misunderstood. Yeah, of Stereotype of British. It kind of launched from that point. <laughs> And at one point, Mr. Depp got up and went to the bathroom or went upstairs and I was sort of scuttling around out of the way because I you know, wasn't there listening. I was just there doing my stuff in and around them. Yeah, it was, it was a strange sort of banal way to start an argument. But... How would you describe Miss Hurd's tone when she said, um, why did you take your hand away, Johnny? Accusatory, spoiled teenage child, <laughs> maybe, is that fair? Is that pretty, fair? You know, not playfully, let's put it that way, more angrily. Um, over the course of the four weeks in August and September 2014, when you were working with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd in London, yes. did you ever observe any physical violence of any kind between the two of them? No, I didn't. Did you ever observe any injuries on either one of them? No, neither of them. Okay. After those four weeks, um, that's when she had that burn. Mr. Depp or Ms. Hurd again? I did a couple of occasions. The following year was the first one. The following spring. Okay, and where was that? In Australia. 
in Australia. And what is it, uh, was it unusual for you to be in Australia? In Australia maybe, but not unusual for me to travel with, for clients from my assignments to wherever it was needed. Okay. Um, how, how exactly did it come about that you were in Australia with Mr. Depp and Mr. Hurd? Um, towards the end of the London visit, uh, Mr. Depp had kindly said, we, you know, thanks so much for looking after us. We really like you. Maybe if you're free next year and we can arrange it, we can make it happen. Perhaps you'll be able to come to Australia with us. I've got a film, Pirates 5. So I said, great, I'd love to, you know, obviously. I was freelance at the time, so it was going to be about four months work. I think it was builder. So I thought, yes, I wouldn't mind some of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, where in Australia were you staying? There's a Gold Coast. Yeah. It's all Brisbane area. Um, Brisbane was the main airport. So it's about an hour's drive south of Brisbane. And do you recall when you arrived? I arrived on February the 4th. I know I flew on that day. Okay. How did your job responsibilities in Australia compare to your job responsibilities uh, in London? Much the same, just on a bigger scale. The house was larger. There was a, a bit more set up to do. Uh, but essentially the same oversight of the house you know, responsible for it during the, the whole. The whole wow. Project. I have somebody come and set and your house up for you. Seriously. No. That would be cool. Who were you employed by? <laughs> uh, essentially by Disney, the production company affiliated with Disney who were making the movie. Uh, I think their name was yeah, Herschel. Like really was the production how neat company. He is. He's like a, right? a mannequin. He's way low. You're way low, brother. I'm turning, I'm turning him up. I'm turning him up. February 4th. <laughs> Damn it, Ty. And this herd. When did they arrive? Yeah. Uh, the setup for me, for us, was about a few weeks. I think they, they, they arrived towards the end of February 2015. And between your arrival and their arrival, what had you been doing? Just setting up the house. I lived on site. Uh, there was a guest house on site, a two bedroom, single story guest house that I stayed in for those first couple of weeks, uh, setting up the house and just getting everything ready during that time. And then I moved out to apartments, which we all had. We, I mean, a lot of the crew, uh, the chef had an apartment. We all had apartments about a 30 minute drive south of, south of the house. And so we're talking about this house in Australia. Um, so yes. can you kind of describe that property to us? Yes, it was a large house um, on a, a few acres of land. Um, a three-story house, five bedrooms, with uh, two or three buildings on within the grounds as well. Um, a good-sized house, beautiful house, beautiful location. How many entrances would you say it had? Entrances, many. I mean, many on, certainly on the lower ground level out to the garden. Um, 42. On the first or on the main floor level, there were many entrances. I mean, every room in that house had a balcony at least. Um, every room on the lower ground floor had, had a sliding door or a door out. The utility room, the garage, the the garage gym the, Always the conservatory garage, everything uh obviously the front the door. vestibule <laughs> many on the main level the large glass sliding doors out to the pool area which had a gazebo and and the steps down to the to the ground no british How person should ever okay, and once mr depp and Miss heard arrived to stay at this house um brits should always be the employable just because of the way they sound staying in the house no in mm -hmm. Was yeah. anybody else staying on the grounds? On the property, yes. I mean, there was a couple there, caretaking care couple, uh, Sean and his wife, Sandra, who worked for the, the owner of the house. They lived on, on site essentially all the time. They were there pretty much throughout. Um, and their house was, whatever, a couple of hundred yards away from the main house. Um, and yes, security were there also. All right, sticking with the caretaker just briefly, um, about how long would it take, would you estimate it would take to walk from the main house to the caretaker's house? 
under five minutes. I mean, yeah, no more than five minutes. Okay. And then you mentioned security. What was the security set up? Security was set up um, by Jerry Judge. They they were employed. They they stayed in the grounds for the duration. They didn't come into the house. They had a little sort of shack where round by the perimeter wall, where they would do their start their patrols from, walk around the grounds of around the, the exterior of the house at certain times of the day, write their reports and go back and stay in their their shack. And how many security guards would be on site at any particular time? I think one in the day and one in the night. So they did sort of twelve hours about as I remember it. But it was 24 seven? Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, do you know whether those were were local employees or were they regularly employed? I believe they were they were Australian, yes. Okay. Now I, I think you said you were not on the property 24 seven, right? You had a, an apartment elsewhere? Correct. Yeah, I, I kept the same hours as I did in London, essentially, you know, Monday to Friday, nine to five, not quite, but seven, eight a.m. till evening, till everything was set up and I could leave. Okay. And did you have an opportunity when you were in Australia um, to observe Mr. Depp and Ms. Turd's interactions with each other? Yes, of course. And how would you describe them? Uh, initially, very good. You know, like yes, in London, of course. it seemed very pleasant towards each other. Did you observe any arguments? Then she chopped his finger off. I got several. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about those? Um, yes, a similar pattern, it seemed to London arguments. Uh, one in particular was very similar to the, the second one in London, uh, started in a in the TV room, funnily enough, um, loud, loud voices, and uh, Mr. Depp leaving the room, shutting the door, going to another room to play his guitar or you know, to a bathroom, whatever. Um, and Miss Heard closely following and opening the door or certainly rapping on the door. By the way, tea room is den to you Americans. Oh, I give us an estimate. Um, about what was it, Texans? I think you observed in this time frame, approximately. Several. I mean, we were there for several months, so certainly many more than in London. Did you observe any alcohol consumption in Australia by either of them? It's Australia. Yes, again, oh. Ms. Hurst, Australia. Um, I was again. My response, part of my responsibilities, was to provision the house and have everything set up for that. So I. I, yeah, I want someone to provision and set up my house for Miss Heard, which she consumed, you know, the same same amount as in London, I think. And what amount Generally is that? speaking, one or two bottles. Mega cups. Okay. Have you, you ever heard of a mega uh, pint of wine? Mr. Depp, start any arguments with Miss Heard? No. Oh, so, so hold on, Jeff. No. Sorry. Yeah, could you put your mic? There we go. Leading objection, leading. I'll sustain this leading. Okay. That was not leading. Good question. Um, it was, but so what? Develop the testimony. I mean, do you remember anything about uh, Friday, March sixth, twenty fifteen? How often did they argue? <laughs> it was a, essentially a normal Friday, if you like, um, end of the week. Yay! Um, <laughs> nothing extraordinary about that day. Yay! Did you come into the, into work that day? Yes. Yeah, I was there. Okay. Um, do you recall about what time you would have left the house uh, on that date? I remember taking a photo of a, of a beautiful sunset over the pool. The sun would set over the pool and the, the creek. I took a photo of that around early evening. So 6.37, I would think I wouldn't have left much later than that. Was Mr. Depp there when you left? I don't think so. I think Mr. Depp was at the studio still. On that day, I can't remember sort of seeing him to say goodbye. That would, you know, have a good weekend. How about Miss Heard? Do you recall if she was there when you left? Yes, she was. Okay. Did anything unusual happen that weekend? But yeah, it, I would say something pretty unusual happened. Can you tell us about that? I should say. I say. Yeah, I can. Foundation. 
All right, foundation. He's laying the foundation. foundation. At some point, did you become aware that something had happened uh, between yes, Mr. Depp and Mr. Extended call for hearsay. All right. I'll sustain. What? Check. What? All right. Turn what was the hearsay? <laughs> maybe maybe he was told rather than witnessing. Correct, maybe someone told him something rather than him witnessing. Uh, I think we can. I have a, I have a little bit more, Your Honor. So I think maybe maybe they know if he witnessed it. What the hell? Let's go ahead and take our afternoon fifteen minute break, ladies and gentlemen. Again, do not talk about the case. Were they planning on introducing hearsay? They didn't expect a hearsay objection. If he started saying, "Well, Johnny told me," I mean, what was it? What was the game plan there? Or else he witnessed stuff, and if he witnessed it, then there's not a hearsay problem. Right. So right, Your Honor, shouldn't you wait for like a question that? Would draw a hearsay objection. They have used uh, calling for hearsay multiple times to mixed results. Uh, welcome to the stream, the Mr. Andrew. Know about hear Here. Well, Never mind. Welcome, Mr. Andrew Bronca and Mr. Uh, Robert Barnes. How are you guys doing? Hey, Robert. Hey, how you hey, doing, hey, man? Hey, hey, Robert makes hey. t-shirts look fashionable. Jesus, how do you do it, Robert? Good, good. This is uh, one of uh, Talix's memes. That's me on uh, Lincoln statutes. Nice. <laughs> Here, let me let me blow us up since the court's not doing anything. I do like this British guy. Make you know, him the, like, uh, make oh, him yeah. solo. Oh. We all oh. want to see we all want to see Robert's t-shirt. Make him solo. Yeah, here, here we go. I'll, I'll bring him up. There you go. So that's my head. Right. That's my head. Very right there. nice. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Thanks to Talix, the meme master. It is great. Wait, so you're you're telling me you like you like the British guy, the guy who's like, Oh, I took a lovely, perfect picture of a sunset over the pond. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. Yeah, that's the British guy. Well, think about it. when you imagine in your head somebody who prepares houses, isn't it this guy? Like the oh, absolute yeah. picture. The absolute picture. Exactly. If you're gonna hire somebody, he's like, okay, I gotta get a couple of bottles of wine a day for Amber, maybe a bottle and some coke for uh, Johnny. So we got this all set up. It's Johnny, a different you know? kind of house setup, that's for sure. He yeah. couldn't have been more born for that role if his parents had named him Jeeves. I mean, exactly. come on. Agreed. <laughs> Hey, by the way, I I have to I have to agree with Nick on one thing. I think Amber's look is the best yet. Here we go. She's had. Here we go. Thank well, you. I, look, I, I ain't saying it's perfect. She still's got that. She still got that resting bitch face thing happening. But, but the sophisticated, cool look actually allows an alternate interpretation to the resting bitch face. You know. Yeah. But the problem was she tried to look very soft and almost innocent like in her last looks, but she had that you know that skull like. <laughs> right, like Skeletor. <laughs> Yeah, the skeletal look and the and you know and the fire coming out of her eyes every time Johnny spoke. Um, so, I'm just yeah. gonna say I agree with your agreement of me. That's that's a correct yeah, assessment. Yeah. So and, that was and, very and good. I'm take beating in the in, in the chat because of that. I'm apparently now simping. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are a simp. I'm correctly <laughs> assessing, but you are right, simping. Right, right. Right. Well, um, you know, I mean, yeah. she even got Elon Musk to simp for her for a while, so you got to give her yeah. some credit. I'm a good. I'm a good. No, look, she look. She, I was like, I, I love that question. It's like. So why were you attracted to her? And Johnny's like, um, well, you know, um, she was into all these all these mold movies and stuff. And I'm like, oh, come on, Johnny. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could have just said, I saw her in Rum Diary. And then that, you that, know, that's what's um, in it for me. She was a stunning woman and uh, for guys. She, he should have just said it? she had a unique set of skills that he admired. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> just the that, that, that would have been classic. <laughs> Earned over a lifetime. Uh, yeah. So, uh, exactly. Robert, I, I haven't gotten to talk to you during this trial. How do you uh, how do you wager it's going? What do you what are you thinking? What are your thoughts on this? You're a guy who's done high profile defamation stuff. So, well, a lot of these abuse cases too. I mean, I was shocked. I followed this then when it went through Britain, and the problem was, you know, the judge simped for Amber Heard and right. issued one of the looniest rulings given the evidence because all the same evidence we're seeing here, almost all of it came out then. And all you have to do is listen to the tapes and you recognize she's clearly I've done a lot of abuse representation, representing victims over 20 years. And she's the classic pattern of an abuser. He 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 wasn't at all. I mean, the number one filter I always used was, OK, if my client's accusing the guy of abuse, um, I'll find it in his history. I'll have plenty of because abusers just don't randomly abuse one, only one person. They abuse everybody. And uh, if I ever I had a couple, you know, it wasn't that common, but I had some clients who would come in and lie, uh, prospective clients, when I was like, oh, if I found the guy had no history, I knew she was likely the abuser. And women are just actually women are slightly more likely to engage in what is labeled abusive conduct than men are. The difference yeah. is when women engage in violence, like what Amber Heard talks about in the tape recorded conversation with Johnny Depp, it's not seen as as threatening because they're physically weaker. 
So, you know, I had a client I didn't know until the deposition that uh, now her, the husband. How many been, stories could start with that? Yeah, exactly. So I'm sitting there and, and she's getting deposed. And, and he's and so the uh, his lawyer is there and said, OK, well, at some point, did, did you take a butcher knife into the bathroom when he was in the shower? <laughs> And she was like, yeah. And, and did you pull it back and like do like a psycho routine with him? Yeah. Did, did, was that just to scare him a little? Yeah, yeah, just to scare him a little. It's like, okay, we're not going to win this case. Time to settle. <laughs> the, uh, Council, uh, break. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Break, break. I like some of these obje- – some of their objections. I mean, they, I don't know what you guys think. This has been mediocre lawyering. So I think Johnny uh, Depp's been the yes. victim. She's the abuser. I think he's got some proof issues. He's got some damage issues. In other words, how attenuated the damages are. Some of his texts are probably not the most ideal text, you know. I mean, I yeah, get but, wanting to fantasize certain things, but you know, ideally, you don't text, you know, how you want to. At this do. point, hasn't everybody literally that you're going to get on a jury sent obnoxious texts and, and stupid texts at some point in your life? I mean, well, this getting case, to a point where, you know, this case definitely comes down to jury selection. I think a normal jury, yeah. three to one, rules in his favor, but maybe not high on damages because there because of his other behavior there is an argument that he would have and he's not clear on whether he would have done a disney deal anyway on terms of a that Pirates was unfortunate i thought so. where he said no i just wouldn't i mean I was like, Johnny. you know yeah i gotta say robert robert i actually fell for your whole lizard brain perspective <laughs> and i've been pitching and i've been pitching that the lizard brain of the jury is going to be we love johnny we hate amber and this bitch has basically falsely assumed the mantle of the leader of the Me Too movement by claiming all this stuff. And she's actually harmed women by by basically being Jussie Smollett of the Me Too of the Me Too movement. And that they would punish, they would be looking to punish her in in an eight figure range, meaning more than ten million. And yeah, you're I think, telling me, I think, telling no, me I, I agree with all here. that. I say about seventy five percent random jury, seventy five percent chance. Johnny gets a $10 million plus verdict in his favor. She gets nothing. Uh, now, I don't think Johnny's they're going to go that high. I say it again. I think they should. I just don't think they will. Yeah. I mean, the, the his damages claims are just real attenuated, but there's no question that if they uh, dislike what she did, they'll hit her with something substantial. And since he's asking for a hundred, that makes 10 million seem reasonable. It's always, it's weird how that works, but. Well, he's he, asking for 50. She's asking for a hundred. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. She's the one asking for 100? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> the reasoning was because he asked for 50, so she should double. ask for twice as much. Right, that's right. that's a quote. Have any of you guys ever had a, a client like her? I, I've had one or two uh, that are as crazy, nuts, lo- just joking no, nuts. No, not ever. She's <laughs> she's mimicking him so much. It reminds me of like a very old Seinfeld episode where like Jerry got like Elaine a gift of like one hundred and eighty two dollars. So George got a gift of ninety one dollars. It's like, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah. Oh, completely. I mean, gee, I mean, if people are getting a crash course that women behave this way, I mean, most people that certain categories of women behave this way, that there are abusive women that the women are the abusers, that they run the... I mean, Johnny's great advantage is he's got this on tape, right? He's got all of her making, nobody's going to believe you, Johnny. You're such a coward, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, I had to fight you, John. I had to fight because you're, you know, all this stuff. And Johnny, to his credit, uh, uh, delivered on the stand. Now, I can tell you from focus groups in the past, like we did with Snipes and other words, jurors tend to disbelieve actors. So that's the only X factor. That they assume that anything, but the, the key is that he didn't get tripped up, and I didn't think he did anywhere. Other than on damages, I thought he weakened his claim. But other than on damages, I thought he, and and he obviously loves. When I saw uh, Nick tweet out, heard that that the rotten born, I thought he meant he heard something from this guy that's rotten. I was like, hold on a second, <laughs> no, he's referencing Amber Heard. And that the lawyers act. If your last name is Rottenborn as a lawyer, don't you commission? Don't you petition to change your last name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. So yeah, but I normal jury. This all comes down to jury selection. Normal jury. Yeah. Johnny wins, gets something, and in Johnny's view, just winning will be enough because that restores his reputation in Hollywood. Well, don't you think that's the whole process? I mean, the, the whole point of this is to air this out. Yeah, don't, don't you think and that? Johnny's I, I, ultimate I, I, revenge. In lieu of drowning, burning, and uh, necromancy. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Well, you got. But if you've already drowned and burned them, Robert, I'm just saying. You're, yeah, yeah, really exactly. Gonna hurt Does her the necromancy really matter at that stage? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, as, I as think. Somebody uh, who didn't. 
Oh, I was just going to say, I, I've been saying it uh, this whole time. I think I think this comes down to who the jury ends up liking. And Johnny Depp is imminently more likable than Amber Heard. Uh, he's true. objectively more likable than Amber Heard. You can see it in the, uh, the roles that he gets, his time in Hollywood, his reception, her lack of ability to secure new roles um, that don't have to do with physicality. Uh, and those seem to be waning as she ages. All of those things just show that Johnny Depp up until 2018 was more castable and more likable than Amber Heard. And that should translate directly to a jury. Um, the question is, do you get that? Do you get that random jury that ends up either liking her more or uh, buys into the hyper technical defamation ar argument? Like, are they a bunch of law nerds on the side? Right. And they're like, well, actually, you know, these aren't really defamatory statements. These are kind of opinion pieces. And it's really hard to show that these statements in particular cause the damage. And he can't bring in those other ones. And, and I think it's Johnny's team's job to let the jury know that they have permission to consider these other statements and all of the stuff that built up to these, uh, making this, making this case. But if they get that hyper technical, uh, jury, they could, they could be in real trouble. And if, if they get, gender, you know, hope, do we know the age gender demographics? Cause if I was Johnny, uh, lawyers, I would want, if I knew nothing else, I would want women over women that are 30, 40, 50. Uh, it, it would seem counterintuitive that you want women, but, Cougars. Uh, Yes, oh, absolutely. yes. Cougars that love Johnny Depp. That they, because they'll, they'll just they'll, they'll write whatever check he asks for. You know, well, exactly. and, and, the ones and that remember him from Twenty One Jump Street. That's what you're looking for. Yes, exactly, well, exactly. And 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 I don't I don't think she's gonna get the older female vote either. Um, oh no no the vote that she gets is the British judge vote. It's an it's an right, older man right. that's simping for her. Well, older older man, uh, maybe young women, maybe. But uh, I think young women will be bad just because it's like, remember, rape, like in sexual assault cases, the, the worst jurors for the prosecutors and the best jurors for a defense are the same profile as the so-called victim yeah, because they go yeah. through such great lengths to say this could never happen to me. They judge the yeah, woman harsher than they judge the man. And I think I, also I, other young women would see Amber Heard as exactly who she uh, is. What do you think about They're, men, though? I mean, OK, men are older men older. who simp for Amber is the problem. Right. Uh, that's this would be saying. my read. Yeah, yeah, because she isn't. She is a stunning woman. There's no. There's no way around that. Um, even yep. even though she's in her late thirties now, she's still a very very uh, striking lady. And, uh, and, and and Johnny has had some texts that explain certain skills she had. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, I had a, I had a very good looking female attorney one time actually threaten us with just going to trial and wearing a short skirt. And getting men on the jury that people would be surprised. I mean, John Edwards, yeah. great plaintiff's lawyer in North Carolina, he used to always pick women over 40, women between 40, and they would write him whatever check he wanted mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that people want to pretend that dynamic doesn't play. It absolutely oh, plays all. Plays. I mean, uh, you know, yes. I mean, I, I've actually counseled settling before when, when the. Yep. It'd be fun to be in that, uh, in the room to see what, if, if like, if there are men, the men that are, would be problematic jurors will be looking at Amber throughout the trial. That that's you know that would be yeah. something you'd be on the lookout for, um. Point. So the uh, but yeah, I mean she's clearly she's guilty as hell. She was always guilty as hell. He was always innocent. She I mean Johnny's got his problems, means, but abuse is no not one of them. With her expressions, I mean she just has an absolutely bitchy face, look on her face at all times. And you and can I'm tell sorry. she's she's always kind of ready to lose that temper and just whack you. Yeah, you know you can like, just honey, feel it. You're an actress. You you should be. Doing something different. Able to contain that. <laughs> yeah. She can't. No, no, no. Yeah. Can't. The, ang the contempt yep. um, is, 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 it, it's palpable. I mean, the truth is, if the elevator doors opened and she was in there, wouldn't you hesitate a moment before you? I would not walk in that there? elevator. <laughs> I wouldn't go not in. Not at all. I'll catch the next one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's that's our question, actually. Um, a, what they say, so crazier in the head, you know, better. You're you know, either going to. Well, you're either going to catch a, you're either going to catch some hands, or you're going to catch a charge. I mean, why? Especially at this point, I mean, she's she's that brand of person who it's like, wait, I I don't trust you at all. Uh, first of all, I don't trust myself to make it through this ride unscathed. Second of all, I don't I don't trust what comes after. I don't trust it. You don't look at me and and see not like my shirt and decide that I I did something to you. And I think that is starting to permeate into the minds of men around the country 
They're starting mm-hmm. to become uh, aware of these uh, these particular accusers because they're seeing these things over and over and they're not really seeing what they're claiming manifest. And they're having, I, I think guys are starting to be like, Hey, wait a minute. I, you know, I don't, I don't like this. And again, that's the, that's the big, big problem for her defense is that if, if women and, and women, especially on that same note, guys have to be wary of it. Women uh, get angry at it because the, many women have been abused. They've I mean, been in abusive relationship. These women, I mean, how do you be a man of a certain age and certain experience and you don't, you don't recognize the threat <laughs> that that women like this present. I mean, we've all stayed at hotels for conventions and conferences and stuff. And some of these women are around and you see them across the room. You're like, well, shit, I'm not walking to that side of the room. I, I don't, I don't want to engage think- in conversation. I don't want to have any contact with that person. They just look dangerous. And often they're very yeah. attractive, but well, you can tell they're, they're dangerous. This morning, this morning, you basically heard him testify that he found a younger version of his own mother. So I think on a subconscious <laughs> level, he was really looking for someone who was going to be kind of a bitch. It's yeah, like, well, and that that people tend to replay that. Or at in, least he didn't interpret those signs negatively. Initially. Well, I think it's two things. I think a lot of people, when they say they're in love, what they mean, they need to be loved by a particular personality type. And like yes. in all the abuse cases I dealt with, that's what was happening. They needed, they did, they weren't loved by a particular parent with a particular emotional pattern. And they kept trying to get that love by refining it over and over and over again. And what they called love was the need to be loved by someone who didn't, who should have. Uh, that's part one. Part two is you saw the first part that these kind of personalities, because they're driven by fear of abandonment, and other issues, they, when they're putting on the charm, um, this is true, like in reverse, when it's men, uh, abusive men, like they elevate, the, like everything's Madonna whore complex kind of structure. They elevate, and that elevation feels great. Like, I mean, like Johnny's described, I come home and she's taking off my boots and bringing my, my glass of wine. And do you need, I mean, that kind of particularly sort of traditional, conventional kind of approach. Uh, they're they're uber feminine in that style, and then you know then it flips. I mean, he, he did describe well. It's like well, one time I turned took my boots off by myself, and she was not happy. And then I that should have been the sign to hit the door. Yeah, <laughs> time to hit the road. She, oh, she's yeah. she's batshit insane. Mm. Say I'll be right back, honey. And get you get in the car, be gone. Speaking, uh, speaking of hitting the door, I got I got to head out. So just wanted to say, Nick, thanks for having me, you guys, gentlemen. It was great seeing you. Good logic, and yeah. There you go. Thanks. Good logic. Thanks, Nick. Not local. Joe. Joe. See you later, Joe. Joe. And then there were four. Oh, the, finally, I mean, we got rid of that guy. Yeah, oh my geez. goodness. Jeez. I, I, was, I was just, I was on, I was, I was on the edge that he was going to go off on the gaze. You know, the, uh, 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 uh Broncos one liners are becoming infamous. The, the law nerd clips guy. It's like half his law nerd clips are just an Andrew Bronco one line. I don't even know who that person is, but it's it's fine with me. <laughs> well, it, there was a good one earlier when you, they asked him, you know, did you get wine and beer? And you pointed out they were in Australia. You know, so that, that's, yeah. that's, that's... <laughs> did you see him drinking? Like, yeah. Exactly. On, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The, uh, did the British butler bringing them bottles and bottles of wine see them drinking? No. I, I just, no actually, I, I always left right after uncorking the bottle and pouring the glasses, but I, I never deemed it respectful to watch them Im- imbibe the beverage itself. <laughs> but of course, it would be like it's an in- intriguing way to introduce her alcoholism. To say, uh, how many bottles did you have to bring her? You know, well, about one yeah. to two a day. Oh, 72, you know, as you do. It really was a perfect sunset over the pond. I do like the way they always object when bad evidence is about to come in, which is a bad pattern. It's like, objection, Your Honor. Evidence is going to hurt us. Please, please exclude. (laughs) This is damaging to my case. It's the liar, liar objection. I worked really hard on this. (laughs) That's interesting. Only some people are sitting. I my microphone to turn this down. I don't know. I've got a Eddie. Well, yeah, but I think Amber's... hers looks creepy there. She, she looks like she's planning to stab somebody. You know? <laughs> well, that's the problem, right? Her face doesn't match her hairdo and her dress. Uh, what's well, the uh, what's that TV? Like... Oh, she looks like Handmaiden Tail or something. That super high waisted uh, yeah. skirt or whatever is not. It just yeah, I like and... the haircut though. The haircut is that kind of classy look, but the, yeah, the, the hair, Nazi, yeah, the Nazi youth look. <laughs> <laughs> Did hey, you listen, listen, show the floor. 
You have a seat. Your next question, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I like Johnny's tie today. Mr. Yeah. King, uh, yes. before we went on break, we were discussing uh, uh, Friday, March uh, 6th, 2015. Right. Um, after you left uh, the house that evening, when did you when did you next see Miss Hurd? Sunday the eighth. And where did you see Miss Hurd? At the house. What were your typical hours? Monday to Friday, from seven or eight a.m. till the end of play each evening, early evening usually. Why were you at the house that Sunday? I was called to the house by one of Mr. Depp's assistants. And about what time they needed to turn it to arrive at the house? Around two o'clock, two thirty. Who was there when you arrived? Um, Debbie Lloyd was there. David Kipper was there. Amber Heard was there. Jerry Judge was there. So this is like if the Bravo guy think, become I a butler. By now, probably everybody's familiar. But can you just very quickly say who those who those people are? Sure. I think in real life, this guy's got like a Brooklyn David accent. David <laughs> David exactly was, right. It's all a facade <laughs> for the job. Yep. Ms. Heard was Miss Heard, and <laughs> Jerry Judge was head of security. He stubs his toe, and suddenly he's got a Brooklyn accent. And when you arrived at the house uh, on Sunday, March eighth, twenty fifteen, uh, what did you do? I just popped up and went into the house. And did you observe anything when you went into the house? Yeah, I mean, initially I walked into the front door. Uh, initially I heard, rather than saw anything, I could hear pretty hysterical sobbing, crying, um, which sounded like misheard to me. I heard Jerry Judge's voice. There's a few steps as you go up into the house, so you can't immediately see um, what's going on. But so I went up the steps. I could see then Miss Heard over on the right hand side, over towards the TV room with Jerry Judge. David Kipper was in the kitchen area, which was pretty much directly ahead as you walk up the, those steps. And were you able to visually see Miss Heard? Yes. Not and you were able to hear her as well? Absolutely. How would you describe her demeanor? Hysterical, probably the best way to describe it. Um, crying Psychopathic. And more, 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 more satanic, really. Just, you know? just crying uncontrollably, I think it's fair to say. And how would you describe uh, Jerry Judge's demeanor when he was speaking with her? He was keeping her calm saying it's all right love it will be all right jerry was good like a you know, big heart jerry good guy he was he, he was calm uh, jerry was always calm is that british for gay that jerry was, was gay and what did you do next there's that um, i saw they were in, engaged across the, uh, away there so i went into the main kitchen area which as i said was I wonder what you're writing on our pad. Number one, Jews. Yeah, Number two, paper. gypsies. <laughs> Number three. And following that conversation, what did you do? <laughs> well, he told me that. Um, I think that one made the super cut. <laughs> All right. Uh, Your Honor, it's. Well, maybe we approach. Okay. This judge is. I mean, this judge is almost at coin flip status on objections. Um, it, it it seems to be related to the assertiveness of the objection reasoning or the objection defense. <laughs> the comparative assertiveness seems to win the day. For somebody to yell objection, this is an outrage. But but on these hearsay objections, I mean, many of these are hearsay, but they're the they're not going to prove the truth of the matter at all. They're right. they're talking about present sense impressions. And she's sustaining a lot of them. A lot of judges don't don't credit the truth of the matter asserted uh, response, and I, I don't they know don't why understand. That is. They, yeah, well, they no. frankly don't understand hearsay. They've grown up with hearsay being what the conventional understanding of it is. I've run into this yeah. multiple times. I've run into this in appeals courts. 
It's like, no, this has always been an, an exception here. Hearsay is something that's unreliable that's said outside of court for well, the truth of the matter. Well, that's why I always say, not for the truth of the matter asserted, we're asserting it for, you know, because if you don't get that that's in. If you can answer the question, what, yeah. what did you do next? So I spoke to David Kipper, who was in the kitchen area. Oh, that's not a real name. Rummaging through a bin. Um, David Kipper. He said he was... But, Mr. Depp had sustained an injury to his finger, one of his fingers, and he was looking for a, the <laughs> fingertip. That, looking for that it. Had, it looking for the finger, severed. as you do. Just, not the whole finger, just I, the tip. I said, I said, well, should I help you? you know, <laughs> if one would. And he said, yeah, that would be a good idea. I left him in the kitchen. He said there was a lot, lot more damage downstairs. So I, I went to, you know, we split up. He was left him in the kitchen. I went downstairs. To, to search. Uh, did, at some point, was Mr. Depp's fingertip found? Yes. Who found it? I did. And oh, where did you Nice find inflection. It? Downstairs in that the bar area, the um, the games room bar area. Oh, this is really dragging important. Dragging itself across the floor, so, trying to get away. Can you <laughs> walk us through? This is how, really how important, actually. It? Yes, so I walked down the stairs. Uh, I mean, there was a bit of damage down the steps. The big chunk had been taken out of the marble staircase. Um, on my way down, remnants of what looked like a plant pot or something around it smashed. Walking down into the bar, I could see the damage that Dr. Kipper had told me about. A broken ping pong table sort of collapsed onto the floor and lots of glass and broken glass and cans strewn around the bar area. And where exactly was the finger in the bar area? Directly below the bar. I mean, the bar was set up like a conventional bar uh, that stuck out from a wall and that with a marble top. Uh, there's a big chunk out of that as well, like on the staircase. Directly at the end of the bar, there was a scrunched up piece of kitchen paper, if you like, tissue, um, with lots of blood around it, on it. So I thought that was probably a pretty good place to look. And it, it was within that scrunched up piece of paper on the tiled floor at the end of the bar, the base of the bar by one of the bar stools. You think was he's going to be the property, featured speaker at the next the Butler convention? <laughs> yeah. Think. Yes, uh, a fair bit. Uh, on the floor around the area, there were puddles of what smelled like alcohol to me. There were seemed like several drinking glasses, a couple of bottles. One was a Stoliknaya vodka bottle. Um, and at the end of the bar, on the, as I said, there was a big chunk out of the bar itself, the bar marble top. Uh, at the end of that, the bar, there was plaster damage right at the end of the bar on the wall. Uh, behind the bar, the smashed and cracked mirror, there's a blue mirror that, that stretched that whole span of behind the bar. Like Lots of cans zone. again behind the bar on the floor, broken window at the end of the bar, and more plastered work damage on the wall above the sink. It was sort of a kitchenette bar, if you like, as well. Was that damage there when you set up the house? You Follow mentioned up. a bottle of vodka. Was the vodka bottle intact? Right. No. No, nothing was really intact. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the top of a bottle was like it had a label on it, which is how I knew it as a Stolich Naya bottle. It had that sort of squiggly S. Um, it's a bottle sort of, of yellow brandy that was top. shattered. It was horrible. There was a large chunk of a bottle, which I guess was the rest of that, and several other, I mean, lots of other broken glass around the area. After you found the fingertip in the bar area, what did you do next? Well, I gathered it up in that kitchen paper and sort of took it upstairs. I might have shouted up to David Kipper. I found it. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I walked back upstairs to the kitchen and put it, got a bag, you know, a little, um, little plastic bag, put the fingertip in there, set it on top of some ice in, in this plastic kitchen container and pretty much handed it over to David Kipper and Jerry Judge, I think at the time, who 
were keen to get it to the hospital quickly to see if it could be reattached. Do you recall about what time you found Mr. Depp's finger in the bar area? It was about an hour after I got there, so it would have been around 3.30, I would think, 3.20, 3.30. Because this guy's a butler, I believe this extraordinary memory. Now you've told us a little bit yes. about the state. I believe because he's got a British accent when you arrive. Yeah, that too. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you generally describe for us and maybe go level by level through the house um, what damage you observed? Sure. Do you want me to start at the lower ground floor in that bar area? I mean, I've described a lot of that. Sure, that's fine. It, it was pretty extensive down there. All that broken glass, the blood. There are a lot of blood drips across that floor it is a kind of cream colored tiled floor in that whole games area as i said the ping pong table was collapsed blood drips across the floor and around the the bar uh, and the Objection damage on the walls, too vivid. As I said, the plaster work at the end of the bar behind the bar and the, the chunk out of the marble top so on the ground, that was the predominant damage in that in that area, on that level. On the next floor, on the main floor where David Kipper was, in be it in the kitchen itself, again, a few broken glasses and cans on the floor, soda cans behind the kitchen island, the chef's kitchen island, liquid sort of puddles. Um, there was a sitting room with a couch <clears throat> on a cream colored couch, which had fair amount of blood drips on the cushions and that you know that was obvious the uh, tv which was directly in front of that wall mounted tv was cracked with it seemed like remnants of a coffee cup embedded in some of it and the rest was below looked like coffee splattered a cr behind and underneath the tv and on the floor as well uh, through there we'd set up an art studio if, um, so a lot of the art materials from that, you know, paintbrushes, paint, uh, various art materials were on the floor. A lot of paint on the floor, blood drips throughout that area as well, it's especially over the, it was a vast sort of wooden parquet floor. So there was a lot of oil paint and blood drips um, up to the staircase. In one of the bedrooms, there were two bedrooms off of, off of the main kitchen area. One of those bedrooms had um, blood drips on the duvet and a lamp had seemingly been broken. The, champ the shade was removed. Starting to sound like a piece of Ukrainian uh, propaganda. There you know, were a couple of lampshades in, that, in the art studio area um, on the floor. Uh, yeah, but that, that haunted look in his face as he's telling us. It's like he lived it. To the next level, there was... Oh, oh. Uh, so I assume all this damage was done by Amber? The wall yeah, apparently. And on the drips of the stairs going up, again, a cream color. You can just imagine Hillary Clinton like listening it. to this and nodding her head like, yeah, that's how you do it. Um, <laughs> Hillary, Hillary's <laughs> going amateur. <laughs> was the master. There's Why a whole analysis of Amber Heard and two bedrooms also up of there. Amber Heard as Gone Girl and how much um, she parallels the book and the movie. Outside mm. the master bedroom, there was damage. And one aspect is her bragging the, about. She knows how to fight outside well. Yeah. Wheel. Um, blood drips into the master. You go bedroom. after this guy on cross though. The bedroom floor. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that would, this would be a tough guy to cross. Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. you have to figure out yeah, something. Was, right. He's on the left. Yeah, wearing yeah. a on tie. I mean, what are they going to do? <laughs> you're not really a British butler, are you? <laughs> on, on each of them. Could you show us? Hold on. Not, let's not let's hear the that. testimony, guys. Uh, one of the bedrooms, or both of the bedrooms, I think, had blood on the duvet covers, um, and another lamp was broken. Mr. Depp's guitar was in one of those bedrooms, a bloodstained guitar. Um, his iPad was standing up on one of the beds in in one of those bedrooms that's i mean that's about the extent of it that's the damage on, on each it. level yeah Who, whose job was it to clean all that up oh, it was mine <laughs> it was mine my responsibility the house was essentially my responsibility 
So you were familiar, were you familiar with the damage generally throughout the house? I got a pretty good idea as I walked around and saw it all, yes. Did you observe any damaged phones? No. Uh, did you observe any damage to a wall where a phone might have been ripped off the wall? No. Yeah. Bleeding. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe the next one. Okay. <laughs> Was there any artwork in this house? Decorating the house? The owners had left their art in the house, yes. Uh, the, Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd had done some artwork themselves, yes. But yes, there were, there were some that came with the house, if you like. Focusing just on the artwork that came with the house, mm -hmm. um, did you observe any damage to any of that? No, nothing that I needed to re repair or replace. Certainly not. Thank goodness. Is there any other you damage see... that comes to mind? Just a lot of blood and a lot of repairs. The floor, as I said, was um, quite heavily with blood and paint. Yeah. And in, in terms of bodily fluids, it was just blood that you observed, no urine or anything else? Yes, absolutely. I'll sustain the strike for the answer from the record. No other damage. Does any other damage come to mind? No. Okay. Can we take a look at uh, defendant's exhibit 375, which I believe is already in evidence? And can we publish this to the jury? Okay. Yeah, most of that damage was done by Amber, although I'm sure Johnny threw a couple things here and there. Mr. King, are you familiar with the image that's oh, on the yes. screen in front of you? Uh, yes, that's one of the mirrors I was telling you about in the master bathroom. And so were you involved in cleaning any of this up? I cleaned both of those mirrors that at some point that, that evening, that night, yes. Were you able to tell what was used or what, what substance the... I guess what, what sort of the ink is that's used on the on the black writing there? That was the, the same um, oil paint that uh, was on the floor on the parquet floor downstairs and various other places it was the same uh, oil paint. All right, how about the red writing that says, call, Sar call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. Were you able to tell what was used to, to make that writing? Uh, lipstick, Action I believe. Foundation. Oh. Injection Foundation. He's testified that he was cleaning it up. Uh, I'll allow it. It's fine. Go ahead. It certainly seemed like lipstick to me, red lipstick. It was quite waxy. I remember taking that off. Um, it, it seemed like lipstick. Okay. We can take that down. That objection just highlighted that evidence. That's why you don't Mr. always King, object. How just long were you in the house on, uh, on that Sunday? Quite a long time. Um, it... it actually went into the early hours of Monday morning. So at least I got there around two in the afternoon of Sunday. I don't think I left there until two or three o'clock the next morning of the night. Oh. Over the course of the time that you were there that day, did you have any interactions with Ms. Hurd? Yes, I certainly did. Yes. Can you describe those for us, please? Yes, uh, not too much initially. She was very, as I said, quite hysterical and crying a lot. And Jerry Judge was taking care of, of her, keeping her calm. Uh, later in the evening, it was it was suggested that Miss Her go to a, a local hotel to to leave the house, go to a local hotel, which then became a suggestion that she go back to LA, and that's I think when I started interacting. Um, in terms of, at some point, I volunteered to, to travel with her to L.A. How did Miss Hurd respond to the suggestion that she leave, uh, Los An uh, leave for Los Angeles? She was resistant to both of those suggestions, uh, very resistant. She really didn't want to go and said, I can't leave, I can't leave. You know, it will be the end if I leave, um, those sorts of things. So it was just, it, it, these went, went over a few hours, um, those negotiations, if you like, uh, and eventually Ms. Heard agreed that I would fly with her. 
Man, and they should have worked on her. Fly with her. Demonstrative. On Monday, the she night. looked that's terrible, it. right? Yes, terrible. that's it. Yeah. It's those, just those it eyes look bad. like mean, crazy eyes. I mean, you when know this are, trial is coming. She's a professional actor, and you don't that. prepare not to look um, like that. Were you? She's like the. To be fair, have you seen her act? The, uh, <laughs> no, actually. Very close. In front but she's like the woman who shows up at the animal shelter every week for yet another puppy. You know what I mean? Yep. If you notice, and you don't really want to ask what happened to the last one. <laughs> no, but now I do want to know. She's obviously crying a lot. She's red eyes and. Uh, Dude, that is a terrible look. Good she's lord. She's looked like that. She's had that expression the whole trial. Oh, so what happened? Somebody to told her to day? stay serious, uh, and uh, they didn't realize her resting uh, face is resting bitch uh, face. Oh, right. So it's worse than Anderson Cooper. It Cooper's. was eventually agreed that I would yeah. fly with Miss Heard, so I. I had to at some point go back to my apartment, drive to my apartment to pick up my passport, which funnily enough, I hadn't brought with me. Um, and some clothes, you know, a, a bag to take. So I think I, I left the house early hours, as I said, two, three, may have been a bit later, AM. I drove back to my apartment, which was 30 minutes drive south, picked up those things. I mean, I didn't know what I was how long I was going to go for, but I knew I was traveling. So passport, quick shower, pick up a bag of clothes, and I drove back up to the house. Um, I I don't recall exactly what time I arrived there, but I know we had to leave. All the arrangements were being made by the travel agent, and Jerry Judge was liaising with them to make the flight arrangements, and which I believe was going mid mid to late morning. Um, so I think we had to leave the house around 7 or 8 a.m. that morning, Monday the 9th. And did you travel to the airport with Miss Heard? Yes, we, yes, we were driven. How would you describe her demeanor that morning? Um, calmed down a, a fair bit. Um, she was mostly on the phone, to be honest, for, for pretty much the whole of that car journey. To various people, one of which I believe was Mr. Depp. Do you recall her saying anything on the ride to the airport about what had happened the night prior? Nothing really mentioned in that as way of an explanation, no. What happened when you got to the airport, if anything? We were running a bit late, but uh, I, I remember that. Um, luckily, we were traveling first class, so the driver knew to, to pull up to a, a, a kind of VIP, for want of a better word, VIP check-in point. Um, and so the car got pretty close to where the desk was. Miss Herb was still on the phone. And so I, we'd sat there for a bit with the driver and, and Miss Heard was talking. I don't know who to at that point. And I was thinking, uh, we need to make this flight actually pretty soon because we were already running a bit late so i decided to go in maybe i can go in check in our bags ahead and then come back and get miss heard she should be finished by then which is what i did and did you eventually get on the plane eventually we did it was a close call to be honest once you were on the plane um did you have any conversations with Miss Heard? Yes, I mean, not not initially, which took some time in the bathroom. She was on the phone again to the point where the cabin crew had to sort of tap on the door and say, uh, we need to leave now. Everybody needs to sit down. And she did come to sit down, that, you know, after 10 or 15 minutes in there. And so eventually, and luckily, as I said, we were flying first class, which was lovely. She was in the window seat. like Lovely. Window seat. I had the aisle seat, and uh, finally we could both sit down. Oh, you know, it's just you know, resting bitch face. Um, Back to resting bitch face. It wasn't a great deal, to be honest. I did sort of say finally, so sort of what happened? You know, obviously referring to the house. Oh, I hope she told him. And I mean, she didn't give much explanation, if any. She did say. Um, Ben, have you ever been so angry with someone you just lost it with them? Um, There's uh, a confession. I sort of said, uh, no. 
actually. I'm pretty calm, you know. <laughs> Um, no, 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 I can't no, say I've ever done that. The no. that I hadn't. Um, I don't chop people's hands. I'm, I'm not psychotic, I'm sorry. With somebody, got so angry with someone, you just <laughs> lost it with them. And I said, no, unless you count the sort of time when I was 14 years old and I hit the light switch in my bedroom because I wasn't allowed out that night or something. <laughs> with a person, no. no. And that's pretty much the end of the conversation. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. How would you this is beautiful. When she asks those questions of you. To me, incredulous, would be fair to say. Surprised that I hadn't <laughs> lost it with somebody. Go ahead and chop someone's fingers off. <laughs> Does anything else stand out about that flight? It was fairly calm. After that, it was calm. But I mean, we were both exhausted. Um, I certainly was, and it, I think it's, I can't remember eating. You just slept was... the, the the flight um, until obviously we landed or were close to landing. And then I ran as fast. At any point, did you observe anything about Miss Heard physically on that flight? Yes, I did. It, Right toward just before we landed, I noticed some marks on her, on her arm, her left forearm. How would you describe those? Um, long, kind of uniform, evenly spaced, sort of long, thin marks. Yeah, you know. Very uniform, in fact. Track marks, you know. And when did you first notice those? On the plane towards coming into land, you know, we're gathering the stuff up. I, I noticed them. Sounds there. like self-harm. Mm -hmm. What did you do after you landed in Los Angeles? Once I'd fired up my phone um, on landing, uh, I, I saw the arrangements that we would be picked up by one of Mr. Depp's security personnel, who I, I think was Travis McGiven. McGiven? McGiven. Um, so I made contact with him and he met us in the place that had been arranged we walked through the you know the arrivals lounge and met him at the end of that got in the car with him and uh drove to the eastern columbia building and how did miss heard how would you describe miss heard's demeanor in los angeles yeah we're pretty calm i mean um She seemed, I mean, obviously a lot calmer from the house, but uh, she pleasant towards Travis, certainly in the car, obviously they knew each other. Um, she was, we, when we got to the building, she was kind enough to show me around the, the apartment I'd never been before. She showed me around the penthouse, a little tour. She wrote down some restaurants recommendations because uh, she knew I'd be staying a few days probably. So, and I, I don't really know LA that well. So she recommended a few restaurants. Um, I, and then I, I left, I said, if you need anything, as usual, as I always did, need anything, give me a shout. I'll be staying fairly close by. Just, just give me a call or a text. How long were you in LA? Uh, less than a week. I think I flew back to Australia on the 14th or 15th. So about five days, six days tops. And when you got back to Australia, what were you doing? Pretty much putting the house back together, um, repairing all the damage with the help of professional contractors, vendors um, I brought in and just getting the house back as it, as it was originally. At some point, did Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard return to Australia? Yes, they did. Um, were you there when they, when they returned? Yes. Did you observe them interacting with each other after they came back to Australia? Yes, yeah. And how would you describe their interactions? Again, initially, those first few days were certainly very pleasant, almost honeymoon-like, I would say. Um, it, it strolled around the grounds a bit and they seem seem fine with each other did you ever observe any arguments after they returned yes i mean many 
like several more. Yeah. And how would you describe those? Continued torture. Uh, not dissimilar to the London arguments in terms of the pattern of those, um, you know, the sort of provocation and the reaction that leave the room, Mr. Depp leaving the room, going to another room, playing his guitar, seem to follow the same pattern as that, um, as I witnessed those two times in London. All right. Nothing further. All right, cross-examination. Okay. Well, there we go. I mean, how perfect is this guy's testimony? Good it's way too... Good afternoon. I've never been um, mad in my entire life, so, actually. Oh, to understand your testimony, <laughs> that was epic. testimony that Amber and Mr. Depp arrived together in Australia in February of 2015? Initially, I together, I don't think so. I think Mr. Depp arrived ahead of Ms. Right, Heard, Mr. actually. Mr. Depp arrived first, correct? I think so, yeah. And isn't it true that Ms. Heard, Amber didn't arrive until March 5th? 2015 to Australia. Well, I can't remember the date she arrived, to be honest. But she could have arrived March 5th, 2015. Isn't that true? Objection. Foundation speculation. I'll allow it if you answer it. <laughs> Sorry. That, that lawyer looks like Ed so Norton. could have arrived on March 5th, Objector. 2015, correct? I'm sure. Possible, I suppose. And isn't it true then that you didn't see any arguments between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp before the injury that occurred to Mr. Depp's finger in Australia? Yeah. I saw them argue. You saw them yes. argue when they came mm -hmm. back, when they came back in April, correct? I certainly saw them argue in April and through most of the months they were there. Yes. But you but you don't remember, you can't recall any arguments in February or March of 2015 between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp, correct? Specific days? Not necessarily, no. Right, so that you don't know, you can't say that there were any arguments before you came to the house on March 8th, 2015, correct? I think there were, I mean, Excuse me, say that again? I think there were. But you don't even know when she arrived, correct? Specifically, that the day, uh, not necessarily, no. Okay. And you said when you arrived at the house on March 8th, um, when you eventually found the finger, it was wrapped in paper, is that right? Wrapped, I mean, it was loosely wrapped. The paper would open by that point that the blood had dried up and it was sitting in, in the sort of nest of this paper, yes. So like someone had put the finger in a piece of paper? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it was in that piece of paper. It was in a piece of paper, okay. So, but again, like someone had wrapped it up, is that right? I don't, I don't know. It was within that scrunched up piece of paper, kitchen okay. paper, tissue. So it was in kitchen paper, is that right? Well, tissue oh. paper, it was white with a lot of blood on it. So like a paper towel? Like a piece of kitchen towel. Uh, when kitchen you say kitchen paper, towel, paper, uh, paper our language is made, <laughs> even though we both speak English, I may stay a little different. It's like a paper towel? Um, yeah, like kitchen paper, kitchen towel. Yes, <laughs> okay. like a tissue. And was there that sort of paper towel in the, in the kitchen at the house at the time? Yes, in both areas, the kitchen and the, and the bar. Okay. Um, their theory is Johnny cut off his own finger, wrapped it up, brought um, it downstairs Australia and put it on the ground. So the English butler could, could, could find it. Before. Correct. I arrived on the 4th of February. And Mr. Depp arrived sometime after that. Is that That's right? really yeah. the, what they're going with? Did you see um, Marilyn Manson while you were there? No, I didn't. You don't know if Mr. Depp was with Marilyn Manson at, in early, late February, early March 2015? <laughs> Not bad to throw in Marilyn Manson. Speculation relevance. Everybody's crazy. He said he saw. He's crazy, Your Honor. Marilyn Manson's crazy. Day, Johnny so Depp associated with crazy people. I'll allow the question if you answer it. That's fine. Oh, Marilyn Manson didn't come to the house. I, and I didn't see him at any point. Do you know if Mr. Depp left to be with Marilyn Manson? I don't know. I didn't always know where he was going. If he was went out, it was either to work or security would go with. I wouldn't generally go. In fact, I don't think I went out with him at all okay. in Australia. And they were, you, you didn't go out with Mr. Depp at all when he was in Australia, correct? I don't recall it. I went to, I saw him on set once or twice. Yeah. So you don't know what Mr. Depp was doing in Australia unless he was at, unless you saw him at the house or on set. Is that right? I saw him at the house. Yes. Every day. But you don't know what he, Mr. Depp was doing when he left the house, correct? Generally going to work on Pirates of the Caribbean 5 film. Were you, yes. But were you with him? No, but the security with him, and I had to liaise with him for when he would go and when he would come back for the driver, etc. But you weren't there. You weren't there when Mr. Depp left the house, correct? Generally, I didn't go. Okay. Didn't leave the house with Mr. Depp on those days. No. And 
I just want to make sure, I want to be clear. There were, there were two kind of periods that Mr. Depp was in Australia in 2015, right? Sorry, say again. Mr. Depp was in Australia from sometime in February 2015 until about March 8th, March 9th, when he injured his finger. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. And then your, Mr. Depp left Australia too, correct? At some point he flew to LA, yes. And then Mr. Depp returned to Australia on April 21st, right? Okay, that sounds about that time. I don't know the specific date. I don't recall. And the filming of Pirates of the Caribbean 5 continued filming on April 21st, right? Objection. That Foundation is... speculation. I didn't. Uh, get... Oh, sorry. There's objection. You recall testifying to that in the UK? I'll open Which the objection bit, if you can answer it. That the filming of Pirates of the Caribbean 5 continued filming on April 21st, 2015. I wasn't involved in the filming schedule. I, I didn't know what when it resumed, to be honest. I knew Mr. Depp would come back to, to resume filming. For sure. You didn't live with Mr. Depp in his house in Australia, correct? Live with? Uh, no, I wasn't resident there. <clears throat> now, when you arrived at the house, you saw a significant amount of damage, correct? Yes, through the course of, yeah, after I arrived, yeah. Okay. And you were, you. the scene was chaos, correct? Chaos, I mean, there was a, a, a fair amount of damage. The house was wrecked? There was a lot of damage in the house, yes. And the house was not in a good state, correct? Asked and there was a lot of um, damage throughout the you house. You get to object first, and then if you have your objection, yeah. Mr. Mahas, objection. stand and it helps. Okay, I'll overrule the objection, go ahead. Next question. Okay. And um, there, you said there was glass on the floor, correct? In a few areas, mainly predominantly in the bar, yes, down in the lower ground floor, correct. Okay, and there was blood on the walls, correct? In various places, blood on the floor, blood on the walls. And there was blood on the walls throughout the three stories of the house, isn't that right? Um, no, I wouldn't say that was the extent of it. There were smears up the staircase going up to the master from the main level. There were smears and drips on the carpet. So there were smears from the master level up to the, up to the bedroom area? I mean, from, from the main level up to the bedroom area, is that right? Up to the third floor, yes. Like someone had walked from the main floor up to the bedroom floor, correct? There was blood going up the stair, up the steps, up on the staircase, and some on the walls, you know, smears where you might have done that. Yes. As if someone was walking from the main level up to the master bedroom, correct? Is that what the blood was like? But yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, Okay. Or down? I mean, up or down, but from the, main level to the, up, from the main level to the third floor, correct? Correct, yes. Um, and you said the sofas were damaged, is that right? One sofa in that sitting room, which was just off the kitchen, was quite an open plan thing. So off that, there was a sofa with a large TV on the wall mounted TV in front of that sofa. And yeah. the sofa was on the main level, correct? Correct, just by the, the main kitchen. Exactly. And where the sofa was damaged, was that with with what? Blood. Blood, okay. And the were, lights were damaged? Some lamps, a couple of lamps, yes. And there were bottles of alcohol in and out of the fridge, correct? Sorry, what do you mean? Did you see bottles of alcohol in, it, in and out of the fridge? Yes, um, I mean, there was, I, I don't, I, I don't you, completely understand what you mean. You there saw were, that, correct? There was alcohol bottled, yes. Okay. There was in, in the fridge. I, okay. I mean, there would have been a bottle of wine, I don't know. And, and the floors were ruined, correct? Ruined, I mean, there was a lot of damage on the floor, on the, down in the bar area and the staircase and on the main floor area on the wood, wooden parquet floor, correct? And the floors were going to have to be sanded, correct? I eventually got them sanded, yes. And it took, you were there, I think you testified, it took you about 12 to 13 hours in the house cleaning up, correct? Correct. And you said that there was, is it your testimony that you didn't see any of the paintings damaged? The existing paintings from the, the owners from the house that, no, none of them were damaged. You didn't see any paintings with a painting of a penis drawn on it? I did not. And thankfully, I, that was something I wouldn't, didn't have to replace. You know, if anyone <laughs> Any else saw painting. that. Objection, speculation. I mean, 
I would have seen it. We know there's an objection. Mr. Oh, King, you just need to stop. That's all right. I'm sorry. All right. If you stand Shut up, up objecting. Let him go. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. <laughs> and you said that Jerry Judge was at the house, correct? Correct. And he's the head of Mr. Depp's security, correct? Correct. And Dr. Kipper was at the house? Yes, he was. And Debbie Lloyd was at the house as well, correct? Yes, she was. Okay. Now, you understood that Mr. Judge saw scratches on Ms. Hurd at on March 8th, correct? Objection, <laughs> hearsay, speculation. <laughs> I'll sustain the objection. Objection, um, all of them. Yeah. Did you have the cleaning lady? All the things. The house, correct? The housekeeper? Yes, the housekeeper. Adele, the resident housekeeper. Yes, she was going to be. I mean, yes, she was employed through the week. Again, she wasn't there on weekends. There was concern about the cleaning lady coming to the house and seeing everything that was in the house, correct? Objection, speculation, uh, foundation. Uh, I'll allow it if you can answer it. You can answer it. Thank you. Uh, concern, oh. sorry. What there was concern mean? about the cleaning lady coming to the house and seeing all the damage that was that had been done, correct? I know that when I left to fly to LA with Miss Hurd, I told both the chef and the housekeeper they didn't need to be coming to the house um, because Miss Hurd, essentially the principals weren't there, Mr. Depp wasn't there, Miss Hurd was obviously with me at that point, so I said they didn't need to, to come to the house. Isn't it true that you told Mr. Judge that you thought you could get the cleaning lady to swear to silence about what the house looked like? Objection hearsay. It's his own statement. His own statement. I'll allow it. But he's not a party. You told Mr. Judge that it's you not a party thought admission. you could get the cleaning lady to swear to silence about what the house looked like. I think I probably made a comment about, you know, I should just come back and deal with this myself, if that's what you mean, and just get cleaned up. And make sure that she wouldn't say anything, correct? I don't know. Should we trusted I trusted her and the chef anyway. They were good good team team members. As the house manager, part of your job is to you said you work with um high profile people, correct? High profile, high net worth, I think is what I actually said. Would you agree that one part of your job is to keep things discreet for your clients? Of course, it's part of my job. Trust and, and discretion. Yeah. And Mr. Depp was your client, right? I worked on an assignment on those occasions, yes. But I was self-employed at the time. Yeah. But in March 8th, 2015 in Australia, Mr. Depp was your client, correct? Correct, essentially, yeah. And Miss Hurd both of them the principals who paid and do you know how who paid your for your services as i said before i was paid through disney who were making the pirates of the caribbean their production company which i believe was called her shell okay. and can we put up um defendants exhibit 377 um which I, which is already in evidence uh -huh. so they were both his clients discretion for both of them Johnny Depp didn't pay him. Disney paid him. Mr. King, do you see defendants exhibit 377 in front of you? I do, yes. And do you recognize this as a lampshade that was in the house in Australia on March 8th, 2015? Yes, it was, I believe, one of the lamp shades that was missing from one of the lamps. Okay. And and you saw, did you see this uh, painting on the on the lampshade? I did, yeah. It was part of my walk around to okay. see and what... And, and what floor was the lampshade on? This was on where the art studio was, on that main level. Yeah, so on the main level, okay. Yes. Um, Excuse me. And was this, was this, uh, did you notice that it was dark paint that was on the uh, lampshade? You're muted, Andrew. It certainly looked like it, yes. Okay. Sorry, I was saying, imagine, um, can, you uh, can you imagine what Amber Heard's Airbnb reviews are like? I believe I did. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's the data. Okay. And can we put up... Get a big deposit. Banned. Banned at all Airbnb locations. <laughs> we found a damn finger. Would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe what you let on the bed sheets. <laughs> And you recognize uh, Defendants Exhibit 374 as a mirror that was in the house in Australia on March 8th, 2015, correct? Yes, I do. And this mirror was in the bathroom, correct? 
This poor guy's correct. getting PTSD. Two in the bathroom above each sink. And this was on the, the top floor, correct? The master bathroom, the master essentially. Bathroom. And the master bathroom, just so I'm clear, was on the top floor, Top right? floor, correct. And this uh, painting said starring Billy Bob. Is that is that right? Is that what you recall? Um, yeah, I don't know. I was writing. Um, and was this in, was this in, uh, the writing, was it in paint? I believe it was the same paint, the oil paint that was used on the other mirror that we saw earlier. Okay. And did you take this picture? Again, possible. I, I haven't seen the metadata, but okay. yes, probably. And, and let's put back up, uh, defendants exhibit 375. I think they were coached to say metadata as much as possible because Amber Heard's team has not turned over any of it despite numerous requests. So they can't prove where any of the pictures came from, when they were taken, stuff like this, that. This oh, writing was, all, was oh. also in the master bathroom, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. Okay. And could you tell if the black paint was on top of the red or or under the red? I didn't really analyze it to be honest. I just knew I was going to have to clean it up at some point. Right. Your whole concern was just cleaning up clean, cleaning up the house correct correct okay. and you don't know who wrote what on this on the mirror correct no i know that one was oil paint and the, and the other red writing was lipstick and, and lipstick you're not even sure of that you just saw it was something sticky is that right i'm pretty sure it's waxy you know, like <laughs> waxy. lipstick like and um, same as the oil paint <laughs> was like oil paint like did you see paint did you see also any writing in blood um, writing, not, no, not necessarily. No. Okay. Now, did you help when, when Miss Heard was um, leaving to go um, back to LA, uh, you, were, you were with her, correct? Correct. Did you help her pack? I think I may have done at that point. Yes, I think I did. Did you see, were, weren't, weren't Miss Heard's clothes ruined? I didn't see any ruined clothes. There wasn't paint on her clothes? Not that I could see, not so much. Um, yeah, not not at that point of packing. I mean, there was paint in the tub, correct? Say again, sorry. There was paint in the tub in the bathroom, correct? I don't recall that. You don't recall one way or the other. I don't recall being paint in the tub. And it's your testimony that there was no paint or blood on Miss Hurd's clothes. Is that what you're saying? Asked and answered. <laughs> you have to say objection first. Objection. Now. Um, you, you said you were in charge of the cleanup, correct? Yes, it was my responsibility. Um, the house was. And you were working with Mr. with Mr. Judge and um, cleaning up the house. Is that right? On the, the night that I the day that I arrived there. Yes. Mr. Judge did help me at some point. Yes. Sweeping up glass, etc. And were there were there was there Photos taken of more than the three thing, three pictures. Uh, the lawyer there on the right looks kind of like Amber Heard. Twenty years in the, oh, the house. <laughs> By who? Did you take any pictures? Cat the house? lawyer. I took a few. Yeah, I mean I Amber Heard after she gets a bunch and, of cats. Uh, did you take pictures other than the three that we saw? Taxidermism. I think I probably did as I was going around. Do you know who you gave those pictures to? No. Do you know what you took the photos with? My phone. And who would you have sent those photos? photos too and send them to anybody at just, that point you just kept them yes did you show the photos to anyone no do you still have the photos yes they're on they're on, where they're on your phone still they're on my, one of my devices yes okay did you take um a photo of the vodka bottle that you said was broken yes did you, you not have that subpoena him yes okay and you didn't but you didn't give that to anybody there were a fair few photos i can show it to you now if you want. How, how many photos did you have on your phone? I don't remember the number, but probably more than 10. Did anyone ever this ask? This can't be photos? new. Several of them, yes. I was you wouldn't think so, you but maybe Dimwit just opened the door. <laughs> Some of them, yes. Not all of them? Do you have a bunch of bad photos? That, oh, you, you, you do? Uh, I can show them to you. Um, yeah. Uh, no, uh, sorry. Uh, never mind. Skip this line of questioning. Withdrawn. Questions all withdrawn. Check to your own question. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I move to strike. Please move to strike my questions. Objection. Relevance, Your Honor. 
No, stop objecting. Let him go. Exactly. Lawyers want to object to everything. You don't have to. This guy is a complete train wreck. Let him go. And Chad Butler guy is knocking it out of the park. What other? So did you take photos of um, Chad Butler? The, 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 the chat is great at making these witnesses at famous. Certainly the smears. What was grandma, grandma Rambo? Grambo? Was that it? Those yeah. You took, so you, you took photos of the walls with blood on it. Is that right? Yes. And you took photos of the, the plaster, right? That was damaged? At the end of the bar, in the, in the bar, behind the bar, by and, the sink, yes. And did you take photos of the um, ping pong table that you said was broken? Yes, as part of the bar area, I'm Did sure. You take photos of there was a glass table that was broken too, correct? A glass table, I don't recall the glass you, table. Okay. Did you take photos of all the damage that was around the house? Probably most of it, yes. Okay. And the only time you gave those photos to anyone you're saying was in the UK case a couple of years back? I've never shared them with anybody else, yes. And it costs between, it costs about $75,000 to clean up the damage, isn't that right? I don't know the exact cost. I, I think we, I calculated at the time, you know, after all the vendors had been in, done their thing, it's about 50,000, I seem to recall. Okay. Now, you, you said you flew back to, to Australia with Miss Hurd, correct? I didn't fly back with Miss Hurd. I mean, Hurd. flew back to LA from Australia, thank you, with Miss Hurd, correct? Correct. Okay. And you were asleep for most of the flight, correct? For a lot of it. I think it's a 14 hour flight. So I think we both slept for quite a lot of it, yeah. Uh, and you were exhausted from the 13 hours you were working on the house, right? Correct. Right. And your testimony was that Miss Hurd said to you, Have you ever been so angry with someone that you just lost it, correct? After I'd asked, so you know what happened. But you didn't, you you didn't inquire as to what she was referring to, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I, by what happened, it was pretty clear what I was referring to. Let me ask again. You did not inquire as to what she was referring to, did you? With her answer. Correct. She didn't inquire as to my reason for asking, but it was pretty obvious to both of us what I was asking <laughs> and what her reply was regarding. Ask him again so he can say it again. That'd be yeah. good. That's a good strategy. Yeah. Emphasize all the blood, too. I like that strategy, too. Like Depp used to do. He's like, can you repeat that a third time? Or the, or the, that particular? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was a funny witness. Oh, great, 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 quick satire. Yes, that's fine, sir. Thank you. He obviously loved saying Rottenborn, too. Well, Rottenborn. <laughs> Rottenborn. Yes, Mr. Rottenborn. He gets a Beavis and Butthead laugh out, out of it probably every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got his transcript Mr. of his King, testimony, I'm you guessing. You testified on behalf of Mr. Depp in the UK, correct? Correct. Okay. And you provided two witness statements, correct? Correct. And then you provided testimony in court, correct? Correct. And if you take a look at page 1103 of your testimony. He really should that legally change his name to Chad Butler. That would be awesome. No. Sir Chad Butler. Esquire. Do you see it's actually on the um, bottom right? Bottom right, you see that? Yeah, got it. And if you actually look at, um, you see, starting at the bottom of 1102, there's, this was a statement when you said you did not, um, you say, Miss Heard asked you, have you ever been so angry with anyone that you lost it? Your answer, that's correct. And you specifically remember that, do you? Yes. You said it never happened to you. Answer, that is correct. Question, she did not, I mean, it was, if it was said, nothing was said about who she was talking about, was it? Answer, she was asking me a question 
question, she was asking you a question, answer yes. Question, you did not inquire as to what she was referring to, did you? I did not, I do not recall asking. I know that she was asking if her question and I gave her an answer. You see that? Yes. Okay, and that yes. was your testimony you gave in the UK. Uh, That's not really impeachment. Before. I mean, just, that, this is that didn't dumb. impeach anything. Yes. Okay. No, don't you have to impeach. You don't know what, and you don't know what Miss Hurd was talking about. Yeah. You know, you were just talking about something dramatic that just happened, and you asked about that dramatic thing, but no, that isn't like really what you were asking she was about, right? A statement about Mr. Depp, right? Like I said, I'd ask the question, "What happened?" Referring yeah, you can scan to the your house. show, Nick. Um, and she gave me that. So let's highlight this: the worst <laughs> evidence it's one more time. Can you please we highlight that for the jury? I mean, yeah, and you went to sleep. maybe Amber Heard's I mean, backup strategy is a legal malpractice claim against her lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> my, my phone um, on this, the highlight. Now, really good, you know, <laughs> and you said you saw Miss Heard with cuts on her arm. Is that right? On the That's flight? right. Towards the end of the flight. Yeah. Okay. If we could put up 376 G. Do you recognize th this picture? I've not seen this picture before. W were these the were these the objection cuts? foundation? Did, did you see cuts like this on Miss Heard? Objection. He's never seen this before. Why don't we put up 376 C? Objection. There's no foundation. He doesn't know what the picture is. They've done this a couple times where their witness does you not know what the thing is. That's Miss Hood. All right. And did you see cuts like that, which are on her left arm? Similar to that long, like I described earlier, long, thin cuts, um, pretty uniform cuts. These were the cut. It, it was the cuts were like this on her kind of wrist forearm area. Is that right? I don't know what the date of this photograph is, but they look pretty uniform like they do here. Yes like to enter uh, 376C into evidence? Any objection? Yes, foundation. Uh, no, no objection. Okay. They must like the photos. They must like Photo the photos. Photo of her forearm with some scratches running down like this, I'm guessing. Ah, I see. It doesn't really look. The magic of foundation. Back up 376G. He doesn't know the date. He doesn't know, like the other one. He doesn't even know if it's her because it's just a forearm. He's never seen the photos. Uh, like, let make yeah, them introduce it through their own witness. Exactly. Seeing three seventy six C is this consistent with the scratches on three seventy six G? Are these consistent with the scratches you saw in this hurt? I don't see a date. Is that the same time? Is that the same date? Oh, my, I mean, the, my question are, is: Are the scratches similar to what you saw in this hurt? These are uniform. Kind of long, thin scratches. Yes. Cuts, I'd like to enter scratches. 376G into evidence. Any objection? I mean, foundation, he hasn't authenticated the document through this witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just asking if the pictures are consistent with what he's. No, he, what, he could may as well be showing a water painting uh, of just the injuries. It. I mean, thank you. He was late on the objection, too, though. He should have objected the first time around if he had problems with this. Well, there's a delay between him hearing Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously the problem. Okay. Now, you were in the house, you said, for 12 to 13 hours on March 8th, 2015, correct? Correct. Going into March 9th, 2015. Okay. And you spoke to Mr. Judge when you were in the house, correct? You had interaction with Mr. Judge, yes. And you had interaction with Dr. Kipper when you were in the house, correct? Correct. And you had interaction with Debbie Lloyd when you were in the house, correct? Yes, briefly. Okay. Let this witness go. He's and isn't it true that in the entire time you were there, you were not informed as to what caused damage to Mr. Depp's hand on finger on March 8th? Objection, hearsay. Asking what he wasn't told. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Objection, reverse hearsay. 
You didn't know what could cause damage to Mr. Depp's hand while you were there on March 8th, correct? Dr. Kipper told me he sustained an injury on one of his well, fingers. Well, uh, objection here, hearsay. Wait, you, you asked the question. Oh, oh. <laughs> injury to his finger. Yes. You don't know what caused the injury Idiot. to one of his fingers. But you don't know what cause, you don't know how. <laughs> Is Depp laughing there? Anybody mentioned it to me at that Depp put his hand up in front of his face there for a minute. Same objection, you are hearsay. Sorry, I'll allow it. Next question. He answered it. I'll allow it. Next question. Oh. Okay. Now, you understand that there was um, a phone in the house that was recording during the cleanup, correct? Sorry, I didn't hear all of that. Did you come to understand that there was a phone in the house that was recording as people were cleaning up? Um, at that time, no. But you now, you now know that there was a phone that was recording people as they were cleaning up, correct? Uh, I, Objection, foundation, hearsay. I'm not asking for a particular statement. That's just fine. I'll allow it if he knows. I believe that, that came up somewhere later on. At that time, I wasn't aware, but I believe I became aware of it later, yes. Okay. Um, I would like to um, uh, put up uh, defendants 378. It's a uh, recording. I want to uh, play a couple of times. 1207 through 1319. Yeah. Is that the only, only segment you wish to have? And then I would also use, I'd also like to play 1951 through 2138. And is, is this going to be used again or is this? Um, I, I think it would be A. Okay, 378A. Any objection to 378A? Yes, Your Honor, we do have an objection. I believe this is a recording that has the voices of people other than Ms. Hurd and Mr. Okay. Depp, and on that basis, it's hearsay. Okay. Unless I'm incorrect about which document we're talking about. Can we, can we um, I'm seeing someone say they're concerned about the finger testimony. Like, why is it in paper? That is a good question, but the everything about that scenario that the Butler described is consistent with Johnny Depp's testimony. And the only person who's going to testify that he actually chopped his own finger off was Amber Heard. Remember Johnny Depp's testimony was that he, uh, he smashed, he got it chopped off in an accordion door. Uh, that's what he told the doctor, the finger and the blood and the vodka bottle and the chipped uh, marble on the bar, the busted up plaster behind at the end of the bar. That's all consistent with his entire story. There's no testimony so far about an accordion door, which would be one of the competing stories. The other competing story comes allegedly from one of his security people who may have told the doctor that he cut his own finger off. And they're just inferring that he took a knife and chopped it off himself. Um, he said specifically that he never said that. So there's no testimony to that in the record, by the way. No one has actually testified that Johnny Depp has cut his own finger off. So for now... Uh, we have these three stories of varying quality. The one that the weight of evidence supports when you look at it is Johnny Depp's. I will say, though, I mean, it is weird to have the finger laying in paper, but it could be as simple as that's where the, so, you know, uh, it happened. He grabbed the paper and tried to wrap it up. And then uh, when he started fountaining blood and painting all over the walls with his blood, with his blood, he might have just dropped the paper at that point. How does he say he get, got cut off at trial? Uh, Amber Heard threw a vodka bottle. His hand was resting on the bar. She threw a, hand, a glass handle of vodka that crashed right there and, uh, and chopped off the finger. Oof. And for what it's worth, I mean, my opinion, the finger doesn't look like it was chopped off by a knife and some of the bone is pulverized. They had to reconstruct the bone. So, I mean, I'm not like I'm no knife expert but I have some experience. It's not that easy to cut through bone with a, with a kitchen knife or whatever. Somebody, so. somebody no, should have thought sure. of, uh, yeah. brought the finger to the hospital in a box. Cause if they done that, Johnny Depp could have done a reenactment of the Brad Pitt scene from uh, seven. <laughs> His doctor's like, what's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I've been really unimpressed with all the lawyering. Very mediocre. Yeah, very trial. weak. Parts you know, of the this, trial. This we judge too. This witness is tough because there's really not anything you can really honestly go after him on. So you do your 
pro forma cross examination and let him go. Yeah, in my opinion, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be poking this guy. You know. Well, there was well, that bombshell impeachment blood. from his UK testimony where he said effectively the exact same thing, but with slightly different wording. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, and talking about the blood for 30 minutes being everywhere, yeah. that, yeah. that, that could have maybe been rethought. Okay. Did you lose that objection? I'm guessing <laughs> like so while you're going back to your table and not asking a question immediately. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, going back to the um, photos that you took for a moment mm. yep. um, of that, of that damage in the house, you recall giving that testimony? Yes. Okay. Did Mr. Depp ask you for the photos? No. Did you give the photos to counsel for Mr. Depp? Some of them, yes. Yeah. Did you withhold any photos from Mr. Depp or his counsel? Didn't withhold any photos from from anybody. I didn't withhold. Did you give all the photos? Didn't did you ask give him. all of the photos you have on your phone to Mr. Depp and his counsel? Not all of the photos on my phone. No. All the photos of the damage that occurred on <laughs> March eighth, twenty fifteen. The butler's like, I just realized I'm way smarter than you. <laughs> did you give them all to Mr. Depp and his counsel? I don't believe I. I'm gonna have some fun with you. Imagine the butler makes a lot more money Why not? than Rotten Born. Because there are a decent amount of them. I, I mean. So you, you picked and cho chose what photos you were going to give to Mr. Depp and his counsel? I, I gave a, an amount of photos to them. Do you know how many photos you gave to Mr. Depp and his counsel? I don't know precisely, no. Can you give an estimate as to how many photos you gave? I really can't. No, I, you know, an amount, I, I don't recall how many. More than three? Yes. More than 10? Possibly more than 10. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe. Between 10 and 20? Objection. Possible. I, I mean, <laughs> Overruled, I'll allow it. You see the super You'll allow it. He keeps saying expert. he doesn't know. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, she overruled you. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, possibly more than 10, yeah. Some, but somewhere between 10 and 20, is that right? Possibly. I honestly don't know. Could it be I don't 20? know. That's a fair answer. I don't think so. Did Mr. Depp, did Mr. Depp's counsel ask for all the photos? I, I don't recall. You don't recall one way or the other what they asked for? I gave them some photos. <laughs> I, I, I don't recall how many or how many were asked for, requested. And those were, those were requested in 2020? Correct. Prior to prior to the UK, that yes. Trial. Did they ask for him in this case? I believe I supplied some for this case also. Yeah. You supplied photos for this case to Mr. Depp's counsel. I believe I did. Okay. And was that about the between ten and twenty photos that you're talking about? I don't remember how many for this. <clears throat> But it was at the same it was the same amount of photos that you gave to the count the Mr. Depp's counsel in the UK. I don't, I don't know. know if it's the same amount. I, did, I don't recall. Did Mr. Depp's counsel in this case ask for all the photos you had of the damage of March eighth, twenty fifteen? All of the photos. I don't think they requested all of the photos. They didn't ask for all the photos you had of that damage. I, I don't know if they requested them all. Was it Mr. Waldman who asked you for the photos? Originally, I don't remember who called him. Shillings were the- Did Mr. Waldman ever company. ask you for the photos? I don't know if he asked me specifically. I, he was part of the, that team, I, I assume, so. And you spoke, you, you, spoke, you spoke to Mr. Waldman, is that right? I did a couple of years ago, yeah. Okay, and, and he was part of the team that was asking for the evidence you had of what occurred in Australia in 2015, is that right? He was part of that team as I understood it, yeah. Okay, and, and as part of that team, he was, he and others were asking for all the, were asking for photos from Australia from March 8th, 2015, is that right? They requested them at some point, some and, of them. And you provided, and that's when you provided the 10 to 20 photos, and is that right? The photos, correct. Okay, and then and is there a separate counsel that asked you for the photos in this case? Uh, yes. There was? 
Yeah, I mean, was it, it was essentially it that, the same. Who was it that photos? asked you for photos in this case? I don't recall a, a name specifically. Was it a man or a woman? I, I don't, I just, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> 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 and when did they make that request when i i don't know a date i don't know specifically you know what year um <laughs> this year last year i mean prior so, to this obviously so it, it could have been in 2022 that they asked you for the photos uh, i think it was prior to that i don't recall so maybe late 2021 or early 2022 is that what you're saying honestly don't recall which part of the year but it's either 2021 or 2022 is that right i would imagine that's probably correct okay and you get and you gave them all you gave them some of the photos you had as i just said yes okay but not all of them correct so do you have more than 10 to 20 photos on your phone of the damage that occurred in australia again i don't recall it, the amount but you have a larger amount on your phone than what you provided to Mr. Depp's counsel. Uh, objection, right? Your Honor. Ask and answer. Yeah, cumulative. I'll sustain the objection. Just ask. Okay. Um, what does this matter? It makes it look like he's hiding stuff, guys. That's you didn't, that's you didn't his whole point. In London, correct? I didn't live there, correct? Okay. Do you know if Miss Heard had friends over uh, to the house in London? She did. They came to stay. Um, Yes. And they stayed for they stayed from September 9th through September 22nd, 2014, correct? I don't remember the duration, but that's that's possible. Okay. And they were staying, they were they were literally staying at the house, correct? They were accommodated at the house, correct? Right. And so you don't know who was drinking the bottles of wine that were brought into the house, correct? At which point? What, what do you mean? When Miss Hurd's friends were there, you don't know who was drinking the, the wine. Oh, they were all, all enjoying the wine for sure. They were all drinking the wine. They, they, would, I took care of them as I would take care of any guests that came into any house. And wasn't it five to seven guests that were at the house with Miss Hurd? I don't remember the number. It sounds about right. Okay. And then, and then at the end of the night, there was one or two bottles of wine finished, right? When Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd were there on their own, there was certainly that amount. Yes. But do you know how many, you don't know how many, you're, you don't know how many bottles were there when it was Miss Heard and her friends, correct? I would say more. You don't know, but you don't know one way or the other, right? I don't recall the count, but certainly more than when there were just two of them in the house because but you there don't know were seven you don't, extra people or five people. But extra. you don't know the count. Precisely, no, I don't. And you, do you know how much time Miss Heard was in London with Mr. Depp, not with her friends? A fair amount of that time. What, what I do don't you, recall days. So, no, I don't recall. So they were there for a month, correct? Uh, thereabouts, yeah. And I mean, when I say they, Miss, Miss Heard and Mr. Depp were in London for about a month, right? Correct. Okay. Around about a month. And wasn't it true that for about two to three weeks, Miss Heard's friends were also staying in London? I don't think two or three weeks. I, I don't recall, but I don't think it was that long. You don't know one way or the other, right? I don't think it was that long. But well, you, you don't have anything to base that on, right? Just your, what your memory. well, his recollection. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and you don't know what happened in London when you weren't there, correct? You mean after I'd left for, of an evening? Yeah. Usually the chef was there still when I left each evening, Russell, um, who would take care of dinner and leave later that each night. And then after that. The chef left. You don't know what happened in the house, correct? I wasn't there. Right. And you don't know for certain whether Mr. Depp drank wine or not in London, right? I don't believe so. There's usually, when it was just the two of them in the house, there was usually only one glass in the morning, either on the kitchen sink or on the bedside stand in the master bedroom. But you don't know who drank from that. You don't know who drank from that glass when you weren't there, right? The person with I lipstick. There, correct. But when I usually left the house, I'd already poured Miss Heard a glass of wine before I left. Way to way to bury yourself. Yeah. Wine or not, you don't know it was. Yeah. Here's how I know it was Amber Heard. It was here, 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 and here. I poured um, it in her glass in her hand. And you don't know what started the. I mean, <laughs> well, in, you're not sure she uh, drank it though when you were gone, right? Other than that one you said you heard about her hand. The second one that I described, I was in the vicinity. I heard the first comment of this. That was the start of that argument. And you don't actually know if there was an argument before they before what you heard, right? Of that evening, I didn't hear another one. I'll put it that way. It started in that room, as I described earlier. And and you don't know what happened in Australia also between March 5th and March 8th, correct? 
the 6th I left on Friday the 6th was when I left for the weekend. Okay, so between Friday the 6th and when you got to the house on March 8th, you don't know what happened? In no, I wasn't there. Okay. And you never saw Miss Heard be violent at any time, right? Sorry, say again. You never saw Miss Heard be violent <laughs> at any time, correct? Beyond sort of finger prodding and uh, violent, I didn't see either of them be violent towards each other. You never saw Miss Heard be violent at any time, right? I didn't see her be violent, depending on your... For certain values of violence. ...statement where you say you never saw Miss Heard be violent at any time. Okay. Violence, if, yes, I didn't see violence per se. Thank you. I have nothing. Right, redirect. Thank you. Keep it simple, clean, neat, tie some things up, sit down. Exactly. No need to belabor this stuff. Mr. King, have you ever been employed by Mr. Depp? No. So in each of these situations where you've been around Mr. Depp, you've always been employed by somebody else? Correct. All right. How sustain is still leading? Strike the answer. Next question. Are you based anywhere other than the UK? That's not Where a leading question. I live in central <laughs> well, London. Have you ever lived anywhere else? Oh, That's not a leading question. We heard some discussion on cross about photos, which I suspect you remember. Um, why did you take the photos of the property damage in Australia? As I do, and, and a lot of my jobs in various assignments and jobs are, through the years, I take photos as points of reference um, for whatever reason. I mean, if I'm packing suitcases up um, and they're going to be in transit and I'm not with the suitcases, I'll take a picture of contents and when I send stuff so i know it's gone and what's gone um, also he is a very active pictures, world star account reference i sometimes take pictures of table settings that i've done or which i know i can use later on to, as reference were the photos of property damage in australia the first photos that you had taken um, in the course of um working with mr depp and Ms. heard objection leading all right, I'll sustain us deleting. Next question. Had you ever taken photos before? Yes. <laughs> um, have you taken, what kinds of things have you taken photos of? Um, in London, reference points and dinner table settings. Um, sometimes Mr. Depp would write notes for Miss Heard. He'd leave notes um, on, the, on the sort of kitchen table when he left for work. I, I believe I took pictures of those they were you know there things like that just setups of once I set up houses it's always good to take photos of rooms so so I can cross-reference later on if I need to did Miss Heard or her counsel ever ask you for photos of any of the photos you took in Australia no uh, I'll stay as deleting next question Can I see plaintiff's exhibit 159? Why aren't, why isn't he rephrasing some of these questions that get right. objected to? They're like, such pointless objections because you can just work your way back around to it. I mean, so I would not. do that just to annoy the jury. I mean, well, to get the jury annoyed at the objection. Like, just, just go back to it. Mm -hmm. Ask the question in a different way. That's how you put a stop yeah, to that shit, a right? Multi-page document. Can you scroll through? Where have you lived other than three London? pages here? <laughs> Mr. King, do you do you recognize this this uh, document? Yes, it's the floor plan of the house in Australia. And do you recall on on cross examination, you were asked to kind of describe where some of the property damage was? Yes. So right now, 
on the screen in front of you. Yep. Um, which floor would you say this is? This is the top floor with the master suite and two other bedrooms. Okay. And I, I believe council asked you um, if there was blood in one of the bathrooms or, or one of the bathtubs. Do you recall that? Yes, they did ask that. Would that have been on this floor? I, I, I think they were referring to the master tub. I think that's what he said. Okay, so can you mark on the on the screen where that would have been? The master tub is over here. Can I just dot it? How does I can just work? dot it, yes. Okay, so that looks like the master tub to me. And just uh, to clarify, did you did you recall seeing any any blood or damage there? In the tub, no. Okay. Can you mark for us on the screen where you did see the damage that was discussed on cross? The mirrors, um, what, can I dab on here again? Uh, sure. Yeah, so these are the sinks. The two mirrors were above each, the mirror above each sink. Okay. Can we, can we scroll up uh, to the page prior? And can you point out for us on 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 this page? Well, well, first of all, which which floor is this? This is the the main level floor, essentially the second floor, if you want. Okay. And can you point out for us here on on this map uh, which of the where where the property damage was? Yes. Um, how many dabs am I allowed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> around here, kitchen area. Um, this was the TV, the wall mounted TV on, I run out of dabs. And I apologize, actually, Your Honor, can, can we move this into evidence? Um, Any objection to 159? No objection. All right, 159 and in evidence. Can we publish this to the jury? Okay. <laughs> it's going to be the board, the, the board game clue. <laughs> so, Mr. King, I, I lounge with the candlestick. So, you, you were just pointing out which where, the bottle is it the second floor? <laughs> Essentially the main level, yeah. <laughs> It's the Nazi lady in the library with the vodka bottle. Any other places where there was damage? Yes, where it says family, family room. Uh, there was a that the TV was wall mounted on that that wall in between family and lounge. The sofa was approximately where you've got the red square, uh, red red rectangle now. Play D and D on that. Facing map. towards the TV. Uh, the lounge as he's sorry, too too quick. The lounge was essentially the um, art studio. And the bedrooms over to the left there, where the lamp, damaged lamp and shade, blood on the uh, duvet, et cetera, that I described. Okay, and then let's go to the, the first page. And which floor is this? This is the lower ground floor okay and can you point out for us um did you find the finger on this floor correct can you point out to us where you found the finger yes i can right here ah, there we go it's the end of the bar it was on the the tiled floor below that end of the bar okay and any other significant property damage that you want to point out on this on this floor Yes, as I said, the, this was the, uh, can I dab again? Yeah, so that was the, the the most part of the broken glass. That's where the Stolik and I bottle was below that bar by the bar stools. There were three bar stools um, that you could sit at there. On this back wall here, there was plaster damage. On Over here above the sink or to the side of the sink was more plaster damage on the walls behind the bar that mirror was cracked broken uh ping pong table was around there <laughs> on the floor and around those the whole maps going to end up covered in blue one that was the spillages as well that smelt like alcohol to me the puddles of alcohol
Is that it? I mean, that that was the the most part of the damage around that area, um, in front of the bar, especially. There was, I mean, as I said, there were blood drips around that white cream colored tiled floor in the in the games room. And this is the staircase down is this side that the the chip was out of the the stone step. And if I can get another dab in there, right about in the center of that bar, the, the, the chunk out of the side of the of the counter the bar top. He should just type out Amber Heard with the blue dots. <laughs> <laughs> um I bet it couldn't get red dots. Would have been better. Well, all of these were, were exits, you know, all these, um, my office was off over here. I think you can just see how it says study, um, big glass sliding door. Uh, the gym had an exit up here. This went into the garage. There was a, a button you could press for the automatic doors to come up. Uh, the laundry area, which is right here, that this, this is actually an exit out into the yard essentially um the gym all of those rooms had a had an exit okay. um other than uh other than mr depp's counsel did anybody else ever ask to see your photos what i'll allow it no Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. All right, just witness subject to recall. There we go. Get him out of there. You got him to mark yeah, up the whole right, freaking so map. Subject to recall, it's important <laughs> that you do not discuss your testimony with anybody. They should have had the dots be red, though. That was a mistake. Yeah, that was yeah. anything about the trial, okay? Agreed. All right, thank yes. you. Yes. All right, you that's probably required by the technology. They probably don't allow it to be red. Mm, red and dripping. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You got to get this down game. to show, Nick. You got to. <laughs> I got to wait till the trial's over. He's, so he's subject Butler. to recall. The <laughs> the interesting thing about this trial that's kind of different from the trials we've been watching anyway, or I've been watching, is that a lot of this trial is going. There's a potential for a lot of things to matter on rebuttal, um, not just a couple little blips here and there. So they've saved two uh, witnesses that are both very likable, Isaac Baruch and this guy. Uh, they have held them over for rebuttal. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's going to highly depend on what Amber Amber's team does and how they approach their case in chief. So there's actual potential for real fireworks to come out on rebuttal as opposed to just like a, a quick cleanup. I mean, it remains to be seen, but but that's, that's a possibility a here. It's it, so this judge is being generous in that. There's a lot of judges that wouldn't tolerate uh, your recalling a witness that you had a chance to deal with the first time around. Um, and there's a fair number of judges that won't allow that. You, you have to have a real strong justification as to why you have to recall them with a lot of judges. And and I get that. Ladies and gentlemen, that comes to the end of our day. So we're going to excuse you for the evening. Again, do not do any outside research and don't talk to anybody. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Have a good evening. And don't do the things we know you're going to do when you get home. <laughs> don't look stuff up on the internet. Don't watch that Rakita guy on yep. YouTube. Yep. Watch him twice. <laughs> Loves those views. What do y'all think life of the cross-examination of Stud Buck of Butler guy? Uh, the cross-examination of cross -examination, it? Matter. You, uh, mm. We're going through the exhibits you gave me this morning. It Thank got better by that. the end. Uh, but one of them was yeah. 485, and I have in my notes that it was 485A, just the first page, but you gave me all eight pages. Have you both agreed that all pages of this document come in, or is that something that – should I give 485 back and you can try again? It looks just it like the guy from Honey, okay. I Shrunk the Kids. Right, I'll give that back to you, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Judge right. Rick Moranis. Thank you. All right. And are we going to start with a remote witness tomorrow? Is that going to be your first witness? <laughs> she really looks all like right. Rick Make sure she's signed on by 940 so we can have it all set up for 10 o'clock start. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank How fat this all remote witness thing is fascinating. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, it's a product of them being in Virginia uh, and most of the witnesses being in LA. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, a lot of courts wouldn't allow it. 
I, yeah. I mean, it, the pandemic opened the door to this. But, you know, a lot of time, you know, to have it remote because you don't see them in person. You can't see certain body language, so on and so forth. If both sides agreed, though, I guess the court wouldn't have a problem, right? Yeah. Well, I yeah, that, that's no, probably. Well, it depends. I mean, some federal well, judges still won't allow it no matter what. I wouldn't like it. I mean, for all you know, there's somebody behind the camera hold, holding up notes for the no, witness. I, I mean, to it just in general. <laughs> it's just a big sign. Here's yeah. what you say, dumbass. Stop, don't say that. Right? <laughs> say this. Yeah, one of my one of the Amazons had a hearing a couple uh, weeks ago where literally the judge calls the witness down and says, "Ma'am, it looks to me like you're looking to somebody off camera. Who yeah. else is in the room with you?" <laughs> That happens. Well, I mean, witnesses see someone yeah. in the galley it's, who's important and, and they're looking for a reaction to, from that person, even if they're not getting clues. They're looking to make sure they're not upsetting them or getting them angry or whatever. Well, you heard about the, the I'm witness. Not, that not uh, witness is testifying remotely. You heard no, about the, the the woman who was testifying and you know she had a stock, you know, the, the husband or the boyfriend was the suspect and he had a temper a restraining order on him. And it was clear he was in the same house with her. And they're like, yeah, that was oh, great. That looks the same background. And she's like, no, he's not here. And he's like, no, I'm not here. And then the police come banging in and he looks to the left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, my uh, favorite was people who didn't realize how to change your name. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, you yeah. Heard, yeah. You heard about oh, the, uh, the guy who was Buttfucker 3000? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that was the his look sister. The look his sister set him up. Like, that's not me. That's not what he didn't realize. You know, you gotta you gotta check that. Almost as good as cat as cat lawyer. Cat lawyer, cat yeah, lawyer will be all time classic. <laughs> all time classic. So it looks yeah, like the, nothing really changed uh, in terms of the progression of the case, other than continues to look good for Johnny Depp. Is my takeaway from today? Yeah, I mean, they had. Uh, I I think they started to get to the butler at the end. Um, but I, I don't think it was overly super effective. I mean, but they no. did start to impeach his testimony a little bit and say, Hey, you know, you, you do have other photos, right? You didn't give them up. Why not? It, they didn't ever ask why, because there might actually be a reason, but they left, no. they left the jury thinking, why not? And, and uh, thought, wasn't a bad yeah, redirect ahead. to say no one else has ever asked you for these photos, right? You know, he did. Implying he did. that the, Amber Heard's lawyers don't want to see what's on those photos. Yeah, what wasn't right. that, that objected to and sustained as a leading question? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the judge's, yeah. The judge's yeah, evidentiary rulings are not great. It's like Rick yeah. Moranis needs to take an evidence class. Yeah, I think yeah, she's got her phone of... set up and it just randomly decides. You know, yeah, exactly. Hits that's the future, right? Whether... AI judges. That that oh, that God. there's technology that's a foot for to do that exact thing. Well, he might be able to pick up a hearsay objection. <laughs> or yeah. understand that yes or no is not necessarily leading like right. just because the answer have you lived anywhere outside of london is not a leading question because the <laughs> answer could just as easily be no as it could be yes and the question does not suggest that answer uh oh you so you and your technical things nick it's just it's a frustrating thing that's been happening this <laughs> entire trial and uh yeah, it's Can you imagine well, Burkowski here. Burkowski would be like, Stop it, stop it. I've had enough of this. No, <laughs> oh, um, could Burkowski, hurts. after four days of Johnny Depp on the stand, we've listened to this guy for 200 hours, probably months, even. I've been sitting here in this chair listening to this man bumble on. Can we move on? This is cumulative. I've heard it a hundred times. I think I even saw a video of this once. <laughs> Do you see the super chat recommendation for an expert witness on the finger? Oh no! What was that? Uh, uh, it, it's uh, I think it, it should be. It should be. It was one of the more recent ones. Twenty dollars. One of the more recent ones. Okay, I, I'm just. I was just about to actually start reading super chats because we've got a sizable amount of them. Um, here, let me. I'll search for finger. Not that one. Let's see. Where was this one? Oh, God. Uh, in my opinion, with my master's forensic science degree, finger injury consistent with crutching. Oh, that's not it. No. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can find it with expert. There are many recent. Uh, let's see. Oh, with Chandler Halderson. Bringing yeah. Chandler Halderson. Yes. <laughs> this is from Ovid. Your Honor, in order to provide expert testimony on how Johnny's hand could have been could not have been cut off by a knife or a household tool, we'd like to call Chandler Halderson to the stand. Oh no. <laughs> That's brutal. Oh goodness. Um, 
Well, yeah, that's the, I, dude I think... that, that's the dude that chopped up his parents, right? Yeah, he's a guy up in Wisconsin. He uh, he murdered Man, and Wisconsin. chopped up serial, his parents. Serial per capita serial killer, capital of the world. Even John Wayne because Gacy was really born in Wisconsin. Really cold in the winter in Wisconsin. Is that, is that the excuse? The original so. Silence of the Lambs guy was was there. Yeah, yeah I mean, all yeah, he, uh, long you're just sitting there in that basement. And he has experience using different types of tools because he wasn't able to do it several times. He had lots of start and stops. Start <laughs> and stops are not a good thing. Forensic analysts can look at those start and stops because that's where they find out the width of the cutting tool. Because if you just get a clean cut straight through with like your hacksaw, they can only see the, you know, the one side of it. They can't see the other side or how much material was there. But when you have a start and stop off to the side, they can then measure the width of that blade. You got to get good. Got, or yeah. just use an ax and do a one swing or something. Come Harbor on. Freight has everything you need. Yeah. <laughs> just use a circular saw. Come on. Hey, Nick, uh, I'm going to have to go. I just got home from a business trip, so I haven't seen the family yet uh, so far this week. But uh, before I sign off and you jump into the Super Chats, can I mention my webinar this week? Of course you can. All right, we're doing a webinar, free two-hour webinar, Wednesday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We call it our Hard to Convict webinar. Transform yourself from easy to convict to hard to convict if you're ever compelled to defend yourself, your family, your property. It's 100% free, Wednesday, 2 p.m. But you do have to sign up. There's only 100 seats. I think we still have a few left, but if you go to the little URL below my picture here, lawselfdefense.com slash HTC for hard to convict now, uh, you can sign up for one of those free seats as long as there are still seats available. Uh, Ty, Robert, great to see you guys again. Nick, great seeing you. Uh, if you send a link, I'll try to uh, join you for a bit tomorrow as well. Of course. Take Thanks care, bunch. guys. See you later. All right. Then there were three. three. <laughs> and guys just a reminder that everybody who's appeared on the show today all of their uh connection info is in the description everybody except for robert barnes you can click on their name and it will take you to their youtube channel robert will take you to uh he's got a link that to vivabarneslaw.locals.com where you can find exclusive live streams and all sorts of wonderful insights uh make sure you make sure you check them out all of the panelists here have a wealth of uh, different experiences and expertise. So I like, uh, I like bringing on variety. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think I agree with your assessment, Robert, that o overall Amber's team every day needs to move the needle in her favor and they're not really doing it. And I think some of the really damning audio evidence was her um, after the finger had been severed Uh her suggesting to please say it was a mutual fight. Well, it was a mutual fight. Tell everybody it was mutual. Please tell everybody it was mutual, uh, my reputation or whatever. And so one that implies that it wasn't mutual, that it was her Two, it implies that the, the other reality is that even if this is mutual, remember she is posing herself as a victim and mutuality and victim do not tend to run hand in hand. Uh, if the jury finds that this was a mutually tumultuous relationship, I, I think they really look and say, she's not a victim of abuse. They were just, they just yelled, they yelled at each other. They fought and, uh, and she gave some and she got some and, and that's how it goes. But we don't see anything saying that he went further to make this worse. So she's uh, not looking great. Although in, in her team's defense, sort of with Butler guy, the butler was unflappable as that, as that term is used. And, you know, I've always, I personally have always hated the advice. You have to cross examine every witness, no matter what I've always accepted it on faith, but I don't like to do it because he's a classic example of someone that ideally you probably just should have said no questions. <laughs> get him the hell off. Get, uh, yeah. I mean, or at least very few. I mean, yeah, just so, say, so your name is what now? And you did what? Okay, no more questions. You didn't personally witness anything. Yeah, uh, so you're not, uh, you, you're, you just cleaned up. Uh, I think the, I know. think the finger in the towel questions are reasonable. Like, focus yeah, on that. That is weird. That, that was weird. But of course, he was so forthcoming about it, right? He wasn't evasive. He wasn't trying to hide. He's like, it was in the, it was in the, and of course, who knows? It could have landed in a, in a paper towel. Uh, I, I did like the whole back and forth on paper towel versus, kitchen kitchen paper yeah that was and it was so <laughs> it was weird like, it's like you know what he means like well he got I don't, they got tied up on the whole we're gonna nitpick him and catch him yeah and, but i, yeah, I mean just I, across just across 
I, I think it's very, uh, it's, uh, again, I think the narrative that, and maybe they'll explain this at some point, but uh, I think the idea that the finger gets cut severely, they try to wrap it up in a towel and then, uh, you know, well, John, during all the, the lunacy, you're spurting blood from an artery. It, during the lunacy, because he says he went into shock or not shock, really. He said he had a nervous breakdown, basically. And he started rubbing, painting the blood on the walls from his finger. I mean, there's every possibility that he tried to get this thing wrapped up in some way. And uh, and it fell. It dropped it uh, yeah, fell off I mean, the it, bar. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. But um, it was OK to uh, ask about it. But don't sit there and preen like there's some lawyers do that. And it pisses me off. It, it's so yeah. it's so disingenuous. They make a big deal about absolutely nothing. Okay. You know, it's almost it's almost like they're trained to do it sometimes. And, and I don't think that works with anybody on the planet. <laughs> well, I just but, think they it would have made a ton of sense for them to just say, so wait, that finger was actually laying in a in a paper towel, like kind of wrapped up. Yeah. And not just and sitting then, on the floor in a puddle of vodka? Because I just want to confirm, it, it wasn't sitting like in a pile of glass or a pile of vodka, or like a puddle of vodka. It was sitting on the floor in a paper towel. Or maybe you don't talk about the finger and all the blood and everything on cross-examination. <laughs> I mean, maybe. That, 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 you, that's you, one of the... I mean, the, he's already in, testified to the towel. Uh, I mean, the, the tissue. So that you could have a more favorable witness expound upon later. If you got one. Yeah, <laughs> they may exactly. not have one. I mean, yeah, and yeah. it's probably going to be Amber Heard's uh, up to Amber Heard to do a lot of that. But yeah, <laughs> I none of these lawyers have impressed me. I mean, it's downy. I mean, they, they must be getting paid. These are like thousand dollar an hour kind of cases. Well, and remember, this though, is the they, quality they, they that they both also have probably very high maintenance clients. That they oh, I mean, it'd be yeah. You, uh, I don't know if you could pay me enough to represent Amber Heard. That'd be hard, hard work. <laughs> that would be, I, I go well, back to my know, statement. She's writing you suggestions every single minute during. Oh no, that you're dealing with a sociopath. True sociopaths are difficult clients. You know, you you, you need them to be in the right mo mode, right? I, I say Joe Francis had five personalities, and sociopath was the most pleasant to one to deal today, with. Uh, the I, I'm going to go back to my original statement before this trial started, like right before the trial started. I said, "You're about to see some of the highest paid lawyers around." in this area, uh, practicing for some very high profile people prepared to be underwhelmed. Yes. <laughs> like, no doubt about it. <laughs> it's like the, the current, so I think uh, Chad, you know, Chad Butler might be able to have a reality TV show on Bravo after today. I, he's, oh he's, my gosh. He was smooth. Yeah. He call, was. call him the prepper and the fix, like prepper and fixer or something like that. So he goes, he prepares your yeah. house for you. When you trash it, he goes in and does the cleanup. Uh, you know, as salacious uh, Amber uh, put on the model. bed again, you know, how to clean it up, how to make it look okay, make sure that the, the scent still isn't in the uh, mattress. They just send him around with uh tech CEO kids on their vacations to prep their Airbnbs and <laughs> yeah. then clean up when they leave and just like they keep the kid the whatever person it is out of it so they're confidential, but it's just him showing up going, Oh my god, you know, <laughs> every time. Oh <laughs> no, he'd say, Oh dear. Oh, yeah, what? he has he has a list. He's like the cleaner in the in Pulp Fiction, uh, yeah. or in uh, you know yeah yeah the, the, the he has a list. Okay, how do you deal with the blood? How do you deal with the defecation? How do you deal with the cut fingers? Okay, I've done done that. Check that. There, check are, that. there are cleaning products in this house, are there not? Okay, I will yeah. let you get them. Yep. Yeah, the or that be the other thing. Just just have him cleaning up after like uh, rap artists or rock bands or something. Like just what cleaning materials gets out hooker blood from? <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> exactly. Oh, what a great show! Well, you remember uh, what was that show? Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. They had about uh, fifteen years, however many years ago they, they had back, uh, where you know they would bring some some gay cleaning guys into some slob's house. <laughs> Yeah, I watched one one time, and the guy goes, he "Goes, oh my god, there's pussy hat everywhere." Just, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, hey, Barnes, how'd you like him? How'd you like him objecting to the answer to his own question? That was Told great. You. That was classic. Told you was, I mean, and, and the judge being quick on it because there's some judges would be nice, some judges would be meaner, but it's just, yeah, you're asking me to object to your own question. That's a little tricky. That, actually. It happened earlier in the trial with the crazy cat lady lawyer too, with oh, yeah. uh, Isaac Baruch, the other, the other super likable witness. 
he's up there and she asks the question and he goes like she asks an open-ended question to him and he's like you know this all started when she lied she lied and it ran around the world and it destroyed everything and it was terrible and it's all made up it was completely fake and then like a second later she's like uh she tried to object to something and and she's like, well, he just got to go on for a whole tirade about this. And the judge says, you asked the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's Rookie been some mistake. really mediocre lawyering, which, you know, at a certain level doesn't shock me. I mean, a lot of these lawyers either try too many or try too few. And what I mean by try too many is they don't learn. I shouldn't feel like they were that, that well prepared. I mean. Yeah, agreed. But absolutely. You know, you, you that, 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 you know, that. And I mean, little things, especially given the, the consequence of this case. Mm -hmm. Things like Amber Heard not having clear witness prep, uh, uh, you know, presentation prep. I mean, we did this in Rittenhouse, you know, did, yeah. uh, his mom, uh, his sisters, everybody was that, you know, we had people up there to help. Here's how you present yourself. Here's where you might catch yourself on camera. Here's how you react. Here's how not to react. So, I mean, and she, uh, Amber Heard has done awful. Now that look on her face, awful. she's had that every single day. I've seen the trial. She just had that, that. And she should know she's on constant display with the jury. Like Snipes got that. Snipe, I mean, Snipes would vibe so well with the jury. There was one juror who was really, was ready to hook up with him. And he reciprocated just in body language. And I was like, dude, you got, the government can see this right live. <laughs> Anybody paying attention? Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> we will curb that behavior. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we don't let it be that fully on display because that chick was about to jump over the thing and jump right over to, to meet up with Wes. But the, uh, uh, you know, she should be knowing that. Like, I mean, that should be her focus is communicate. Like Johnny did a good job constantly, you know, bless you and interact, little interactions and little, yep. you know, he understood it. She's doing an atrocious job of communicating to that jury. Well, do you think, though, that her her team tried to tell her that and she just didn't listen? I mean, uh, sure. not, I mean, she's got crazy cat lady that, that, that lady, in my experience, abusers pick mean, nasty, crazy lawyers. Okay. They're often okay. abusive personalities. So cat, so cat lady's writing, right. Running interference, anything. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, she's she's yeah, on the she, same the level as her. She, she's like, Oh, I can't believe these people. I can't believe that, 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 you know, it's, it's that they commiserate at night. Oh, this is so ridiculous. Da, da, da. That it's but, that mind. It's not people that have any objectivity, typically, yeah. in my experience. Well, somebody as likable as Johnny came off, you know, you don't want to be the bitchy person. I, I don't think. No, exactly no. not. I, you want to be no. the innocent, quiet victim. And if yeah. she can't do well with facial expression, just keep your head down the whole time. Like you're so beaten that you just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, at least yeah. do that. But don't do bitch face staring at the witness over and yeah. over. No, like I said, that's a worst case arresting bitch face since Anderson Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> she uh, yeah. And he's the gold standard. And the, the thing is, uh, she has to have a stylist like her. Mm. Her hair is done up differently and looks professionally done every single day. So they have someone on the team. It seems like they have a style consultant of some sort. And I just I can't figure out what they're doing with her clothes. Like yeah. she does not. She's not dressing in. And an at all appealing way. And I don't mean sexy. I just mean like uh, that you would want to sit next to her and talk. Uh, I think it's, it's, the, it's the bitch face. <laughs> it's not just the face. It's the clothes too, though. Oh, there, yeah, I mean, but Emily Baker mentioned the bitch face. I think that, all the rest of it kind of falls together. Well, well Emily I mean, Baker mentioned that her hairstyle is communicating the wrong message. Some of her clothing choices is communicating the wrong message. Like yeah. if her whole message is weak and vulnerable victim, taken in by this famous, powerful, rich actor, then all uh, her facial expression, body language, hairstyle, and the rest needed to reflect that. They she can look a like a woman's opinion because women are a lot more attuned to yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, and I mean, if, well, you know, okay, and I would yeah. be communic if I was advising her, I'd be communicating subtly to any men on that jury, but you know, just certain little looks here and there. You can do it the right way. Someone like Amber Heard knows how to do this probably better than most. Oh yeah. Uh, that would be the combination, not play into the stereotype and caricature, uh, or just who she, don't display who she actually is. You know, yeah. That, that, well, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, to the chat, let me know if the if the let me know if the mic popping fixed. I just I had I was hearing something going on, but I I couldn't hear it okay. during while my mic was going. So let me know if it's better now because uh, I. 
StreamYard, I think, went weird on me. God, their audio. I hey, Nick, I got a question for you. I want to go to their offices with an axe. What's up, Ty? Uh, well, I'm stuck in, in Zoom purgatory, as many people are. I don't have to use the earphones when I'm in Zoom purgatory. Why do I wear earphones when I come on to your show? Because when it echoes on here, I want to murder you. Got it. And I, don't I don't care, care when it echoes on your Zoom purgatory. No, I, I, I care when it echoes here. I hate Zoom. <laughs> I, I, you know, if it were in my power, I would, I would, I would send down a pillar of fire and and, and eliminate Zoom from the earth. Well, did you see uh, <laughs> the big class action settlement? I mean, Zoom's going to get to settle for eight cents on the dollar, yeah. but it turned out that they lied to everybody about third party about encryption. Uh -uh. They lied oh, to people yeah. about a bunch of stuff, but the the lawyers are going to get about twenty mil. But no, everybody good. else is going to get about five, six cents on the dollar of the actual damages. So justice is done, right? Exactly. If the lawyers get paid. <laughs> lawyers get paid. Uh, <laughs> real real quick, before I jump into Super Chats, uh, thoughts on Elon Musk officially buying Twitter? It was announced. Yeah, I it mean, announced. I'll be curious to see what really happens because there's two strong takes on Musk. And that I got close friends. I got a nephew who adore the guy. Um, who believe in him. Uh, the buddy of mine has made tons of money betting on him um, and betting on Tesla stock. I got other friends that totally distrust the guy that think he's a scam artist, that all that jazz. We're, we're, we're going to find out. To me, this is a no brainer for Musk. It improves his brand and expands his reach. If he restores free speech to Twitter to me. And the only people he antagonizes are people that uh, are for the most part already antagonistic to him. Not all, but, but some, the, the eco nuts, that like him currently or might flip, but the, uh, but I just, I, the, what's in his personal and professional and the financial interest of Twitter is to make it a free speech, uh, the free speech wing of the free speech party, like Jack Dorsey promised initially. Um, and, uh, so if it's used for any other purpose, like the, the most interesting conspiracy theory version is that he's going to try to tie in Twitter to his AI project to, you know, Neuralink to, to, to link us all up and figure you know, how to control our thoughts on a mass scale. That's kind of like the, doing that. That, that's the Bond <laughs> villain interpretation of Musk. Yes. But the I think that all the logic is that he will do what he says he's going to do, uh, which is make it a free speech. Uh, oh, he says going to do open source algorithms. Uh, so no longer yeah. secret algorithms. So uh, I think it's fantastic. It's uh, I think part of the reason he did it is that there's parts of the Biden administration that have been threatening him with SEC and criminal cases. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of this was, well, I wonder if they'll come after me if I own Twitter. <laughs> so uh, good, good, smart move by Musk. I mean, it, it, even his critics admit when it comes to marketing, the man's a genius. The, the dispute is about everything else. Uh, oh, what was really price is going is to go through the roof. He, he'll make a fortune. Even with his, oh, he's, well, he's yeah. taking it he private. took it private. He's taking really it private. Oh, he's taking it private. Ooh. Yeah, and they they, they froze all the two or three stock today at fifty four something. Somebody's sending you a super chat, Nick, with the uh, the price of their share that they made on uh, Twitter. Uh, so so like they had a tag along, 50. drive along. In other words, the board yeah. could approve an entire beautiful. He and he he well, offered them a, like a thirty per, like a twenty five to thirty percent premium per oh, per share. Better than like, that, Nick. <laughs> Elon yep. had so, so so the stock went up like thirty five or thirty six percent, whatever it went up after Elon bought his stake. Okay, then he offered an eighteen percent premium on top of that. So Elon's implicit threat is: I don't get to buy Twitter. I dump my stock and it drops all the way back down to what it was, maybe lower. Right. You're looking at a fifty four percent. Right. Delta here, and every one of those board members was going to be sued for breach of fiduciary duty. Fraud. And they tried to fraud. poison pill it, and they backed off. They realized they're right. going to get sued into oblivion. You're going to you're going to evaporate fifty four percent of shareholder value and claim it was in it was it was for their own good. Yeah, <laughs> but we really you wanted know, to ban people. people. <laughs> bad in that case. A lot of these board, a lot of these board members don't have. We're not. We're, they were picked for their polit politics, not mm -hmm. because of their financially independent. They well, couldn't afford won. to be subject to. Well, this they didn't suit. have any. They that was one of his criticisms. He said none of these guys own any shares of Twitter. Yeah, so think. one, how are they acting in the shareholders' best interest? They're not. They're acting in their own, and their interests are not aligned with Twitter because they don't have a yeah, financial stake I, at I, all. I'm, I'm chairman of the board of a, of a private company, and we don't have a single board member that doesn't have either doesn't have a, a significant equity stake or doesn't represent a group of equity investors. I don't want. I don't want equityless. Uh, board members, uh, exactly. We, you know, we, 
Um, I think Elon you know, has also done something else. He's 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 illustrated to corporate raider types out there that look, if a company is undervalued by say thirty five or forty percent, and all you have to do to restore that value is get rid of the woke bullshit, dude. Yep. Mathematically, you can double your money in a year or however long it takes to just get rid of the woke, woke bullshit. Now, Elon obviously is leveraging his personal brand. Right. Right. He, I mean, the name Elon Musk. Is well, and that's why it's valuable to him. His, his yeah. personal brand is Tesla. I didn't know that brand. he's taking it private though. That is beyond glorious. That means no SEC bullshit. Correct. Correct. <laughs> that, that was the goal. The goal was obviously to do that. I got a friend, and, I got a friend that cashed out of PayPal with Elon, a very smart guy. And he told me several years ago, he said, Never bet against Elon. Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the shorts have not come up rich betting against Elon. Mm-hmm. Now, I still have doubts about the value of Tesla stock, but you, I don't recommend anybody bet against it because nobody's made money on it yet betting against it. I'm but the a, other factor here is, you know who else this crushes? Truth Social Network. Yeah. Um, uh, crushes Getter. Um, limits Gab. Um, yeah. You know, the all of if those. If he follows through. If yes, he follows through, yes. if he follows through with a free speech Twitter, the utility of those alternatives shrink and, and parlor uh, mostly di- disappear overnight. Oh yeah, I, he can, I, he, I, I mean, he can it. crush the entire market basically just by saying, "Yeah, uh, Twitter's free speech now." And then watch watch the people who want like a curated chat room go try and build their own network that no one wants to join because they could get banned from it. Uh, exactly. It'll be funny. Like, let's so let's see it happen. Does, how long will it be before he reactivates Donald Trump's Twitter account? He should have Trump it. told Fox today. He probably has to do this because of his branding agreement with Truth sure. that he would not come back to Twitter even if his yeah. account was reactivated. But we'll but, see about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll definitely see about that. <laughs> that would. That I was would telling when, people that when you know, Truth that, social tanks because Twitter is fully wow. reactivated and. Don says, let's fold With this. The 80 million <laughs> plus 90 million people that Trump would, would, would have following him. If I'm Elon, I, I go to, I go to, his, I go to Trump's platform and buy them out. I don't think, I don't yeah, think yeah, you could if you wanted, that's true. Well, I, don't think those... I don't think they're like hugely capitalized. I didn't know. I, you know, I, no. heard, I mean, they were raising a lot of money, but that was it uh, yeah, on but, the marketplace. In and, the context of a $50 billion private company though, you could slide yeah. them, you know, some, Agreed. some, some, I was saying what he's, should he should do is announce it once he's firmly finally his do a mm-hmm. podcast with joe rogan donald trump and alex jones announcing oh, the uh, return to twitter well i mean look at the business and this is what i was getting getting back earlier with the corporate raider observation the elon has elon is demonstrating that these companies have taken a hit on their value just because of the woke bullshit no mm-hmm. other reason yeah. and that's a tremendous opportunity I mean, so I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, well, you know, what about Disney? I said, well, you know, you got, you got to get 200 and something million, a billion dollars together to buy Disney, but hell, a majority stake in Disney might be sufficient, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, a no doubt. Stake. Yeah. Uh, you know, get enough, get a big enough stake that you can sue that fucking board of directors into the ground for breach of fiduciary duty. And they can't just write you a check. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, they clearly have. I mean, I mean, all these companies have, uh, particularly the entertainment companies, have badly oh damaged their brand with all this woke crap. The the, the, the preeminent maker of of children's uh, entertainment in the world uh, comes out against an anti grooming law. Yeah, I'd say that was not good for business. Exactly, and this is after <laughs> well, they, they already des- destroyed the Star Wars brand, and we're busy trying to destroy the Marvel brand. I mean, I mean, it's unique their ability to dis- to brand wreck. But now Thank they've two. lost their tax protected status and they've oh. lost their rights of governance. I mean, it's hilarious. DeSantis just said, You're you know, stuck. I was pr- they realized Disney's stuck there. What are they going to do? Move the park? Where are you going to move it to? Where are you going to get that much space anywhere the else in the ships? world? Are you going to move everything? To, I mean, the, the like people pretend it was because of the deal that they're in Florida. They were always going to be in Florida without, with or without the deal. And many, and there's other amusement it's parks there. You're around. Sunshine yeah, absolutely. Year Sunshine round. year that round. Is... You're right next to the cruise ships. You're in a place that's the number one vacation place for everybody east of the Mississippi. You know, this, this was a no brainer. Um, well, I can't yeah. wait for those Orange County and Osceola County uh, building inspectors to start going through the Magic Kingdom. 
Well, there's sure a lot of people that have COVID. complained for a long time about the whole structure and how that Listen. they never had to take into consideration the impact on the whole rest of the community, whatever they were doing. Yeah. Um, now they will, and that's and then the tax-free bonds. I mean, you know that that's well, the no more future easy build, financing. Where would you build Disney World today? Can you imagine the compliance? Siberia, the it's the only I mean, place with the land seriously. for it. You know, in the United States, where could you where could you overcome the regulatory and environmental and all that bullshit that you've got to go through to build anything? And build say Montana, rules? if Ted Turner didn't buy it all, put it in trusts, and gift it to the government. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> there's no Montana left to buy. No, it's so, someone in the chat pointed up? out it's twenty seven thousand oh. acres. <laughs> like, wow. Well, yeah, wow. you'd have to locate out you know small town rural Texas. But you know, the, even uh, in Texas, the environmental crap, some, some worm or something is, you know, I mean, just, just the, I mean, just, just jumping through the regulatory hoops, I can't imagine trying to rebuild. And of course the cost of that would be beyond anything. Now Disney's got nobody buy. see in the good old days, children, Disney gave money to both sides. Disney paid everyone off. That's why they were able to get, was it a 30 year extension to Mickey Mouse's copyright? Yes. Because they spread the graft around. They didn't take yep. sides. Well, well the then, that was the traditional corporate approach. Um, that, that was the smart corporate approach. And then the woke people just took over the boards. Now you have ESG and this insanity. And part of mm -hmm. it's just a hustle sucker millennial cash. And But they also took over pension boards. Which people don't realize how much that oh, yeah. weight that has on the market. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Well, uh, again, I keep wondering why we're not seeing the massive uh, uh, lawsuits. But of course, the you know, big law is woke. So that's yeah, it's exactly big know, law is woke. Yeah. They've taken over the boards of these pension Look, investment. If somebody funds. would just send my firm, I don't know, five million dollars. I, I certainly would take on a class action mm -hmm. <laughs> suit because these boards are, in my opinion, highly vulnerable to breach of fiduciary duty. Yeah, and the I thing mean, is, Disney, oh, yeah. because, I mean, well, just their damage yeah. of the Star Wars, what they did. Well, that was billions of dollars of damage, what they did what to that brand. What was the business purpose of attacking a law that at the end of the day simply said you can't sexualize four-year-old children? Right. Mr. Gordon, exactly. Wouldn't you like well, to do that? It cost them, is what, in the damage, it's already $3 billion in market capitalization loss, I think, yes. uh, as of, which were oh, more no, it's more month. than that. Crap. Their stock was down. Their, their market cap today was like $210 billion, and it's down, was it 30%? Now, that may not be from <laughs> all. But it's a lot. Um, but it's it, see, it's all this cushy relationship. You get these big institutional investors who are mm -hmm. who are who are woke. All over, all, but what you, but when the cracks start opening, that's when it get that's when it gets fun. And Elon, we may look back and say that Elon Musk was the beginning of the end for woke capitalism. I hope so. I, well, gentlemen, know, I have to uh, I have to get through these super chats because I have right. some places to be. But uh, yeah. I'll hop off. All right. Thank you, Robert. Nice Have a nice you, one. Barnes. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. And Ty, are you going to hang around or are you going to pop off? a super off? chat I do want to hear. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just start going. Um, that one chick says, here's some funds towards your voice acting career. Love your streams. Thank you. Panama Jack's Jim. Love the hair and think you've earned the Hitler youth tip. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Romo drummer in Kermit's voice. Uh, hey, Michelle, can you redact the uh, redactions from the redaction of that redaction and the um, redaction from all the redactions, please? Uh, Fuzzy Socks says, hey, Nick, I was wondering if you'd give a toast to my cousin of mine, Lieutenant Philip Wiggle, Weigel, uh, a firefighter who was killed in line of duty two weeks ago in Ohio. Uh, yes. I, whiskey, but... I got just a little bit. I can't do too much, but... Um... But uh, I can do that for you. Uh, Sorry, just man. A moment. All right. To Lieutenant Philip Weigel, uh, who, who died in the line of duty, serving his community, serving his people, serving his friends, family, uh, serving those for no, no other reason than because he could and because he chose to. Uh, may his passing leave memories of commitment and fond memories from his family. Cheers. Mm. All right. Execation says the mods are organized orgasming right now. Did Nick say ban? Also, Nick has become a style critic to distract us from his current lawsuit against his barber. Rip. 
Uh, Execution says, I also, I got my first job in eight years today. The only job I applied for. So can I get a toast? I've spent the last eight years traveling the world and visiting various jails before I came back to the UK to settle down. <laughs> Cheers to Execution. To being toast. gainfully employed after being Turn unreasonably delayed. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> By the way, I like the dude. For whatever that's worth. Thank you. Thank you. Fadi LDD says, honestly, I can almost feel sorry for Amber now, since at this point she's all in on the lies and having to keep a straight face to blatant falsehoods must be exhaustive. It must take a toll on her mind. Then again, it's her fault. She's in that state. Dirty Dan. In other news, Amber Heard's biggest simp buys Twitter. Can't wait to see how this goes. That's true. Uh, Katie says, for people in the chat saying she has bipolar and joking about it, please understand that not all people with bipolar are like her. I have it and I have never in my life behaved like this. Just please don't throw that term around like that. Uh, Johnny Arbor says, Joe just has his wife drive him out to the for out of the forest. <laughs> Fadi LDD says, pushing me, poking me with a stick, putting me in a corner is a very convenient figurative way of saying she feels cornered while being recorded. Yep. Execution. Johnny is an absolute hero among abused men everywhere. I never thought I would ever hear a celebrity, much less someone as huge as Johnny Depp, making the same arguments as I do and making men's voices louder. Hashtag justice for Johnny. Mike the Dad Crosby says, Nick's ASMR stream. Dirty Dan, I think it'd be hilarious if Depp went on to be a defamation lawyer after this. <laughs> if he does that, he will actually be crazy, and uh, and we should probably put him in a home. Um, the Japanese Yakuza. Voice, what? I think he's got a great voice. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, very... uh, the Japanese Yakuza one says, was at a funeral today, my grandmother... And sadly, I didn't speak to her the last few years. Don't really know why. Something I regret, yes, but uh, her memory will remain. Yeah, let man. That off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, let yourself off the hook. Cheers to her good memories. Life goes on, guys. Just don't, don't, don't let that get to you. Yeah. Peace. Uh, Diedo Poppet says, bring Branca on. We will reach 15,000 likes and we want the tie to come off during the stream. Uh, DW says, vote for Danielle on for Salt Lake County District Attorney. She's Nick's fan and he inspired her to run. Check out DA for DA.com. Thanks, Nick, for all you do. Let me know if you would like me to come on and discuss the DA role. Yes, I think we can arrange a show for sure. Uh, I've got your email, uh, Danielle on a H N in Salt Lake city. Calming the chaos says, Hey Nick, love your show. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Washington state. Seeing clients like Amber and Johnny through the years, I would be great to talk about this case from a mental health perspective. Uh, calming the chaos. I think I got your email too. I'm, I'm not opposed. Uh, I have a show planned tonight, but I will try and get back to you. We'll see what, what we can do. Ron White says, I wish I knew you guys when I divorced my Cruella DeVille. She also made my life pure hell for 12 years. Your bantering is so refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. Sean McDonald, Elon just bought Twitter. The Mad Lad really did it. Angel of Sin says, I think this whole case can be summed up in Dune. <laughs> And Johnny's <clears throat> special relationship with drugs is similar to Paul Atreides and his relationship to Spice that inspires conflict on Arrakis. Well, Ty, I'd love to get your opinion on that one. Oh, no, where'd he go? What happened? Oh, it's too bad that Ty's gone for this. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just want to see the look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, uh, F just the spam of F's in the chat uh, F is from a, a video game in which I think it was the first call of duty. Uh, you, you, one of the opening cinematics was you're at the funeral for one of your fallen comrades and you go up to the, the casket and you, the F was the action key. So you'd press F to pay respects to the fallen comrades. Oh. So that's why people do that. It just means respect. Uh, that's, that's what it means. Uh, now, if you say F you, that does not mean respect you. That connotes something different, I think. Right. Uh, oh, is Metal Gear Solid 4? I, I, whatever. Who cares what game it was? You see, people are saying Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare. There you go. 
Yeah. The chat never lies to me, Nick. Get wrecked, Co uh, C. Goody. You got that wrong. Robin Kellum says, Barnes nailed it. Any woman on the jury that remembers watching Johnny Depp on 21 Jump Street will give him $50 million. <laughs> I am one of them. Unfortunately, he was wrong on the age. We're a little older. I'm 51. Love my Johnny. Uh, Stephen Cooper, I stand by my statements from previous days. Amber Heard needs to be in the remake of Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS. <laughs> Mike the Dad Crosby says shot Bards of a uh, uh, Bronca made <laughs> the, the gypsies. The oh, oh, that was so good. <laughs> Mike the Dad Crosby says turd doodling. Number one, Jews. Number two, gypsies. Number three, I just had to immortalize that quip. Yes, thank that you, was, Mike the Dad. That was epic. Hatter the Mad says, Here's one of my Twitter stocks I got from the freeze buyout today. Cheers. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Hatter the Mad. Ovid says, Your Honor, in order to provide expert testimony on how Johnny's hand could not have been cut off, we would like to call Chandler Halderson to the stand. Joy Mace, in my opinion, with my master's forensic science degree, finger injury consistent with crush injury would have been a cleaner cut with a knife, not a jagged rip like the photo showed. Crush injuries are hard to repair. Thank you. Razor 319 says, Law and Cucks cut the part of the feed where the lawyer objected to his own question. What a clown show. Yes, someone actually sent me their, their clip of it, and, and they, they do. They cut it out. What the hell? I don't know why. Uh, the long crime audience is not on Amber's side. They're on Johnny's side, like largely uh, from what I've seen. Are the law and crime wokesters on Johnny's side? Yeah, that's the, the difference. That's the uh, Scooter McDooter says, consider this. Depp was trying to wrap up the finger when he sustained a cigarette to the face, and his priorities changed. Yep. There's, there's any number of reasons why it could could happen i i don't think that just because it was happened to be in paper towel that that uh does anything to the claim no. and all of the other parts of the claim are consistent with the story the the actually the chip marble on the bar is a nice effect so just how much how heavy that handle of vodka is the the damaged plaster the vodka all over the ground i mean it, don't you think that the defense went a little overboard re-emphasizing all the blood and the damage and all that i mean i'd I, I didn't feel like that was helpful to the yeah i think i don't know why they're talking about the damage that's all over the house as if that's a win it's like, and the poor uh, butler is like having ptsd at one point his yeah. lip is almost quivering from the horror of the damage you I was going. spend a minute that it's weird that the fingers in the paper towel and yeah. move on yeah. like let that no, marinate in the jury that guy and gotten rid of him fast because he was he was he was solid i mean yeah uh Shiten says, please go check out my friends at Racing for ALS, nonprofit by two brothers, one of which has ALS, raising awareness for ALS. If you like horsepower and cars on track or just supporting a good cause. Again, that's Racing for ALS. If you guys want to check them out, uh, that I, I, have, I don't know anything about them, but, you know, it could be a could be a decent cause. 11 Bravo Crunchy says, looking dapper, Nick, nice haircut. Wife sent me a link to a TikTok vid showing Amber's bruise makeup wasn't introduced until after the divorce. I can DM you the link on Twitter if you want. Yeah, please do. Uh, I'm not going to pull it up today, but uh, I might pull it up tomorrow. Emorsk says, just showing support. Keep up the good work. Thank you. 11 Bravo Crunchy. Amber might be crazier than a Texas rat in a tin shit house in August, but she's hot enough that I'd still pee in her butt while using an alias and a burner phone. Well, there you go. Well, that's a lot to unpack. Uh, yes. Uh, my psychiatrist will be calling you immediately. Uh, spatula it's says, a give us guy couch. Was... Yeah, Eric. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eric, the counselor, he's he's good stuff. Get him on here. Please, please fix this man. Yeah, um, we got some super chats we want you to read. Uh, let's see. Seed fan 85, Amber's hair belongs on a Jetsons character. E Honda 420. Hey, Rakeda, two strikes on the tube now on my channel. I could use a shout out and a little encouragement. Guys, check out E Honda 420 on YouTube. Um, dude, if, if you've got some strikes, take take a little breather. Let one of them fall off. Let the let the chips fall down for a little bit and um until you you know get that one out of the way so you can get back to doing the other. What's up? Question for you. So if, if Elon goes through with his promise to make Twitter a free a free speech space, do you see that bleeding over into the other social media platforms? No. They're 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 just that entrenched. I think they'll I think they'll defiantly remain places like they they won't have a direct Twitter compare, you know, uh competitor, yeah. but they'll they'll you know, no, we think this is the proper way to do things and blah okay. blah blah. And maybe after 
some success, right? Like, or, at which point, or, well, everybody on Twitter will be wearing their asses out. <laughs> yeah, about that's it, true. including Elon himself, apparently. Andrew Hansen says, look up the uh, two completion clip from the legal comedy trial and error. It's the depth throat incident, but 10 times funnier. Trial and error equals hilarious. It's me. Thanks for donation. SDFU says, holy crap. Did you know bedraggled is the state of having been draggled? I didn't even know that was a word. It is. I didn't know you could be draggled, but you can be bedraggled. Uh, I, mean, I know about bedraggled, but does that mean there's also a state called draggled? Yes. That would be the, the bedraggled, right? Like you would have right. to. Yeah, uh, bedraggled means that you have been draggled. Okay. Correct. Yeah. It's me. Thank you again for the donation. Uh, Alia says, do you think Depp realizes most of his supporters are center to right despite his misunderstanding of their character in the past? By the way, I was mysteriously unsubbed after Rittenhouse story of my life. Um, I, I don't know if he has any notion of what, the leanings of his uh, people are, I, I think he's just floundering for the past six years and wants to tell mm -hmm. his story. I think that's his main thing. I don't think he particularly cares what the alignment of people who are lined up with him are honestly, uh, because it, and the infection of Hollywood is real. Like what it does to these people they're they're in a place where everyone around them thinks a particular way. And I, I just don't think they spend a lot of time. Most of them don't spend a lot of time really musing about it that much on the, no, on the, and their I, own. And I would think that actors in particular will be vulnerable to peer pressure. Yeah. And, I think so too. You know, your people would rather die than go against their peer group as a general. Hellsnake group. says it begins. Michelle Mason. Can I just say that all these recordings are her yelling at Johnny? I haven't heard him raise his voice or admit to putting his hands on her. Am I missing the relevance? Well, there was one recording where he yelled at her pretty loudly, but a yell is not a hit. And she's yelled at him many, many times. So I, no, I don't and that's the difference, right? At some point you have to think some jurors are going, you know, I'd have been yelling at the bitch by now. <laughs> I mean, Correct. Black Tiger says, how does it work if I'm recording myself and someone storms in? If they start saying something before I can even inform them, I'm recording them. Can I use it? T I, the technical aspect of that is no. Uh, but, you know, you could always make that argument and see see how that works out for you. So but they got these in. Uh, it wouldn't matter. Admissible, inadmissible would be inadmissible. Right. Well, unless you, you say I was recording myself in a private place and this person barged in, they don't get to then complain. Like they, they yeah. busted in. They don't get to complain that I was surreptitiously recording them. I wasn't intending to intent intent. That's the critical distinction right there. Yeah. All, you know, you have to infer in all the, all the anti-recording statutes that there has to be an element of intent. And if they surprised you, yeah. And the, the question is what you do after that. Do you shut it off right away? Do you leave it running for five, six minutes and never tell them? I mean, I, I think it's going to be, that's what judges are for is to figure that stuff out. Yeah. True. Nana Shabata, bad pressure, bad calf care says someone told her to stop looking like an ice queen. Problem is she's a terrible actress. <laughs> Version 135. This is lefty 101. Water down, destroy all meaning of recognized language. So you can repurpose it at will and win any argument. Grant TR says Depp looks so done today been testifying for four days i think he, he uh, deserved wear, it i'd wear anybody out g says if mindset on comes on tell him uh have him tell you about the jury it seems very interesting from what his guest said apparently there's been zero expression tj gamebox says, listen to dfc bankruptcy report again big ups hey big ups back to you joshua cornelius the audio is fine people complaining need to get better speakers or headphones or their own show wink face kb rough start with this cross why isn't Depp's team objecting to these excerpts? There's no foundation, no questions to Depp, and he just sits there. Well, there, the objections would be really tough because they're his statements. I mean, being used against him, uh, there should be some questions as to when they were, um, if they're authentic, but they just kind of skipped all that stuff. But they may have dealt with these the at free trial. Too. And they're dealing, and remember, too, they're watching the jury in real time. You know, I think objections generally frustrate juries. Because yeah, you're withholding information or trying to interfere with them getting information. Ortelio says, can you explain why you cannot use a recording if the other person is unaware? I don't really understand this. In some states, they some have states. laws that say that you have to have the consent of multiple parties or even all parties that are part of a recording 
if that recording is not done in a public place, if it's done in any sort of privacy, so inside your own home between a married couple is a private recording. California is one of those states. So any recording made in California between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard would have to have consent to be a legal recording and to therefore be admissible through Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Now, there are ways around that that hasn't happened here, and I won't. I won't go into all consent, of the possibilities. Did both parties ex- consent to these recordings? Then I guess they could have. I mean, uh, there there is some consent between the parties to recording some arguments, but we don't know if any of these particular recordings are subject to that, um, or were before or after that consent. So it's kind of tough because mm. some of them clearly sound like they they're they're recorded from inside a purse or something like that, and so she does seem to be surreptitiously recording. Um, Tin Man says audio is perfect. Uh, KB Ruffs, wait, uh, Bekende Wolf, much love for the racket stream, invasion of Poland win as soon as I can do it. Aaron, uh, Albanese, welcome to Paralegal. Rated Potato Entertainment used to be a vodka guy, but you got me into whiskey because the local had some Glen Levet 12. Loving it so far. Thanks, man. Yeah. Hey, you're welcome. G says something happened with you and Umbrella Guy. No, I think he just wanted to stream on his own show. Uh, and you know, that's that was. I don't think I was not expecting Tug to be on every show. He said he probably wouldn't be able to do every show anyway. So I mean, he's been um, covering this thing for like two years. So yeah, it, and he's certainly yeah, welcome anyway. back at any any time he wants. I send him the link every day. If if he decides not to stream, he can pop on here. It's up to him. But if the if he wants to stream and do his own commentary, I mean, by all means, go go for it. Black Tiger says, so now you have a nose in the lawsuit. Mar- Mary- Marie D. J.D. should publish his text in a book. Works of art. I agree. J. The Real McCoy says, Rottenborn, please don't waste the court's time. Meanwhile, it takes an hour and 20 minutes shifting through unrelated text messages. Hera 23, the way that he they keep jumping year to year to year, the jury is going to wonder what they're talking about. Connecting evidence so out of order, normal. Uh, it's it's how you want to do it, but they don't want these things in order. <laughs> they want them out of order. About, I'm worried about the case itself, though. The problem is, is okay, showing that she's a bitch and showing that she was mean and nasty to him. How does it win this defamation case for him? I uh, it. Well, I think it just goes to the idea that at worst it was mutual. Okay. I mean, and if it's mutual, she's not a victim of violence. Like she's not a victim of domestic violence. If everything, if the yelling, the screaming, the insults. So you're attacking the, the the truthfulness defense, so to speak, by saying, no, she's an abuser too, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, so. I think it has to be. Uh, yeah. Joshua Cornelius Rottenborn is using Amber's tactics, which Johnny despises. Tortheo, how many bites would Depp need for your nose? At least four. Roscoe Coltrane, is it possible Rottenborn is being intentionally irritating to evoke a Jack Nicholson moment out of Johnny a la A Few Good Men? Yes, he was trying. He didn't get it. But that was yeah. obviously uh, he wants they want him to lose his temper. Um, unfortunately, he's been dealing with women who hated him <laughs> and abused him. Uh, by and, the way, that, that was a low carb chocolate bar with whiskey. Uh-huh. Uh, someone sure in the chat it said time. it was a Snickers bar. No, no, it's an Atkins bar, right? I can yeah, rattle it okay. around with you. Right. But you know that guy died of like a heart attack, Atkins? right? <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. Well, he shout did. out to I my mean, to my staff who are still unpacking our office. We just moved. Rank hath its privileges, so I'm not participating in that today. So a- I was available. AP says, Nick, does ProVigil have any adverse side effects for you? My neurologist has suggested it to me with help from my fatigue from MS. Um, the adverse side effects are ProVigil uh, are called this. It's awesome. <laughs> your brain works better than it's worked maybe in your entire life. Uh, and, and that is a little bit in, in enticing. And also if you drink uh, liquor on it, you need to be very, very extra careful and you should not do it. Um, that's, that's pro vigil. It's non-narcotic. It doesn't have physical dependencies, but it is cool. Uh, and your brain goes into overdrive. You do, there are uh, headaches as side effects at first. And then after about a week, two weeks, you get over those. Um, antimatter redneck says herds team hammering these texts will poison the jury against her just because of how petty all of it is. Anyone can see it's out of context stuff. Also rotten born total bad guy, attorney name seal hunter. They need to add Johnny's finger and Elden ring. I agree. Uh, Nelson Medina. All this shows Johnny is very wordy on his text messages. I've never texted with these words and no use of emojis. 
L, that text is literally the truth. She's textbook borderline. Do we know the gender and age makeup of the jury, by the way? I do not. I do not. Someone, NBR said, film. Uh, someone said seven men, three women. That's all. And it's se- there are seven jurors and three alternates uh, also. Okay, so I, I don't yeah. know the makeup specifically in there. Uh, specifically, it was seven men. And I'm pretty sure they said, again, the chat wouldn't lie. About yeah, this. no, they, they would never lie, except okay. about audio. NB, NRB film, would that include phone calls between two people when one is in Cali and the other is in the, another state? Still two-party consent to the recording? It depends where the recording is made. If if the recording is made in California, yes. If the recording is made in the other state and that's a one-party state, then no. So is that, Nick, is that the case? Like, Let's say I'm, I'm in Texas. Texas is a one-party state. Yep. And... Even, so if the recording isn't legal in California, I couldn't admit it in Texas. Right. Okay. You and I, are, you're in California. You could try. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're in Texas. I'm in California. I call you and record without your consent. And right. then you, you try and introduce that evidence. I mean, you or could you, try. Actually, I guess you would try to introduce it in a, in a Texas lawsuit. Would yeah. And then you, you would object, object to it. Yeah. That you violated California law. Hmm. It's an illegal yeah. recording. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are other ways to get in illegal recording. So. Out of it. But, <laughs> let's see. Uh, James Nelson, I'm going to start dressing each day like Nick did the day before. Get it, buddy. Bit of info. Amber, ne- never heard of her, is a mega. See you next Tuesday. Half brain gamers. Your honor, when I get objected to, it slows down the trial. Can we move to me not getting objected to? Your honor. <laughs> Ms. Moonbear, hasn't it already been established he was an alcoholic, even if this picture of him in the chair represented him being drunk? Hashtag grasping at straws. Yeah, they just want to they want to make him look worse like that. That's just their goal. They And they didn't get it done. So they, it was objected to. Uh, Ortelio, just, sorry to bother you again about the recording subject. But what is what is the idea behind the rule that you cannot record without consent? The idea of recording someone who is not aware is to capture them in their true state. Right. Yeah. And some states don't like that. Some states have decided that that is that if you're in private now, if you're in public whole, if you have no expectation of privacy, wholly different scenario. Can you imagine but if the you're, horror that could happen in California if you could just record these people? Well, I mean, that was the the owner of the L.A. was the L.A. Clippers. Yeah. Right. That guy yeah. is his and he got that thrown. He got that recording thrown out of court because it was illegal. But I mean, the damage that was done to him was huge because yeah. of those recordings taken out of context and really like the out of contextness of the recording. If you're not consenting to a recording and someone does that, and then let's say they only present 30 seconds of a 10 minute conversation and you didn't even know it was being recorded at all. So you can't verify that there would be a full record somewhere else. So it, it's just open for some abuse and some states don't like it. I prefer one party states, by the way, but Me too. that's the that's the way it goes. Half brain games, your honor. Oh, wait, I read that one. Uh, blind press, lol, Rottenborn really complaining about objections, wasting his time. God rocket. I'm from Utah. Amber looks like a polygamist. Danny Conley, will Rottenborn's first or efforts to continually say, I'm not trying to waste time, hurt him on redirect if he has any objections? No. Jared Anthony, the entire cross has been abysmal. At what point does Amber or one of her lawyers test positive for COVID-19 to force a two-week break to try and reset? <laughs> Shows in that with as many lawyers as they have, I don't think they are gonna get away with that, frankly. Um, uh, right. yeah, have another lawyer do it. Shows in the house says Stockholm syndrome is a real thing. No fear 64. Johnny Depp's drug and alcohol issues. One, not relevant. Two, Jerry has themselves or had a family member who has dealt with this. It's not a crime. It's literally an illness. Susan Wojcicki is a lonely, rather homely, sad hag. Nick, you need to drive to Fairfax. so You can wait outside the courthouse to give Johnny some flowers. Johnny Zodiac. Hey, Nick, it's Anzac Day in Australia. Would you do a toast to all the veterans of Australia and New Zealand? Uh, yes, to the fake country of Australia and the real country of New Zealand. I toast all of your veterans, especially the fallen Aussie brothers lost during the great emu wars. Even though you lost to birds, your country somehow persisted Um, on, but only because of viable peace accords. And of course the joke toast is over. Of course, a toast to all the veterans who chose to serve troops of the British empire. There you go. Cheers. Mine's virtual. I'm out of whiskey, but 
Uh, DD Dine, thank you for the sticker. Keith L, enjoying the coverage, guys. How do you think this case is going to impact Rottenbaum and Elaine Milani's legal career? Uh, Rottenbar Rottenborn's got review bombed on Google. So, but if he wins, I mean, if he wins the case, uh, people will still hire him. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's connected. Um, you don't uh, get clients like her without having a pretty strong referral uh, network. Yep. Joshua Cornelius, the badgering looks desperate. Angela Carey, as an abuse survivor, I see two narcissistic people both need help. I like Johnny Depp, but I also see my abuser in the way he talks and acts. Also, Amber Heard is someone who is messed up. Only God knows the truth. Well, this jury will determine what the truth is for the purposes of the law. Universal Universe, today is my birthday. Can I get a shout out? Happy birthday, Happy Universal birthday, Universe. Bastard. John K, only watch trial real time like this during the Rittenhouse case. I had to begun to believe objections were a myth. <laughs> they didn't happen there, but they're here. Satan the Sir, gaming and stuff on Recross. Mr. Depp, did any of the recordings played in the last few days show you physically or sexually harming Miss Heard? No further questions. Michael DeFlora, the best part was when was uh, he said it was a good article. You should read it. That was great. Yeah, that was a very good moment. Sarjan Narwan, the whole trial is an argument for using Signal. All those people who think they have nothing to fear because they have nothing to hide until their banter is being used against them in court. Yeah. Now, yeah, well, Signal, yeah, you, you, if you set it up to delete every week or whatever. Joel Valdez, nice haircut looking sharp there, buddy. Thank you. Perihelion, the cut made you look as young as the picture with Coach Ralph and Andy. Good luck for you. That's Thanks for the content. Have a nice day. Hey, you too. Silver Dragonian, loving this racket's tie. Thank you for showing this. Oh, you're welcome. Silver Dragonian, rotten bottom fits him. Man of mo low moral fiber, at least interesting trial you've ever covered. Depp is friend of Memphis three child murderers. He should pair us from grids. Bob Ricada says closed caption shows Mr. Duck instead of Mr. Depp. I like Mr. Duck. Hey, what's up, dad? How you doing? I don't think he's <laughs> hey, still Bob. watching. Babe Lincoln, maybe some, uh, maybe missing something, but if a bus hits me and my leg gets broken, I'd say I broke my leg, not a bus broke my leg. No, you're right. And that's, he explained that, and the jury knows that. Marie L., the burning and drowning talk was they were calling her a witch and were blowing off steam by talking about how to test it out. I think saw witch. Yes, uh, they were, you did see witch. They were talking about Monty Python. Jose Vega, man rotten bottom, must, might get, might turn unbreaded if he keeps getting rejected by the judge. Daryl Courier, can this Milani makeup TikTok video have an impact on the trial? Um, there are some ways where it could, yes. Paul uh, Carig Carigulo says, Nick, what are the chances that Governor Ron DeSantis writes a recommendation letter to D Disney on Johnny's behalf? Maybe help him get his little gig back. I don't know if Disney's taking Ron's calls right now. I don't think so. I, th I think the love's died there. <laughs> Sonia Fowler, he said agents, not Asians, in case there was confusion. Thanks for the stream, Ricada. Oh, thank you. Georgia at the Lake. Depp's given us so many enjoyable roles over the years. Heard hasn't. She's merely cast as a femme fatale, beauty being her only talent. She merely fills a role. She doesn't make it. Goji, your honor, she turned me into a newt. A newt? I got better. Uh, Allie writes, remix Rotten Bottom Jeans, fights for the turd, whole <laughs> courtrooms looking at her. She beat JD. Next thing you know, she's doing blow, 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 blow. Jay Reynolds, if she weighs the same as a duck, floats on water and drops a grumpy on your bed, then she must be a witch. OG Boxer, I'm seeing it's official Elon bot Twitter. Let's bring Alex Jones and Trump back. Uh, Clag House of Grilka, welcome to Paralegal. Ashley B, love your coverage. Thank you. Sarah Marie, did you say turds words? I probably did. Kyle Bogue, damn, you, Baker, and Legal Bites have over 18,000 viewers each. Yeah, it's a good day for the law. Uh, Lawtism or the law tubes or yeah. flock of legals, whatever stupid name we have. Jim a branch. I think Rottenborn playing the last oh, audio clip. A gaggle of lawyers, aren't you? An invo I still like an invoice of lawyers. but an invoice of lawyers, uh, yeah, I like that too. <laughs> I think Rottenborn playing the last audio clip Thursday has used any remaining patience Johnny Depp had left. Sherlock Holmes, it's a good thing to say they sent the Indian guy home who was on the jury, would have sided with Amber for a chance of feet pics from her. <laughs> I found you, I found you uh, in favor of you. Please send Bob. Carol Clark, appreciate you, Nick. Thanks for yet more incredible trial comments and coverage. Thank you. Carlos Estrada, so sad I wanted him to finish talking about his son. Osborne, I'm just waiting for Little Binger versus Rotten Bottom. Regina Von Vonderson, 20K viewers and only 8K likes. Fix it, chat. Joshua Cornelius, oh my God. Rottenborn Rotten is as obnoxious as, as Binger. Um, yeah, I, 
No, I, I, I don't, I don't think he is. It's kind of like comparing Brie Larson to Amber Heard. I mean, who's worse? Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Joshua Cornelius. Oh my God, Johnny needs to drop the stuttering victim act. Uh, and then he says he didn't stutter with Rottenborn. It's two different Johnnies. I think it's the difference between being asked yes or no direct questions and being asked to narrate. But I've I've talked about this earlier. Lil Kim Outlaw, what happened to the sound? All of a sudden, I can barely hear Johnny. Uh, that's usually on the court's end if something like that happens. Joshua Cornelius, even his lawyer wanted to stop and tell him to stop so she could tell him to drop the act. David Hicks, movies released in 2017 to 18 were filmed 2015 to 2016. Joshua Cornelius, his own lawyer thought he was rambling and wanted to break so he, that he could address the issue with Johnny. She can't talk to him during the break. So I don't think that's true. Christopher Garn, thank you for hours of content. Much love. A poor student. Thank you. Teresa Stray. I feel bad that he's gone through this and I think Amber Heard is a trash bag. However, let's not forget that he's been critical of the U.S. while making millions and also joked about the assassination of 45. Karma? I don't think this is karma for uh, that. It's not it, karma. This is... If anything, Amber Heard would go much lighter on him for that. Like all of these people liked that statement that he made. Remember yeah. that. Like uh, Johnny Christopher... is fighting a war against our enemies. That makes him our ally for now. Uh, Christopher Garn canceled Netflix and gave my subscription money to you. Is there a better way to donate? I mean, anyway, is fine. But Locals is a great way to do it every month. Ricadalaw.locals.com. Andrew Hansen breaking. Cash. Suitcase is full of cash work, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Send it by carrier pigeon. Uh breaking Musk versus Twitter or plus Twitter agreed to a deal. Pete, I are we sure Amber will testify? Almost guaranteed. Um uh, Bryant McCracken, Wall Street Journal reports Twitter agreed to sell to be announced tonight. Elvonis says if they had so much of their relationship recorded when they're then where's the video or audio of abuse that happened to her? There, yeah, that's a very good question. Mm. EW, nice ear lowering rackets. I don't know what that means. Uh, Chryson, I hope Johnny's lawyer know about the makeup that Amber lied about using. It wasn't even released to, until 2017, long after they broke they'll up. They'll deal with that. when the, by, by the time she comes around to testify, they'll have some bullshit explanation for that, don't you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, well, it was something similar, you know. It's just a demonstrative of a cream. It's not yeah. this one. Yeah. Uh, Integrity Media, Johnny Depp could not control the screen exhibit. Pie's fault. Uh, Kroisk says RBF in the streets, defecation in the sheets. <laughs> Michael De Flora, thank you for joining Paralegal. <laughs> the infamous Ill McChicken says, a guitar player myself, we baby our hands. Mama Bear, 76, cosmetologist here. Amber's hair is on point, but it makes no difference when she wears a shirt that makes her look like an 80-year-old widow. She needs to get her entire look together, trying too hard. Fred Pedamonte, Joe's right, even though he's a Jew. Kidding. <laughs> Blinded journeyman says so. <laughs> she gives me more a Cruella vibe, even without my bias. And yes, Depp looked much better with the hair pulled back. Mike Irish, Agreed. Nick is here talking women's hairstyle like it's someone that lets his wife drive him around. <laughs> Ooh. Blah blah nine eight seven seven says as usual, way behind is Rottenborn asking, did I read it right? So he doesn't have to ask an actual question about the text or recordings. No, he's asking that to affirm the validity of of what's being relayed to the court. Uh, he should ask follow-up questions on all of the evidence that he's introducing, but he didn't. So I think he missed a lot of opportunities for that. Uh, Mr. Anon, hey, Ty, your daughter was playing Mother Simulator the other day. I saw that something, one. something you want to tell us? No, uh, I don't know anything. Um, Grandpa I, Ty. I, hey, I've been told by very good authority, the best top men, that grandkids are pretty cool. So I'd be fine with that. But I don't have anything to report or anything. Alan Rees says, Anna can help you with the makeup situation. Michael Diaflora, honestly, I think Amber's posture looked more aggressive for her saying she didn't defame Johnny, Johnny Depp. Cash chats about everything. After I quit law school, my first book is out. It needs a good editor. It's Tales of the SS Nowhere on Amazon. The SS Nowhere on Amazon. Not Tales of the SS Nowhere right. on Amazon. <laughs> Tales of the SS Nowhere take, on Amazon. Tales of the SS <laughs> if anyone wants a copy Alex. working on part two now stay breaded i watch everything you put out Angela, hey, thank okay you. what's the breaded i know i'm gonna regret this what's i don't breaded? have time for it tonight i really okay. don't but I will, I will tell you Fair uh enough. gerard garvin says nick's my favorite lesbian legal counselor <laughs> thank you radioactive llama says this trial would be way better with binger uh 
I think Kraus. I think Kraus oh, emoting the whole time, like, oh God. Yeah. Oh, oh, where's my sandwich? I think that would be Johnny Depp would get under Kraus's skin so bad it wouldn't be funny. I mean, oh, yeah. Would... Ocean Redux says, Hey, look at me, Ricada. Look at me. We the poo poo eaters. No, it's not true. <laughs> Matt H looks like they really did turn the frogs gay. Jonathan Tolbert, welcome to Super Lawyer Status. Sinbad says, Adrian Blair won. Carbonated Milk says, I'm sorry, chat smells like Johnny's bed. Caroline N, is it normal to rapid fire exhibits without any real prodding the way Herd's lawyer was doing during Johnny's cross? Very off putting tactic, in my opinion. Um, look, Johnny was not cooperating with yes or no answers, so he decided to be fast on it. it it's a gamble, it makes you look like a bully. It might not get your point across, but you stop them from answering extraneously. Well, they, at least the parts I saw, they didn't do a very good job at all controlling the witness. And that's that's what we call it when, you know, when you're cross-examining someone and they start, you know, going crazy. You 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 do have to shut them down. But Depp was, Depp was really good. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lachelle K, thank you for the donation. Your chat didn't come through if you sent one, but I appreciate it. Diaf diaphanic. One, you're, you are being throttled. Normally, my live subscriptions appear at the top of my subscription feed. Yours has not, going all the way back to the beginning of the trial. Welcome to my life. By the way, if you guys don't know, uh, I'll flat out say it. Uh, Law and Crime negotiated for coverage of this trial with, um, with YouTube. If you don't remember, uh, that's... Uh, wait, am I thinking of... I'm I'm pretty sure they were complaining somewhere that Rittenhouse was supposed to be like this for them and it didn't work organically. Some some so, damn lawyer in Minnesota and his cronies. So his if you cronies. if you search now for Johnny Depp trial, especially while it's live, you're gonna get at least one, if not two, long crime results pretty much top every time. Subscribe to them or not, and everybody else is too. We had over 400,000 people watching their live streams today and no one else is even in the ballpark. Uh, they got verified or trusted uh, trusted source status on this trial. And I don't know. What check do you have to write to get that, do you think? I don't know if it's a check or if it's a giant dick you got to suck. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm sure Dan Abrams was up to either challenge. Um, <laughs> D.E. Poland says, vomiting in sleep causes asphyxiation. Sure can. Amanda M says he's being abused all over again. Sean Brem, isn't the recording an invasion of privacy per California law? All parties consent. Uh, seems like it unless, unless they agreed to it or if he did consent to it. Um, Curtis Maver says BPD makes so much sense for her. Nathan Hewitt. Yo, we desperately need Drex in here doing a, se a semester's worth of analysis. Contrarian 420, the rich are very poor. Ocean Redux. Amber clearly described those things like poking me and putting me in a corner as if it was ordained by the gods and she had an FBI wiretap on her and the perfectly timed crying ladies don't do this. Sonia Fowler. His testimony brought a visceral reaction to me as a survivor of mental and physical abuse. The abuser turns it all around to the victim. I am close to tears. I'm curious who you think the uh, if the abuser is johnny or amber in that one sonia just tag me you don't have to send any more money just tag me and let me know what you think laura enquist says i'm a victim of domestic violence it sickens me because there's no way amber would confront him like that an abused person is too scared to create havoc what lady and, in just just a few minutes okay all right head upstairs okay come give me a hug Thank you. yes all right, go. <laughs> uh, you'll, let me tell you, you'll miss those days. Uh, Econ Recon says, fun fact, Johnny's friend Hunter filmed child porn snuff film at Bohemian Grove. Senator John DeCamp, the Franklin cover-up. Never heard of that, but interesting. Bogey 34 says, Ty just made me laugh so hard I snorted. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Hungry for Heaven says, hello, Mr. Beard. Do you think this will have a ripple effect with the Mignogna situation in any way? Thank you. I doubt it. Uh, I think probably that, that it's in the hands of the court. Because we get back to the trial court, possibly. But I was never worried about what would happen at the trial court. Wait, did you just say? I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> I think you did. I think I did. <laughs> uh, but, I'm, but, okay. I'm, but I'm keeping my shirt on. 
Ali79 says, I think it's important that both a man and a woman part of his legal team showed him heartfelt support after having admit he's a domestic violence victim. Men deserve support too. I agree. Joe Strickland must bot Twitter. Yes, he did. Half brain gamers. Ben King is Alfred. Make it happen. And yes, I'm only saying this because he's British. <laughs> Econ Recon. Fun fact, Johnny's Johnny picks interesting causes to get behind. One was shilling for the Satanic Memphis 3. Slash all the evidence shows why the notorious West Memphis three have probably gotten away with murder. Uh, so there you go. You guys can look that up. Uh, bruh says, guys, bruh. look up co-belligerent. <laughs> okay. That term up. Uh, bruh says, bruh. Ju Young Kang says, Johnny wasn't sleeping, uh, sleeping everyone. He was opening up his third eye to tell the judge what hearsay is. Jinx McNinja. I'm a simple man. I see a Ricada live stream. I hit the like button. Hey, thank you, Jinx McMahon. Uh, Chica Loca, welcome to Paralegal. Kate Henderson, Amber, hashtag Amber Turd. Come on, guys, get it trending. Uh, they, they've they clamped down on that, maybe under maybe under Elon's Twitter, but maybe not because it's kind of a simp. Winning reality, Barnes nailed it. Call him if you get scammed by a covert narcissist. Uh, Manny Jackson, we need to review the brilliant hot to crazy chart video done years ago. Well, yes, not, not right now though. See Neil mindset interviewed a lady that's been there every day. She said the jury is four women, the rest men and one, she couldn't tell what gender they are. Uh, Mark or Mark Reth, Mark Rita says, I didn't come here for fashion advice, but man, am I getting it? See Goody says, shout out to E Honda 420. His channel looks pretty effing based. And then he has a link to it. Leslie squad. When Amber heard clenches her jaw in rage, uh, writes, she loses one credibility point slash gains 2.5 psycho winch points. Current tally credibility minus 53,964 psycho winch 80,964. Uh, miscellaneous says I would pay money for the Butler to say a la Q from James Bond. I never joke about my work. 007 DV Ken Bravo. Johnny painted with oil paints. Amber painted in poo. Yeah, who was the painter? Who was the artist? Uh, Amber was, of she painted, she yeah. I believe. Diaphanic One says, the door open yet for serious discussions on PMS. <laughs> uh, Amergad says, free Martin Shkreli. I agree. Let my boy Martin go. Batman 23 says, this butler is clearly former MI6. Lesbo Brandon says, plaintiff closing argument via a time to kill uh, boy lies to doctor about abuse. Now imagine it's a girl. <laughs> I, 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 I disagree. The butler is clearly a Kingsman. Uh, Troy Neenan says, jury has already forgot this guy's face. <laughs> Minority of thought says, this is no longer debt versus heard. This is rotten burn versus witnesses. He's lost the jury. The guy interview the, doing the questioning of the butler wasn't rotten born. I think you guys might have not noticed oh. that. Uh, he was another nondescript white guy with gray hair. Um, Igor Slagathor. It's cross examination of senior Chad Butler. Sounds like the equivalent of letting all the kids play during the end of a high school football game. Troy Neenan, Sir, rotten born sounds. Sir Chad Butler, by the way. Yes. Uh, well, it's senor. Don't well, disrespect no, his Hispanic he's, heritage. He, no, but it, he's English. And, and Troy Neenan says Rottenborn done, sounds... He'd be done, Chad Butler. Rottenborn sounds like a supervillain name. Uh, Born CK says, gotta put a little elbow grease into what you're doing to break chunks of marble and, and granite out. Yep. Yep. William Schlass, he's the most butlery butler to ever buttle. No Daichi says, on the last question, he was asked if Johnny Depp asked to look at the pictures and he said no. He started stroking his face. Never did that before. Odd. Uh, Precious81 says, thanks for the stream. Great during the workday. Hey, thank you. SDFU says, I just realized Amber Heard is dressed like the blonde Nazi girl from Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. Her hair is oh exactly god. right, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> hair doing yep. everything, probably. Is our Ilsa. Yep. Colin4486 says, you don't take a poo on the bed of someone who's abusing you or throw vodka bottles at them or hit them or insult them in front of friends. Amber's a liar. Pants on fire. Uh, Einar, oh, you and your technical things, Nick, a veteran of the vernacular, Mr. Ty Beard. Love you, Ty. You. Emma Smith, thank you for the donation. Stogies and Boomsticks, what did dumbass object to his own questions and what effect do you think it had on the jury? I mean, he, he objected technically to the answer to the question as hearsay, but he did ask the, the question. I don't think it had any effect on the jury. To the stream, so I probably mm. didn't think it was good. Didn't think much about it, but. Marmor132. My third judge for child custody was Rottenberry. 
Anyone who with, with whose name has rotten in their name, I don't think anyone should trust. Fair Frozen 55 in MI6 voice. Oh dear, this has got to be the biggest number of dead hookers I've had to clean up. God save the queen. I do not get paid enough for this shite. Uh, Wick Dipper. Her Majesty. Problem is a viable alternative is likely without Amazon Visa and MasterCard running interference. I'm betting on the iRobot future. Walter Dedman, Nick, I agree. Her face doesn't help, but dressing like a forthright diplomat or school teacher makes it worse. Emma Smith. Uh, shoot, where, where, where did it go? Oh my goodness. There. Uh, KFC, new ad, finger licking knuckle, just don't gag. Uh, Patrick Rigney, Disney Vacation Club has deeded real estate to members. They're not going anywhere. A troll says the male gaze swings both ways. Are you sure you're not a JoJo fan, Nick? <laughs> Lieutenant Hughes says, as for as for like spike, Nick, I want to see us break 15K. Oh, ask for a like spike. Yeah, guys, if you like the stream, like it. Click the like button. So you can't be, actually do that on StreamYard. Um, no, you have to be on the YouTube stream to do uh, it. Mr. Squiggle says, my coworkers were watching Law and Crime while I was watching your stream on my phone. I was more informed and had to explain things to him. Thanks, you, lol. Well, tell him where to watch. Get him educated. Ewan Faramir says, paper towel is common for poor people better than toilet paper. Andrew Clark, thoughts on just some guy purging 98% of his Twitter followers? Uh, well, yeah, he's he's running away from the fact that his audience uh, is realizing who he is. Who's Incarnation this, uh... Art, uh, he said, He's a comic book commentator who, uh, yeah, he burned, he, he blocked like 18,000 Twitter followers. All of them. Incarnation art was Amber was the zombie in Zombieland part one. She was the one in the beginning who came over because she got bit, then turned and tried to kill the main guy. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Reddit silver member says, could we get Ty to take pro vigil and come on and talk about Dune? Would you like that? No, no, I would have him killed. <laughs> Adrian Viadera says, I can get my hands on some of that. <laughs> answer for the question might be too long. So instead, where can I message Ty to get an answer for the following question? What are the effects of war on a nation? Thanks for the entertaining content, Nick. Yeah, that would take a while. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know. Could, could he email you or something? I don't, I mean, I don't know if you'd ever have time to answer it. I was going to say, we could do a chat sometime. We could do a stream sometime. And well, talk about yeah, we'll, we'll talk about war on the stream sometime. Wrestler I mean, Town says, to be I fair, Emu Wars, Wars was a draw. There is no draw in an Emu War. You either win against the birds or you lost. Stop coping. Stop it. No, well, uh, Walter birds won't accept your, the birds won't accept anything but total victory, right? exactly walter deadman says if johnny is like paul is hunter s thompson like a mentat or the voice that guides him probably stfu says dr atkins slip on ice and hemorrhaged keto for the win lagging says law tards instead of law tube black tiger says city boy but i think ear lowering means haircut oh yeah probably that makes sense yeah, that was Happy says this one is for Ty 69 for 69 mm, 69 for 69 uh, 69 for 69 uh, Yeah that, yeah let's let's curb those kind of super chats <laughs> And Mr. <laughs> Juppel says idea create slash update lawyer tier list from live streams oh maybe i don't know and then real quick 12345 says Nick here's respite for these kids if they're vaccinated else fuck them okay Mephisto's movie review. It seems to me Johnny was enjoying the compilation of two minutes of himself dunking on Rottenborn, and he wins the public by supplying another compilation for this week. Sicarius Antar, for anyone interested, I'm in the Air Force waiting for religious exemption. Should have been given notice of approval or denial in January and still waiting. Meanwhile, us unvaxxed are forced to wear masks still while at work. Please keep us in mind. Say a prayer or two for us who are still restricted. Sakura, Sakura Embu. Sakurambu so says, when Rottenborn keeps asking, did I read that right? Couldn't Johnny respond with, no, you removed all context or vocal attenuation? He could, but then that would open him up to having to explain the context or having him read it again. By or... getting pissy with Rottenborn. Uh, I think yeah. Johnny, annoyed, yes, a little bit. Frustrated. Aloof a bit, and but... snarky like he was good. Yeah, uh, yeah, getting but... too into it gets risky yeah, yeah. jelly miss so by my reckoning cross took about as long as direct however because of how the timing worked out cross was spread over three days while direct was spread over two i think this will give the jury the impression that the defense is badgering depth or am i looking too much into nothing here probably looking too much into nothing on that one plus remember redirect was there 
Mephisto's movie review, Twitter accepted Elon's $43 billion offer to sell Twitter. Twitter is now melting. Grab your popcorn. It's going to be a beautiful day. 12345 says, WTF do you mean? My contributions are greatly appreciated. That's not true. Jelly Miss says, I personally think the recordings are coming in because Johnny wants the truth to come out, thinking he told his team not to object too much to audio or video recordings. Very, very possible. That's all of the stuff. I have to go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ty, thank you for joining me. Always and, a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you soon, man. See you guys and later. To the, to the stream, I'll see you guys tonight. We'll be breaking down the Medicare versus Nick Fuentes debate. If you want to know what all that crybabying was from, from a bunch of weirdo groipers, it's because their dear leader just got his anus blown out on a live stream, and it was really, really embarrassing. We'll be going through it tonight and talking about how bad of an argument he made. Till next time, peace. Peace. Oh, he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boom Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter from the white shores of men to the hills of Glen Livet, there's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the one to have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag of Balmora Lundbrook Spirits blow as the ones who get unemployed So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter Who will spread the word that Nick is dead Oh, he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt There's no one who explains the problem better than Nick So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed To make the law what we have now Oh, the guests are all plentiful, from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the love.